Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like to miss your alarm because you're in bed and watching wrestling, join our cult. Is that what Hello, you welcome doing? to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. No, 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 ignore that. The Cultaholic. You were watching wrestling in the morning, were you? Is that what you've just said there? No, no, yes, that's why I was. Yeah, you know what? That's what, better than skipping your alarm. What wrestling? I was, was... heavily researching uh, NXT 2.0. <laughs> okay, that that's a reasonable excuse, isn't it? I reckon yes. you're full of shit. You are full of it. Oh, full of it. Oh, are you ooing for a reason? Well, I've I've given you the notes for this week in wrestling. You have, but have you got the notes for the mailbag? I did send them on the messaging thing yesterday. Oh. You haven't. I do have them on my phone. We'll get them oh, later. Yeah, yeah, we do this bit then. We'll start the podcast yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. We're off. Well, we'll leave that in, are we? Aye. Oh, yeah. Go on. If you like no, some no, crap bad men on your podcast, <laughs> Cultaholic Wrestling. Video podcast, as we used to call it, back in today. Back, you called it. Yeah, yeah, as we called it. Um, because this, this week finally marks the time that we all sat together strapped in like a lo- clockwork orange yeah. to finally watch and endure the first podcast we did. We've done it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be out much later, around the Christmas break. This is a tease. But this is a tease. And, and it's it was... like Taz in 99, the mood's about to change. And they're going, oh, I wonder what that's yeah. going to be. I wonder if the, a major event happening soon, little Ganson. Richard, can we play the highlight of the podcast, which you clipped for me the other day? Is that too much of an ass to do on the fly? Oh, okay. Is it too much of an ass to do on the fly? If it's I too much, we can do it. We'll, we can. Just, we'll ramble. Well, we'll watch like, it back. I like and that it's, you taunted him. It was, if it's too much uh, to ask, he's like, oh, I didn't say it like that. It if was, it's too much to ask. No, uh, we watched it and it was worse oh, than I remember. Worse it. than, yeah, yeah, worse than, it's, worse uh, than I thought. It was absolutely terrible. But uh, yes, it'll be out over the Christmas break. We go through it, we do, bit by bit, pausing the video as and when we're going through. And then we look at the comments. And then we look at episode twos, threes, yeah. fours, and 20. Because <laughs> yeah. that's where it skipped yeah. to for some we reason. dodgy prime numbers. Yeah. And then if you set a question in on Twitter to my Twitter account the other day, if you saw that tweet, that question will be read out on that episode. And we will answer Ooh. it with the utmost honesty and integrity. As Richard still tries to find this thing that I should have asked for before we start. It's fine. Like we He might have talk. found it. Are we there? We can just talk amongst ourselves. We can not talk amongst ourselves. It is a podcast. It is a podcast. Yeah, is. How, oh, we found it. We found we're it? here. Oh, this is no. the highlight. No joke. The highlight of episode one of the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. This is how bad it was. This is the best thing we did. Patreon.com slash Point the camera. You. Patreon.com slash Cultaholic. More lads to uh, vote on who you think. It's going to be Rusev, we know. But we know Rusev is going to win. We know yes. that. Oh. And then smash cut. <sighs> Got a beer. Got a beer. <laughs> Lovely. Times are tough. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew dies inside, as we all do at numerous points during the first ever podcast. But there we go. That'll be out over the Christmas break. It was terrible, wasn't it? Yeah. You know what? It's perfect that's in time for the Christmas period because there's so many people who can relate having a go and hang out with families (laughs) that they have no interest in hanging out with. And go, God, it's a lot like that. Thanks, lads. Aye. But you know what? I think that grew us just watching it, not doing the podcast, (laughs) Um, closer as lads because we all realised, oh, we are actually better. With yeah. the, there has been, a, you don't often see improvement, but we can, we can visually see it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And audibly hear it. Mm. Yes, you can if you listen to this on podcast or video for. <laughs> I don't know why I call it, call it video <laughs> podcast. There was some misunderstanding there. But anyway, that meandering long expression aside, Jack, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm not too bad, Matthew. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm good. 10 minutes awake. Oh, fair it's a good enough. feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ross? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm at sixes and sevens today. Because my girlfriend and the girlfriend's mom have come up to the flat to stay. Ooh. So in a panic last night, right, I started cleaning the bathroom, which is the worst part of cleaning the ba- uh, of my flat because there's no windows, no natural airflow. So I was cleaning the, the chrome in the bath, the taps, the shower head. I was descaling. But I used one descaler, ran out. So I got a second bottle of descaler, a different brand, started doing it. And the chemicals and fumes that were produced as a result of that have, have singed my nose. You know oh. when you used to go swim as a bear and you'd swallow water up your nose? Yeah. And that feeling when you go outside? That's what I'm feeling today. I'm off my rocker. <laughs> Good morning. Wow. What so, two products did you use? I don't know. But some descaler, then a different descaler. I can't remember. Okay. Whatever they were. I don't know. I think we accidentally mixed together, you know, it's a very poisonous gas. Maybe. I've done something because I can still smell it now. Oh. Several hours later. More than several hours later. Nearly a day later. Oh. So I'm okay. How are you? But more importantly... 
How's the bathroom looking? Spotless. There you go. Good God, I do a good job when I clean. Good God almighty. Oh, big laugh from outside there. Huge pop. All friends Listen down there, feed. aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All friends. Awesome, man. I'm happy to hear about your clean bathroom. <laughs> uh, I cannot relate right now, but I'll get on that soon. Ever almost. clean the bathroom? Oh, no, clean the bathroom. Mm. Just not right now. Fair. It's a bit... Mm. It's the most strenuous of all rooms. Oh, to it's clean. the worst one by a mile. You you're bending over a lot more. Yeah. Diff down low. Not like not like cleaning the kitchen surface, is it? No. God, this is thrilling. I'm way, sorry. Way more yeah. elbow grease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's definitely. your favourite part of the flat to clean? <laughs> Mine's the living area. Oh, oh yeah, that that's spotless. My right. favourite part is the the not the bit where you're immediately finished, but when you've gone to work the next day and then you get back and you're like, oh, oh. Yes. it's when you leave the room and come in and go. God, it's gotten bigger. Yeah. And I've gotten rid of all the crap. Yeah. So, mm. like, how must, it's what man must feel. We looked at the roster. So. Because, yes. How dare gentlemen. you describe these people as crap, man? I, you, they know I love them. Well, some of them. Uh, the <laughs> curse of the podcast struck last week. We recorded on Thursday. Because we're like, nothing bad's going to happen on Friday, right? Uh, um, it hadn't it been is, long. It, it hadn't is. been long since the last releases. We had no reason to yeah. think. It is crazy how we've been doing the podcast on a Friday. How long have you had this job now? For since 2018, quite a while. since 2018, that's how long we've been we, doing no, it. No, no, we didn't. We didn't. We would. We used to do it on oh. Thursdays, and then we moved it to a Friday, didn't we? Oh, that's right. To avoid this sort of one thing. year. Yeah. So at least a year. Um, and then the two Fridays we've done it on on a Friday. Releases have happened the during two, the night. Oh, the two Thursdays. Two, 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 yeah. We knew what year. Yeah. So we're not behind everyone else, but that's how it goes. Eight more W talents were released on Thursday, according to Sean Rossap. It was the word of God right now when it comes to these things, sadly. Those released include the remaining members of Hit Row. Yeah. Isaiah Swerve Scott, uh, Shantae Adonis, and Top Dollar, which I guess they were. Well, we got rid of one of them a few weeks ago yeah. for this, which I, and I don't understand, given that they just made their debut on SmackDown. They were getting time on the show. Yeah. Yeah. They were and in mid-feud. The, and they were the same. They were the same as they were in NXT. They still had the bars. They weren't doing Brucey P raps yeah. that I was terribly scared of. It was still hit row. It was still them writing it, clearly. And then Top Dollar did something. And I hope that wasn't what led to what happened. Nah, I think that's that's circumstance. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's funny, isn't it? We, was, we were joking around one of the last times they've been released, they all flow together, about how when certain talents, the high-profile ones have been released, suddenly... News emerge about how awkward they were to deal yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. The top to dollar get... didn't yeah. hold the door open for Vince McMahon, <laughs> the worst company man ever, and all this other stuff. And Top Dollar actually responded to the Coholic article of a quote tweet, and it just seemed to be like, yeah, if you know what you're worth, or you've come from a different place that isn't wrestling, and expect certain standards. Pat McAfee didn't yeah. take any crap when he was first. He was wore suit. shorts when he wanted to. Yeah. yeah. And, he, and then I remember <laughs> they, when they went to him, no, you, they started to kick off at him in a sort of, where well, the wrestling industry way. And he went, I'll see you later then. And they were like, no, 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 come on, please yeah. stay. So, yeah, he's right, I think, top dollar there. Yeah. yeah. Sorry if I haven't standards. Yeah. But uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott gutted. Yeah, oh, yeah. He had, he had, yeah, that dude's headline in a few years, a few months at this rate, uh, all over him. Where, what? Well, you can headline, <laughs> what? You're right. The wrestling. Oh, wrestling. Yeah, yeah, of course he is. Yeah. Sorry, I, was, I didn't quite, my brain didn't work there. Yeah, no, fields as well. <laughs> <laughs> wah, 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 wah. No, he's, um, no, he's class, isn't he? Yeah. So, looking forward to what he does next. John Morrison. Yeah. Who was being a real company man. He was doing all the yeah. silly crap they asked of him. And he was doing it very, he threw himself into it, you know? I felt yeah, like he, flip and flip he got eaten by it. zombies. Yeah. Obviously, we didn't know the releases were coming, but the way he was going on Raw, it did feel like the right was on the wall a bit for him. Because they just yeah. had him in the background, just like meditating for like 30 seconds. And that would be like a weird interaction with someone on the roster. And that would be John Morrison for the week. He needs the Miz. That's a shame. It yeah. is a shame because I can't remember how good John Morrison used to be on the microphone back in the day. But this current run he had, or the, the run he just had, he was unbelievable on yeah. the microphone. Just how mm. charismatic he was. And him and the Miz were both seamless. Hey, yeah. hey, hey. Ho, ho. Oh. Wow, well done, you. <laughs> well, that was the best one of the three, yeah. comfortably. I thought you were doing Randy Orton's theme. Oh, <laughs> but, hey. <laughs> but he had a hell of a in-ring year as well. Oh, yeah. These guys like Ricochet. WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's like, oh, sorry to see you go, but it's like, yeah, you weren't doing anything right now. It's, it's heartbreaking right. as well, because like, obviously Ty Valkyrie got released in the, the one two weeks yeah. ago. 
So they're going to have it's a good Christmas, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she was burning down all the bridges, bless her. But can't but blame her. But who can blame her? No, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just before Christmas. Like a Valkyrie. Yeah. Uh, Tiga Knox. I it's feel Nick's, so bad it's, for it's, her. It's Nick's and Newell now, Matthew. Of course it is, sorry. No, yeah, that's um, just it, crap, isn't it? I mean, injuries and that, so bad luck for her. And then she gets called at the main roster and doesn't get a chance. She yep. had two big pushes, didn't she? She was meant to win one of the um, May Youngs, wasn't she? Uh, allegedly. Was she allegedly, winning? yeah, and then she got injured. Yeah. She got injured she... in the middle of the match. Yeah. And then she had, it was in the midst of another push at some point, I seem to remember, and then she got injured again. But then again, she never really got like a character, did she? She was just like, happy-go-lucky Nixon Newell. I don't like Dakota Kai. So it's a shame she didn't get to sort of fulfil her potential. I like the story that came out about Rhea Ripley saying that she yeah. saved her job twice. Uh, she, if there's um, one thing, a good positive thing about when these happen is when people go, oh, they were great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, she'll get booked immediately. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, really good. wherever. Because, yeah. And she did have the moments, like, she was in the Royal Rumble, which she said on Twitter was, like, a lifelong dream of hers. Mm. So that was cool to see. Um, uh, the feud with Dakota Kai was cool. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just a shame. I'm sure I read somewhere that she'd been wrestling for the past two years without an ACL. Oof. Which kind of be comfortable. Oh, she'd been wrestling at point in her career with that, for two years with it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Don't like, not just, uh, uh, yeah. Oof, don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Drake Maverick. Come on. Uh, yeah. I loved Come it so on. much. They released him twice, I guess. He got an endorsement from Cena on Twitter, I think. I didn't see that. I saw his lovely video. It was, ah! his, it was in response oh, to his... Yeah, that's ah. right. <laughs> yes. It was in response to his video. I think, oh, it, was, I think yeah. it was Cena Good. saying yeah, like, was, yeah. yeah, saying like, such a talented guy, you'll do well. Stuff like that. Because he is... Yeah, he everyone should... seems to admit if Drake Maverick was six foot tall, who knows where he'd be? Which is a crap thing to say, but like, do you know what I mean? Just yeah. make him a manager. I don't know why managers have died out, but that is one guy. He can wrestle as well, like. But obviously, this is in res- like uh, the sort of knowing what WWE is and how big you have to be to be at a certain level and whatnot. So if you can't be that level, why not do managing stuff? And they tried it out, didn't they, with EC3 once, and then just didn't do it again. Because mm. that, yeah, it would have obviously been crap, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know what, Malcolm the... Bivens is so good, yeah. Yeah. no one else can compete. No, true. But Drake Maverick could. I think he's really oh, good. Yeah, no, I agree. He's, um, he was the AOP's manager, and then they made him Wee himself. That yeah. was weird. Lots of Wee, yeah. Lots of Wee, yeah. Dame's Killian Dane's say, yeah. manager slash mate. Yes, that was funny. That was really yeah. good. Yeah. Very creative guy. Yeah. Spud. He'll be fine. He'll be all right. right. Jackson Riker. Now, I do believe that he had huge heat backstage. Yeah. Like, I was going to say, of all the articles we published, so and so had huge heat. This is the one we go, yes. Mm, yeah. Yeah. If you had a bunch of wrestlers who said, we've seen everyone else tweeting about him, and someone DM'd me to go, uh, he used to be the nicest guy, he used to be so beloved backstage. Since you started tweeting all this stuff. Who are these sources of yours? Uh, who was it, Matthew? Uh, who is your source? Give who us are a these clue. People? Come uh, on. My source, HP. Oh, stop that. Source. Stop that now. Is it Shawn Michaels? That'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> he thinks H- of someone else. The H- I changed my profile picture to Triple H. Hey, don't tell anybody. <laughs> but no one likes Riker. It uh, is a weird trajectory he had this year, though, because he was the American oh, hero for a couple of weeks. Main eventer-esque. <laughs> had the match of Elias where Elias took all the bumps. Oh. And you're like, wow, okay, if they do this every week, Riker might have a chance. But every time he wasn't doing superplexes to the outside, it was like, are we cheering you? Whipping himself? Yeah, I whipped himself to yeah. the Navy. Yeah, I'm mean, just doing all that stuff and just like, okay. I mean, I put, I, that that's, it? that's one I never personally understood. Just as a wrestler. Never, yeah. Never got on board with, I should I say. I can see why Vince liked him. Oh, yeah. Like, look at him. But, yeah. American hero. G.I. Mm. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> and Shane Thorne, a.k.a. Slapjack. Slapjack, who hadn't been on TV since March. He had one... Was it main event ma- match, maybe, where he came count. out dressed as like, um, of course it counts. Oh, God, yeah. I it's Hulu, about that. Hulu, like Crocodile Dundee was, wasn't he? Or Steve Irwin, one of the mm. one of the. He looked at NXT 2.0 and you go, oh, I get it. <laughs> one word gimmicks. Okay. Aussie. But he said it was his idea, which is fair enough. He did quite a funny tweet. I can't remember what it was, but he seems oh, to have no, taken I'll it Oh, no, I have to remember well. how to wrestle again. Yeah. yeah. He's a former Noah yeah. GHC tag team champion and all this, so. But um, he'll, I mean, oh, uh, most of these will be all right. But it's just another shame. It was weird, like, because he, he had the charisma, didn't he? Pal, kid, yeah, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He's just a crazy man, wasn't he? With with lots of big flippy moves. He was a good yeah. wrestler as well. And the TM team, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Mod, the, the mighty, mighty will don't, kneel. Don't kneel. Oh, the, uh, the, they have though. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I hope the watching podcast one hasn't made us like <laughs> regret. 
No. Anyway, uh, budget cuts were cited. Of course they were. Uh, another contract news. Johnny Gargano signs one-week extension with WWE. The first ever NXT Triple Champions WWE contract was set to expire December 3rd, but Gargano was suddenly advertised for the men's War Games match December 5th, two days after his contract would have ended. So got a little extension so he can drop the belt to China. Everything's all right before he leaves. Hey! hey. Ha-ha. It is like Good job, don't do crap. I was about to say, like, yeah. <laughs> not doing old crap references anymore. Well, that's better because I was about to do, wow, I can't believe... Doesn't sound like Gargano to have something go on longer than it's necessary. Ah. It's like being part of SCU, and it's Scorpio Sky. He's made those noises back in the day, didn't he? Ah. <laughs> like a fridge door opening. Ooh. Is he? Is he leaving? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Will he go to AW? I don't think he will. Nah, not that place where all his mates are. Lou Dangur on Twitter doesn't think he's leaving. Oh well, I think he is going then. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> confirmed it for me. <laughs> Danger Door said that. <laughs> what? Danger what? Danger Door. So I read his name. <laughs> Bruno Martino and Louis Danger Door. <laughs> Louis Dango makes me... You know, me the door f- shouldn't be open. Louis Dango makes me feel old, man. He's one of these... Like, makes you feel old. Exactly, because cause, cause to me, I'm still like 22. Like, oh, I'm, I'm the young one in the wrestling media sphere. No, I'm oh. not. Louis Dango is. <sighs> anyway... Arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> for being young, not Massive for... <laughs> heat between Jack and Louis. No, not at all. Oh. I don't really know him. Yeah. I've been either, I should say. I haven't jibes at the guy. I've never met him in my life. <laughs> no, I don't know. Either. I'm sure he's a lovely guy. He's oh, yeah. so coming up. I'm like, I know you just because I'm on Twitter. Comes just... across very professionally in media calls. I'll give him. The... Oh, I hate him. <laughs> my, my only exposure is when Sean Ross Sapp is just taking the piss out of him. Just really, oh, as you said, just his crap. No, it's tape. nothing. It's nothing. They're, they're look at him. Look at him. Th- look yeah. at him thinking there's thinking there's gossip. Oh, what's he said about oh, him? Oh, Susan's drama involved. No, no, absolutely, it's not drama. Yeah. It's more S- in like a like a like an EC3 oh, trade break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like a. Look, he's got it. He's absolutely Aww. devastated. I'm sure he's what's Sean Ross up been saying about him? Yeah, but Sean Ross has got to watch out. He's the word of God. If he says so, if he says you know you're five three, then you're small. EC3 has claimed. He asked his therapist to erase the memories of his time in WWE from his mind. Leave the memories. <laughs> Christ. Is this like in character? This is what it, I can't tell. EC3 goes in and out of character a lot. No, he doesn't. I did a straight to hell with him. He was in character the entire time. <laughs> oh. The entire time. <laughs> I Wasn't think... he Richard? Editor of the Straight to Hell. <laughs> I think my favorite memory from NXT would probably be the satisfaction from the ladder match from the North American Championship. Five stars. Coming back, yes. Coming back to the place where Triple H and Sean were there. They were super happy, and that was kind of a vindication for my long journey there. So, so it was everything else. So blah, 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 skip ahead. I purposely went to my therapist to have him race my, from my mind the eternal sunshine of the spot that was mine. I have no uh, recollection of anything boss. that took place with WWE, even the romance angle of Alexa Bliss. Wait, what? Was that a, that? She just went, ooh, you're quite fit, you. Ooh, the romance angle. I think he's kidding around because that cool. didn't happen. But I did have to think, did that happen? It was a very unremarkable few weeks. I remember mm. the talk, is it, what's it called? A moment with bliss, that's the one, isn't it? On the stage. And she was like, ooh, you're quite nice, you. Mm. Ooh, uh, you've got muscles. Oh, that was it, was it? That was yeah, it, that was, that was it, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And that amazing angle. Yeah. I, I can't blame him. Yeah, yeah he's got to yeah. be kidding. Because it must be hard, like, being him and looking like him and talking like him and then not doing anything in WWE twice. He's he's <laughs> Mr. WWE, yeah. They Weird never man. let him talk. That's his biggest strength. Because he sounds like a weatherman. No, what? That's, no. What, he, that's what he got told, huh? Oh, he got told that? Yeah. Really? He sounds like a weatherman. It's bizarre. I'm sure that's what it was, wasn't it? My memory is sketchy as out. Yeah, I'm sure it was like, watch Straight to Hell on the Cult yeah, of yeah, yeah, YouTube yeah. channel. You'll find out there. Uh, Rick Flair says he could never return to WWE because he does not want to work with Nick Khan again. Um, so he was very upset. I took a lot of text here about the Woo being replaced from WWE's intro. <laughs> now the Ultimate Warrior and Rick Flair points out what the guy who left you twice, high and dry. All right, and I Flair never did that. <laughs> uh, and did, and, the other and he also says, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it took me off uh, for, for that little reason. If it downplays it and goes, well, yeah, and it's also, he seems to be very unhappy because he owns a trademark to be the man. So now he's under the impression that Becky Lynch has the man. Uh, do we owe him some money? So, which I think is the opposite is true. Ric Flair's quite mouthy for a man with a net value of $10. Wow. I read somewhere that they tried to take the trademark when he was ill in hospital. 
I've read that he's, as well. Well, Ric yeah. Flair said he that, said but the way that. he words it, it's it, it's it's odd, isn't it? You wouldn't want to take that as the Fraser, word of God, like Lewis Danger Door. So Fraser turned to me the other day because he sits next to me in the office and went That's like. Nice one. Have you heard this? Flair's saying that they tried to get him to sign the rights over for something when he was on life support. I was like, that's horrible. Yeah. And then read it, and I, it, it didn't really make much sense. And I was like, uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I, I, I mm. don't know. I know that. I know that you can't. I know that I shouldn't just say Rick Flair's lying because that's horrible to say. No, but you can't but also say this happened because, because, and you look yeah. at the source and go, D- does it say that? Rick Flair once claimed he got struck by lightning, <laughs> getting off a plane. So. Tubman's loving that. Was that not a wrestler from the 80s? Yeah. <laughs> lightning. Lightning. I am Rick struck Flair. by lightning. But wow, I mean, wow. Surely with WWE. So there could be some of the things he said in promos. <laughs> Baby, I got off the plane, I got struck by lightning, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to say it either way, but whether it's yeah. true or false, either he's lying about a horrible thing or someone in WWE's done a horrible thing. Yeah. So I don't know what to say. It's just it's just seeing Flair going like, I can't believe I've been treated this badly. And he's like, uh-huh. To be, fair, uh, to be fair, though, because I've, I've seen a few documentaries where he's spoken about his relationship with Vince and how Vince has lo- lent him hundreds of thousands of dollars and whatnot. So obviously there's a nice relationship to be had there. Yeah. So to have this, if it has happened to him, it must be a bit a bit jarring mm. after all that all that, all that yeah. water under the bridge. Hang on, I'm being treated like a, a normal human being now. Oh, <laughs> good. <laughs> anyway, uh, Kenny Omega has had to vacate the AAA mega title. Uh, we should held over 700 days. He's going to defend it against El Hio de, oh, de Dos Caras. Yes. No, 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 no not him. Oh, God, I'm going with that. Oh, God. <laughs> takes out, takes out the did... Twitch, okay, takes out Twitch stream with the first. Young James, <laughs> can you get on cage match and see what uh, El Hio de Ooh, Dos Caras' oh, most, recent, most that. recent matches are? So I just like the feel of aluminum. Oh, that made me go all weird. El Hio del Vigan. Oh, the king. So, well, I think buffered away. It's definitely Viking. Like, isn't it right? Anyway, so he's vacating it. It's going to be a five way. And AEW being very nice enough to send Bobby Fish the five way, as well as Jay Lethal, who I imagine was walking past Tony Carney, who was making the phone call. <laughs> <laughs> right then, we've been to Rob Les promotions. What were we doing here? Sorry, Ross. This is El Hijo de Dos Caras' most recent matches. Oh, why? Because Rob, Rob Les. <laughs> Rob Les. <laughs> <laughs> You can't still play from the 90s. Robles. <laughs> Robles <laughs> Promotions. Todo por una fasión. Yes, that's uh, something I know a lot of a lot of things about. Oh, there's some loose so promotions. Good, it, nice was... he's doing well. Nice <laughs> he's doing well. <laughs> so that's happening. I mean, Kenny Omega is like, no, no, no. He's not workingly taking some time off. He's really taking some time yeah. off. And he's been working nonstop for the last few years. And he has that high impact style. Makes sense. I think those those triple A rings have been the thing to finish him off, quite frankly. They are hard, aren't they? Yeah. Aye. Whoa. Harder than Rob Les, centre four. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, you kind of tell with Kenny Omega, can you? Right. Yeah, it's incredible. Then was like, oh, you can tell Kenny Omega's banged up. He's no, been able can't. to wrestle 25 minutes on the pay per view. <laughs> like, all right. Do you see that the, the video where he got his um his neck a massage? Yeah, that stuff. Oh, it was massage, was it? Chiropractic. Chiropractic. Yeah. Chiropractic. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. It's a really hard. My Restekpa. Yes. Went through the roof for the man. Oh. The turmoil he's put himself through for the fans. He loves the fans. I'm not doing it. Sad news. Scotty Too Hoddy, NXT coach and producer, says he's requested his release from WWE. Uh, statement reads today I've asked for my release. 30 years ago, I stepped in the WWE ring for the very first time. I've lived my dream 100 times over. Uh, I always promised myself that I would never be part of something solely for the paycheck. And that was where I was at. What a so, guy. So what I've wow. inferred from this as a clickbait journalist is Scotty Too Hot, he hates NXT 2.0. <laughs> he doesn't want to train your Lash Legends and stuff like that. <laughs> Poor Lash Legends. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you said it as well. He's like, nah, you are right, uh, What a guy. Yeah. Scotty. Oh. And, and, and and people like Sasha Banks and that were like replying saying, I like, love you, Scotty. What a guy. I Scotty Rip- Too Hot. Yeah, Rhea Ripley was like, he's my guy or whatever it was. Mm. So, yeah. What nice a, to what see. A, what a guy. One of the one of the good ones. I know it's risky to say that no, in wrestling. I don't but... say anymore. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's hoping. But everyone yeah. seems to like him though. At least yeah. he's going to AW. <laughs> oh, imagine! Hey, hey, oh, so triple eight, triple eight. T- two seconds, two seconds. Scotty Too Hardy will also be in the five. Have, be have... Sean three, Luke Warm. Imagine, imagine <laughs> uh, the main event of Rampage: Scotty Too Hardy versus Billy Gunn. Oh, oh, they could do it. Imagine when he gets the worm. Oh, <laughs> Tony, what, I know you watch it. <laughs> he loves it. Oh, man. And that was the news.
I'm not doing Rollins. Oh, I Rollins. I thought we were taking into Raw. Yeah, we can't do it. We can't do if you want to. Just yeah. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. The tease, the tease for people to keep on watching. I mean, everyone knows. I mean, there is more news to the stuff that happened on Raw, though. Of course, there is. So we'll go through that in the Raw bit. Okay. Good stuff. <laughs> yes, it is. What do we do? Thumbs up on the thing. Oh, is that the new about? thing now? Okay, the new old thing. Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. Ah, time for everyone's favorite segment, the Hall of Fame. And here we go. In condescending order from last week, CM Punk laughing at MJF, 8%. I actually took it seriously this week. <laughs> I actually tried. Did you? And when I don't take it seriously, I come second or third. And this time I've come comfortably very last. You know, Jack, you should be happy. More people like you than they do wrestling a lot of the time. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it. But... It's so great. It's like, you know, AEW, WWE, Jack's visit to the takeaway last night when uh, he was hungry. 99%. <laughs> I, I'm i never going to try again in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, the less you try, the you do. I mean, they're what all... What are you on about? This is the biggest, most important Hall of Fame ever. <laughs> uh, yeah. To go uh... back to podcast number one. Let's not go back there. <laughs> uh, little the shop, thirty percent. Thirty percent. So CM Punk laughing at MJF, eight percent. Little, okay. Hi. <clears throat> right. uh, CM Punk's only laughed at MJF once. There've been many happy times. That's there. not the little. one that confuses me the most. The next bit's the bit that confuses sure, there was, me. There was two people on the Patreon poll who said I had no idea who Little the Shop was. Who Little the Shop? <laughs> who was. Little is? Yeah. The person <laughs> Little uh, before Ross's thing. So oh. spreading the spreading the good name of Little <laughs> to the masses. <laughs> I'm sure that I thought they had it in America. I don't know if they do or not. Yeah, I'm sure oh. they do. You're doing God's work, Ross. I have a friend. Oh, no, is that Aldi? That is Aldi. I beg Aldi my pardon. Oh. I beg my... Because I know someone, a regional manager. I went to school with one of uh, Lidl. Oversees over 30 Lidl stores. Wow. It's paid handsomely for it as well. Wow. Oh. Sickeningly so. All the best to him. <laughs> <laughs> Any sour grapes we find on aisle yes. three? <laughs> Hangman winning the AW World Title, sixty-two percent. I mean, there we go, an actual you know, happy good. wrestling it's, moment. It's a great. It deserves to go in, Matthew. I'm not begrudging you your first place in oh, the no. Hall of Fame. The, my issue is with the disparity between my percentage and your percentage, because mine was a good wrestling moment too. Yeah, just not as good as that. Not, one. As, not as good. good as that not, one, as good yeah. not as good. Not as good. Certainly. And not as good as little. Oh, little. <laughs> Apparently not. And I don't understand. I don't know what's happened. What if? Hangman won the AW title at Little, and CM Punk laughed at MJF in yeah. the background. Maybe in the middle, in the middle of Little, of Little, yeah. in the bookshop Lid- Little. Oh. <laughs> Bar, dear. <laughs> Carry on, sorry. Yeah, yeah move on. It's like letting all the air out I can. So my pick, the Hall of Fame this week. It was my birthday this week. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Thirty-four years young. We should have started this by going like, happy birthday, Matthew, <laughs> sorry. Just the way you said 34, that was fantastic. 34. I didn't even say it right because I'm not used to it yet. Thir- 34. Oh, no. 34. Yeah, it's out. Yeah. 33 was fun to say because you used to do the Steiner math thing. 33. Like, 34. Fun number as well, too, the same number. Oh, 33. Yeah. But now, yeah. one's odd, one's even. Two, <laughs> two sad, desperate twinks, 33. They say it bingo. <laughs> but... I mean, so many lovely outpourings and messages. Thank you, Stephen Scudders, for that lovely video you did. Um, my parents got me an AeroPress. Yes! Enjoying coffee. The way, if God wanted coffee, that's what he'd use to make it. What a tool. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Only cost like 20 quid as well. Oh, is it? Oh, oh well, <laughs> that's no, just, that's, that's, for that bit of kit and the coffee you get for yeah, 20 yeah. quid. Whoa, lovely. Just... Oh, and I wonder what it's going to taste like. So it looks it's all about... Oh, oh, oh. What, what, what coffee got in there? What, what coffee got in there? The ground? Ground stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. yeah, got it. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Ground up. Oh, so bad. Because I bought such a big packet of it. I've got what the name is. But I've got the, the, play, the marketplace in town, Pumphreys. And I get like the darkest coffee they do. Get yourself on Skull Crusher coffee if you want to have your head blown off. I've been resisting <laughs> the urge because I know if I try them, I might get hooked on them. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh. But you, you like them. Oh, it's amazing. That's like, a secret to your power. It's been like a year. Oh. Well, this is today. But like, oh, it's, no. normally I have like. It's been over a year and a half now of just having a skull crush and just being like, oh, I'm dying here. And going, I'm alive. I'm alive. Mm. It's going you, to tackle the day. Have you got them in the office or is this at your flat? This is my flat. Damn yeah. it. I was going to try and ask if I could have a bit. You can oh. try a skull crush coffee a, if you like. Not even a, I'm not even a coffee drinker, but the way you've described it. Oh, it's, it's sensational. I have to both drink. Like, like both bring in juice. Our... 
<laughs> for the bring in our error presses, do dueling error presses next week. How is your what's your technique like, Matthew? <laughs> ding ding. Our technique. Your technique. How long do you leave the the hot? Uh, well, do you do hot or cold? Hot, hot. How long do you leave the hot water in the in the the bit at the top? I read somewhere ages ago two minutes is the preferred length yeah. to leave it in for stir. Uh, yeah, no, with that the, bloody with the big thing. No, with the big thing, yeah. it's just stir gently, and obviously it's supposed to settle there. Well, I did. It's got up, down, left, right. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, little spoon. And then when it comes to the push and down of the plunger, how does that work? Really fun. Oh, I did it the first time, and it was just like. <laughs> Which way around you have it? You oh, I thought way. you were. The honestly, way. thought you were going to say that. Let's move this along because like the inverted way. You, oh, you've joined in. What do you mean? From Ups- the kitchen counter, work your way up. I don't know what you mean by yeah, inverted. Upside What's down? going on? Yeah. You're supposed to have. You're supposed to have. You don't know. Mug. You have your coat. Yeah, you have your mug, and then the no. thing, and you press it, and it goes <sighs> in the. Mug. How can you do it upside down? Aeropress inverted. This He's is a. Ma- a this isn't is even anything, my Hall of Fame pick, by the way. Is there anything you're not hipster about, Richard? Tubman? <laughs> is there anything? So what? That's the plunger. What at the am bottom. I looking at? How's the, how does it get plunged then? Yeah. If the plunger. Oh, oh that's just shut up. Recipe for disaster, that is. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, you, but how does that, how's so that moisten, better? You moisten the filter. Yeah. You put the hot, well, hang on, I wasn't ready there. Uh, you put the hot water in the top. Yeah. Stir the top. Yeah. Put the cap on the top. Yeah. But, and then, but where's the advantage? I can't remember the reason, but there is a distinct advantage, apparently. I don't do it. But will I come? Credit, Lewis you get a little drop when you come out the, the filter? Oh, I don't know. A lot of people do it that way, though. Do they? Bloody hell. A lot of, pe- a lot of people voted for Hitler as well. Um, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, my Hall of Fame pick is not the Error Press. All right? As tender as that was, it's going to run by that. It should be now. <laughs> um, I know, it should be now. I'm one of the many things that were given to me. This is the one that's probably going to stick with me for the longest. Stop Waffle from the channel. Yeah. Watches a lot of Twitch stuff, mine on yours and everything else. A very talented individual. They stitched me my very own wee fat lump. Wow. What's wee fat lump? Can you show a picture, please? One of my favorite things of all time. Yes, that's right. We've done this many, many times beforehand, but it is the photo <laughs> of the guy going, No, I'm not a dog napper. I've got a business. <laughs> I'm very big at. Uh, I only took a photo of this dog just because of. I couldn't get over how fun it was. <laughs> <laughs> and that that makes me crease every time I see it. And rather than have that, you know, my other idea was going to get that tattooed. Um, Stop all, because no, don't do that, Matthew. You regret it. Here, I've stitched you. You would a not wee regret, fat dog. You would not regret look at the, a wee fat dog tattoo. And it's a smiling as well. It doesn't look, you know, yeah. like it's gagging for a pizza like the other one. So. You would, you would, look at you that. can tell that's been made with love. Yeah. I love the, the density of the torso. Yeah. Right? <gasps> oh, God, you Adam Pacitti? Oh. You can lift any dog. No, I'm not Adam Pacitti because I actually did it after saying this. Hey. <laughs> Just saying. But yes, we fat dog, right stitched up. Where would you get the tattoo? Were you seriously thinking about it? Yeah, because I want to. It's one of these things where I want a tattoo because someone else has got one. And those, those people are me dad, me stepmom. And I'm like, they can't have tattoos and me not have one. So I thought, well, do something that you like. Oh, he goes, that dog that makes you laugh every time you see it. I'm like, yeah, but I don't know where I'll put get it. Get Mangy Swans. Oh. You, should, you should get a, a Cult of Hot Wrestling podcast. Oh, no. no. Sleeve, no. Sleeve on the go. Not the oh. first. <laughs> Just all the memes. Get the first thumbnail up there. <laughs> no, you, <laughs> Ross, drunk, here. Uh. Jack, looking at his feet, here. And then my head somewhere down by my thumb, you know, there you go. small. We fat dog, long Mankey boy, swan. monkey swan. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Did you see the tweet? Small that, elephant. Did you see the tweet? I think we got R. a tweet R. that um, a couple of viewers went to York yes. and they saw long boy oh, in the flesh. Oh, honorable mention. Yeah. Yes, must have been like seeing a celebrity. Yeah, wow. he was a long boy, wasn't he? He was noticeably bigger yeah. than all the rest. It of was weird. Not made the super duck. It was weird <laughs> seeing him. Just in his natural it, habitat. Yeah, it's just weird seeing him amongst the rest of the ducks. <laughs> go, go and see the duck and oh, it's yourself. It's this long boy. <laughs> it is. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> get him on, anyway. That might be it. I might have to get the entire set somehow. But get for now, you I'm very, very fortunate to have such a be part of such an amazing uh, fan base. Be part oh, of, I have one, whatever you know what I mean. Uh, to have people that would make something like that, that's amazing. It's very good. It's very nice. Thank you, Stoff Waffle. Thank you, Stoff Waffle. Thank you, Shun. Oh yeah. Oh, Do that you? crazy German Do lady, you? as she oh, said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nah, she's great. Uh, so after Aeropress discussion and dogs, what have you got for us in second place? It is me. Little the shop. Little. I'm going to go for Sam. Okay. Driver. Sam Driver of Cultaholic Wrestling. Oh, wow. Because he is an editor of video. And this, I feel awkward saying this in front of Richard, who edits 99% of my videos. Oh, no. Who I haven't nominated for the Hall of Fame. Oh, no. But Sam this week pulled the... I'm not saying his finger was in the arse, but he pulled the finger out the arse, proverbially speaking, because he, he did the reactions for myself and Andrew's reactions to Survivor Series. And he just messaged me going, I want to make this look more like insert thing, which I don't understand. So he's trying to make it look more like a thing. And yeah. just I'll just play the opening bit, Richard, I guess, just to show people what oh, they can okay. see. Because once that. again, much like everything we do these days, the views are criminally... Li- You've just skipped ahead there. Just the very opening. It's just... Andrew, Andrew just yeah, he sat yeah, there. Andrew, yeah. Yeah. Maybe skip five, ten seconds in. Take him from behind. Well, look at the editing that's going on here. Oh, it's sensational. Right? And Let's just ignore this bit. It's it. just, you know, Where playing the, the, the not bollocks with it. Look at the... Editing here is oh, sensational. Look rumble. at the bald head, and it's does it, it. I put a screenshot on Twitter of all the things that well, four things that Sam did within the first eight minutes, and Sam, it was astonishing what he pulled off, and the fact that it's done such low views just makes my heart sad. So Sam is going in the Hall of Fame for what he did this week in the reaction. My favorite bit's this bit where he takes it off again, briefly comes back, and then he puts it back on. Your rating. That's very know. good. All right, but Sam, oh, we, all, we already knew that Sam was... You can forget sometimes, though, can't you? Yeah. Because we've been wowed by all these shiny new editors like your Andrews, your Dan Heppels. Mm. You forget sometimes <laughs> about the OG. <laughs> Sam set the tone for wrestling YouTube generally. What he culture? said this to me a few times, yeah. yeah. He did? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, he didn't. Uh, uh, Richard's, uh, oh, Richard's that's ruined everything. Now. Yeah, Richard's my I thought you now. said that we said that to you, but Sam himself has gone, ah, I've, I've created this. Yeah. Well, well, it's nice that I agree with him. I guess. So my pick for is, is Richard for the Hall of Fame, because <laughs> Richard does all my videos apart from the reactions, and he deserves a bit of credit. That's nice. <laughs> Sam's had it snatched away <laughs> at the very last <laughs> second. Does he actually say <laughs> Well, because of where he used to work and the stuff he used to do, he... I feel so bad now. <laughs> just gonna, no, because I, I meant it's like, yeah, you're right. He does think this, but it's, it's different, isn't it? If you say something about someone, it's like, he's really good. And if you turn around, he goes, yes, I am. You're like, oh. <laughs> and he is. He is. Yeah, he's, but he is. I mean, he's, he's, really no, he's, he's not all, lying. Fair, yeah, he's not we, lying. All, we all love Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Eric Handanov for saying how good they are. So why can't we love Sam Driver for it as well? <laughs> you see, the, you have the seagulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have the editors. When the seagulls follow the shoulder. When they influence wrestling media. <laughs> Because uh. they think they'll drop fish. <laughs> Goodbye. Anyway, so who is your pick? It's Richard Tillman. <laughs> okay, Richard Tillman. And what a great editor he is. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. <laughs> oh, phenomenal. Oh, to be God. fair, Richard's put up with a lot of bollocks from me over the past... How many years, Richard? Mm. Five? Five. And, the 2016 and, he's, and he's still here. So God bless yeah. us all. Also, <laughs> I feel like... Because w- w- Sam said to me the other day, because he'd been editing a lot of his own stuff, like he'd been editing his own voice for weeks... And, he's, and, I, and he edited one of my videos and he messaged me saying like, God, I'm so relieved to be editing someone else's voice apart from my own. So for Richard, who edits probably just Ross's voice, apart from when he's doing this podcast. Yeah, he does lists as well from other people. So you, you'll, know more, you'll know more about Ross's presenting style than anyone on the planet. Wow. That's memorize back the front. <laughs> Doesn't take much, like. Yeah. It's the same every time. Yeah. I remember seeing Tubman for the first time when it was just like, we like looking at like we did in the first podcast. So it's the, me, black wrestling shirt, Jack wearing the stuff. Well, he my wears England shirt I was wearing. It, yeah. Um, Ross looking like he just showed up, you know, out of, you know, filling up his car, the petrol station, whatever. And then the king of drip himself is w- watching and filming editing. I'm like, wait, you're the one doing the edit? Oh, you're shut doing up, the Matthew. Yeah, I hate when Matthew does this, you know. Mm. Why, are how, all, how why, are all the, looks? why are all the good-looking ones that call the holic behind the camera? Get, ah, shop get at H&M yourself. now, so what are you going to do about hey, that? Hey, 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 we've all, we've all stepped our game up. I used to be the king of, of rise. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we've got two. What do you think? <laughs> my, oh, no, my Hall of Fame nomination this week is the discourse surrounding... The Cultaholic Christmas Party 2021. <laughs> oh, no. And oh, no. Go on. with a special shout out to me and to Ross for being the only two in the office with any <laughs> balls oh, no. and the spirit oh, of Christmas. 
Got in what them. do you mean, Jack? And Dan Heppel as well. Oh, Dan and Dan Heppel as well. I sorry. Um, you know, I, I don't know where to begin. I'm letting you say this. I'm not you saying the word. <laughs> Democracy is a funny yeah, thing. Democracy is a funny thing. And in recent years, we've learned that like there's that famous quote that democracy might be. It's it's like it's a rubbish political system, but it's the best we've got. And that's exactly how I feel this week, because we've been done here <laughs> in the Christmas party, right? The normies, the lads of the office, right? Of which there are three. We've been done because Adam Pacitti goes, right, here are the options for the Christmas party. Option one. I can't remember what the option one was. Bar buffet. Bar buffet, option one. Free bar buffet. Option two, meal and bar... No. Oh, man. Option one was meal and bar buffet. Option two was like a private back room of a bar, right? Like a party thing. Option three was... Arcade. Arcade and followed by a bar. Option four, Freddie Mercury tribute act. <laughs> right. right. And Craig John, by the way, shout out. Maybe he should have been my Hall of Fame pick this week because he is sensational. The UK's best Freddie Mercury tribute act was in Gateshead and we could have been there. Hmm. But instead, what happened? You'll Matthew? never guess which option won in an office full of triple Nerds! jump. <laughs> full of triple jump <laughs> editors, weebs. <laughs> For a Christmas party, Christmas party, remember a Christmas party, which yeah. is all, which is solely about getting drunk and kissing each other and yeah. <laughs> kissing each other. Man. <laughs> Why not? Um, the arcade won by a, a, a landslide, like a landslide. The I, only people not to vote for the arcade was myself, Jack, and Dan Heppel. Dan Heppel and myself went for the Freddie Mercury. Is that really? <laughs> I went also, for the, I didn't vote for any because I didn't see the poll. I went for the standard. <laughs> no, that mattered. I went for the standard bar thing. It wouldn't have yeah. made a difference because the arcade won by a country mile. I was working a half day on the day of the vote. So I came in in the afternoon saying, what's happened here? Why is every single person voted for the arcade? And Fraser and them were like, well, we thought it was the arcade in the Metro Center, which has got like dodgems and like laser tag and loads of stuff going on. And then instead, well, it's a, it's a smaller arcade. <laughs> That's what I'll say. <laughs> I don't know how do I word this without... <laughs> Does Adam watch these? I don't think he can now. <laughs> Does he watch them? Yeah, That's not a soundproof no, door. That I'm, sh I'm sure that I'm sure that I'm sure that the nerds of the office will at least pretend to be having a good time at this arcade. <laughs> but we went on the website. It's not built for that sort of thing. It's not. It's a kids. It's a kids party destination. Man. Aye, all, the, <laughs> all the pictures are of children's parties. <laughs> the aftermath. The aftermath. Once we leave there. Once we've had our fill of Pong and Pac-Man, is to head to a, a, like a, a bar, which is going to be our room in the bar, which is nice, and that's going to be good and stuff. But <laughs> the other thing you'll notice is that both these destinations are in a very specific part of Gateshead that I'm not going to reveal. But who should live in that part of Gateshead for a quick getaway? Oh, Adam Pacitti. Aye. Mm. Strange that. When the, almost all of us live on the other side of the river. The party's two two minutes away from his house. <laughs> I don't. I just can't. And they've fallen for this. <clears throat> this is exactly hey. how Mugabe stayed in power. For <laughs> <years>. <laughs> they've fallen for that because they've been distracted. <laughs> I know what'll get them if I distract them with shiny video games. Not even Both shiny. Are, they're old. Vote, they'll vote for that. And they did in their droves. They voted for that. And uh, another four years of dictatorship <laughs> continues. The Christmas party is going to be. <laughs> Me and Ross and Dan Heppel <laughs> sat in the corner like, on the floor. like dads <laughs> with, with, with cans. Oh, you all right? I know, bad eye. Everyone else squashed into this. Okay. Like, I'm sure it'd be nice for a big conversation in that, but as far as I'm aware, because no, I, I watched a YouTube video of an arcade, right? What the Christmas part, the first half of the Christmas party is going to be is everyone stood in silence with occasional chatter of, oh, that was good, that. <laughs> and then four minutes later, Oh, would you mind if I have a go, please? And then back to silence. Now, this is just we one could have been a Freddie Mercury for goodness sake. This is just one point of view, and I didn't even vote for Freddie. <laughs> I voted for the standard night out. But I just, I hope that we have a great time, and I hope that I'm, I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that I'm wrong. I can just see the direction this is going in. It's a huge controversy. Have I said too much? <laughs> No, <laughs> I would be I would be shocked if Adam didn't say something to you after the yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> no, but oh god, 
Ah, but the engagement on this video might go up because of the... Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they'll be to see next week and see what's left of you. I just find it. I just... <laughs> I just find battered. it. <laughs> I can't wait for the Christmas party. <laughs> Ow. I just like the Rich Rap Man statement. <laughs> I love arcades and I love that bit of Gator. <laughs> No, it will be a good night. I will enjoy myself. Ashton from Triple Jump accused me of being dramatic, overly dramatic. But then she's a gamer. Triple Jump. But she's, she's not even good. Gamers. She's a gamer. She's not going. Then she's not going. Sure. <laughs> she's not even going. Like. But she was like, Jack, you're being so dramatic. Ross comes in, <laughs> starts like... I called it a travesty. <laughs> starts, starts going on worse. Doesn't say a word to him, does she? Scared of him. <laughs> Cowardly Ashton. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Jack. I'm shot enough people. I'm like Ty of Valkyrie. I'm just burning all the fridge. <laughs> no, I don't care. Come on. Let's have it. I can't wait for it. It was good, like, because when Adam Adam was like, what drinks did anyone fancy? I was straight in there. Bottle of honey Jack Daniels <laughs> and a few, few star apartment. I uh, would like. I will not be playing Paul. Uh, I will not be playing Donkey Kong. <laughs> I will not be playing Tetris. I will not be playing Wrestle Kid, whatever that other one's called, if it's there. I doubt it will be. Yeah, no way. I'll be drinking <laughs> on the floor because there's no seats. You voted for the arcade. <laughs> I mean, the more you talk about it, the more I want to see Freddie Mercury now. Way I! Who wants to live forever? <laughs> the show must go on. Freddie Mercury, by the way, also in Gated. Yeah. All the options in Gated. <laughs> <laughs> there was no way out of that one. There was no way of seizing control of Zimbabwe yeah. there. But... It's just how we got so right, man, we'll just get on the last Meti back into town and then party like <laughs> no it's 2009. No, we won't. No, we won't. Because all the people that we're going out with are going to have the, had their all their excitement. Their dopamine's going to be depleted because they'll have already played all of the Mario Kart yeah. and all of the Mario Bros. They'll be on the come down at the bar. <laughs> they won't want to go out after. I would like to have a, a wager with somebody over and under how many people just bail after the video game bits Aye. over. Yeah. We, 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 this, <laughs> back at the old place, half the party left the Christmas party once to go back to the office and play board games. Me and Ross have been traumatized once. What? We've, be, we've been burned once. Uh, what board games? I don't know. I didn't go. I was in the other group. I, we went to the the pub. Point, Matthew. I went to the pub with Ross and, and They went them. back to the office. They went for back Christmas to the office party. on the Christmas party. Oh! This must be some board game. So, yes, in conclusion, <laughs> my nomination for the Hall of Fame, and it has been thrilling if you haven't been able to tell from the past five minutes. And it deserves its own Wikipedia page in years to come, once we look back on this monumental occasion. The Cultaholic Wiki, yeah. Is the discourse surrounding the 2021 Cultaholic Christmas Party. Um, if I'm not here next week, we'll, we'll know why. <laughs> we'll know what's happened. Because I've spoken out. I'm like Trotsky. I've spoken out. And You're I'm like Top be, Dollar. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, be done Mugabe, Trotsky, Top Dollar. All the greats, Jack. Aye. I'm a bit of a... a, bit of a Bit of a folk hero. <laughs> That's where the, the thrill came in with for me, though, is when Fraser, I'm going to drop him in this, Fraser was like, oh, I thought it was a different arcade, the better one. And then none of them changed the vote. None of them changed the vote. None of them had the balls. Because Pachiti had his men next to the voting booth with machine guns. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> a lot to take in there, wasn't there? I noticed how you haven't said anything about this. He's loving it. It's an arcade. Mate, I'm easy like Sunday morning, me. Fair enough. Have a good time with some lads. If it's very Mercury, great. I don't want to sound... in I, deepest, darkest gates head, great. Listen. If it's arcade beating everybody at games, that's, I'll be great. Whoa, well, so. trying to make it fun with compa- competition. Yeah, but they're only one player, aren't they? There's big machines. No, some of them will be two. God, I hope there's two player ones. <laughs> but... <laughs> it was arcade in history if there's no two player games. Just as a quick disclaimer, I'd just like to say, I sound like I'm very ungrateful because we are getting a Christmas party in this class. It's not but, what I would associate with but, a Christmas party. But we've been, I agree. I feel like we've, what we did last year, we did ghetto golf, right? That yeah, was that was class. I feel like we... Before? Two years ago, two, yeah, When course, it wasn't yeah, lockdown yeah, yeah. yet. But I feel like me and Ross possibly have, have come from a background where Christmas parties are solely about getting hammered. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, you know now, we're, now we're friends with nerds, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. And I know that the viewers are going to largely side with the other side of things and not me, but that's fine. Well, but you should Google the arcade. <laughs> <laughs> I've deliberately not said the name of that yeah. establishment. Well, there's so many in Gated. Well, the paparazzi. Oh, no, what if he's a viewer of the... Oh. I thought me bottle of whiskey, me. <laughs> <laughs> what if he watches the channel? Well, you well, better watch out. I'm you, gonna you, you attack you with the Zord of Zelda when you arrive. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ross doing those stuff. So great. You'll the hot hammer your arse, you will. Eh? Get a big shield. Bosh. <laughs> oh, sorry. 
Go to the Hall of Fame picks this week. I hope I make my arm a saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> we fat lump stitched. I hope that wins. God, me too. If not, I'm keeping him anyway. Oh, yeah. The... What, are you going to just... Whatever. Not a winner. <laughs> uh, Richard Tubman. It is actually Richard Tubman then. <laughs> Richard Tubman, the best editor in all of course. Sam, <laughs> Sam has allegedly talked himself out of a Hall of Fame nomination. I feel bad. <laughs> Not as bad as Jack Wilfield. Uh, one minute after this podcast was released. Yeah. Um, the drama surrounding... The discourse. The, the discourse, discourse surrounding. Sorry, the disc, well, the drama and the discourse surrounding the Cultaholic Christmas Party 2021. In Jack's defence, I'm sure if the party was let's go to St. James's Park and watch Newcastle play, or let's go to... Game England game, for example, all the video game nerds would be like, "Oh, I hate this." I oh hate yeah, this so much. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to go to an arcade instead. Mm, exactly. That's just where we're coming. I from. wouldn't like to go and watch. No offense night. to them if the the guy is watching. Sorry, arcade man. <laughs> it's just not for me. Arcade man. <laughs> Why am I guessing that he watches this? <laughs> please, please go to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic and vote for which Hall of Fame segment. You want to let my, let Tom my. and Sam will be on the podcast forevermore <laughs> next Friday. I'll let my emotions get the better of me. <laughs> I feel like. It's going to make a cracking video, though. Not like, because what's going to do more hits or likes? People are, yeah, this is great here. I just beat Sam at Time Crisis. And it all just, Ross is staring angrily. It's going to be, the vibe, the vibe is going to be the first episode of the podcast. That's what it's going to be like. <laughs> it is. What I'm hoping is there's at least a ping pong table or something. Have a little game yeah. on. Yeah. I've, I've just yeah, got no interest work. of playing these arcade games. No. no bit of air hockey, maybe, to push. Air hockey would be good, oh. yeah. Hi. It won't be that. Uh, I'm sure it'll be good. Yeah. I can't wait to see the results next week and get reminded of this. <laughs> <laughs> see what's left in the podcast. Well, a week's a long time in politics, so we'll see what direction the discourse <laughs> is taken by then. <sighs> Thank you. Thumbs up. That says this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ha! Ah, this week in the wrestling. Smackdown. Roman and the Usos open the show with Xavier Woods crowned and thrown in the ring. Mm. Woods interrupts and says that the physical objects don't make a king. Roman gets the Usos to destroy the throne and prepares to stomp on the crown. Woods decides he's a hypocrite and that actually does matter. <laughs> he did, didn't he? Yeah. And tries to save it. Gets beaten down. Roman tears the crown apart and slams Wood's head into it. What did you think of this opening segment? I'm glad we're getting more of... The silence outside's really terrified me now. Oh, so we're going to get more of this. There was laughing Just in there. How about this? I know, almost forgot Survivor Series happens after this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it's building up Survivor Series. Yeah, it was very he's, well done. He's heard every word. I know. So you've got to deal with it from now after on. We've, after we've <laughs> finished recording this, I'm straight, I'm straight out of the room, back into the other office. <laughs> the, safe, the safety of upstairs. Oh, lads, I don't I'm care, f- me. <laughs> I feel very uncomfortable now. No, that's fine. That's okay. just your conscience. So, yeah, it was a good segment. No, I've stood up for what's right. Sorry, carry on. Good segment, yeah. yeah. Woods is really good. He cried mind. legitimate tears when Roman was smashing his crown and, and yeah. his throat and whatnot. He's, that was his twitch. He's really talented <laughs> at multiple things in yeah. life, and acting's certainly one of them. I thought it was an interesting line where Paul Heyman said the distinction of King will never belong to someone like Brock Lesnar. Mm. I think that was a knowing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. He won the King of the Ring in 02. Oh, yeah, he but did. But why would he say that? Why would he dis- discredit his accomplishment? I forgot that he'd done because it. Because he's a baddie. Mm. Mm. Sheamus wins a fatal four way match against Cesaro, Ricochet, and Jinder Mahal to secure the fifth place T- oh, in Team SmackDown. What a great achievement. I was wrong. I thought it was going to be Von Wagner. Yeah. He We're wasn't even wrong. there this week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, don't worry, though, was salvaged because he gets the pin on Cesaro at distraction from that Ridge Holland. Hey, oh, hey I got me judging. I'm don't buzzing. Worry there, I'm buzzing for Ridge. Yeah. Afterwards, backstage, Seamus emotionally, ex- emotionally explains how great it is and that he's inspired Ridge to watch wrestling in a pub. Just a <laughs> pair of hard northern blokes, aren't they? Well, one of them's not. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one of them. <laughs> if you look at the globe, generally they're both from the north, the northern hemisphere. Northern yeah. hemisphere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good save. Yeah. But this was a very good match. I tell you what, Ricochet, Sheamus, and Cesaro were all very, very good. 
Mm. And Jinder was also there. <laughs> oh, Jinder, Jinder had one moment of fantasticness in the match, I guess, where he sort of um, he tricked Sheamus into doing something, then rolled him up. That yeah. was good. That was good poo housery from uh, Jinder there. But other than that, it was all about the other three. Yeah, I liked yeah. the bit when Jinder was in the big swing because Shanky was on the outside going, "Oh no." I mean good. the real yeah. slim Shanky. The Shanky who no, dissed. No, we as, don't mean as, that. As Twitter said, Shanky who dissed Top Dollar so hard <laughs> that he's just gone. He's just left. Yeah, imagine if you're not on Twitter. <laughs> what? Uh, and following wrestling, you're like, wow, like they didn't even respond. They really Hit row of all gone, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, it's not just Top Dollar, it's all of them. Yeah. God. That was some rap. They served their asses. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Natalia and Shayna Baszler beat Naomi and Alia after a fast count from the ref. Yeah, very quick job. At backstage, Sonny Deville is talking to Sami Zayn when the referee turns up to ask if they did a good job. Sonny goes, I have no idea what you're talking about, dodgy get, referee. Get out of here. I didn't order you. Go away. Good acting. We should try and guess the date, roughly, of when we'll find out what Sonya's issue is with Naomi. Hmm. I um, reckon it'll be the last SmackDown before the Rumble. We'll find out. I reckon it'll be at WrestleCon 2044 when they're both on a panel and some fan <laughs> asks them about it. <laughs> Yeah, when, Matthew. When uh, Sonia has the the Devil podcast with Comrade, then we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Sonia Devil. I couldn't think of the point. <laughs> Just smash it all of a sudden. <laughs> hey, it's Sonia Devil. I mean, Aaliyah was good again, though. Yeah, yeah. She, nice... she didn't vomit. It was good. Oh, she Matthew, she's a great baby. She was sick last week. Was she? On SmackDown. No one about noticed. This? It was amazing. I thought everyone would have gone, hang on. Then we talked about Mur. Pat being oh, then sick Pat, of the ring. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think she's a very natural baby face. Yeah. Yeah, babies puke as well. What? What? That's not even good. That's too much what, of a baby, set of baby, line. Baby, baby, Babies puke, puke as well. Babies probably all the, that's what they're famous for. That's what babies are famous yeah. for. <laughs> yeah. Um, More, I reckon there's a, a distinct section, a distinct section? A massive section of adults that puke more than babies do. What? Well, all the adults... Just, there's, there's a section of adults that puke more. If you get baby. a billion babies and a billion adults, <laughs> who's going to vomit more? I was going to say that her, she's an innovator of violence, is Aaliyah, because she did that. Ugh. You know, she does the entrance where she's on the turnbuckle and she sort of flips in. But she did that into her head scissors and did a move. Mm. Good, mm. that. Mm. was nice. Yes, but the bollocks with Naomi is bollocks. Well, well said. Thank you. It's a lot of bollocks. Jeff Hardy has Drew McIntyre in his corner to face Madcap Moss. <coughs> well, I mean, if you're going against the best, you need the best to help out with you. The Drew stops Corbin from interfering, and Jeff wins with a small package. After the match, Hardy and McIntyre hit their finishes on the bad guys. This was a thing that happened, as far as I can tell, just to get Drew, uh, Drew McIntyre on the show. Yeah. And watching him dance in his undercrackers while wearing that hat, doing the Jeff Hardy hip thrust, was nothing short of disgust on that's got yeah, fun. it's so weird where they get these main event people and go, "Hey, I love the tribute to the old guys. Hey, I love me Hog and me, <laughs> and all this other stuff they made Drew do throughout this reign." You're like, "You big nerdy nerd." <laughs> At least he's not doing bloody history class anymore. Do you remember mm, that? True. He, he could actually do it with Jeff Hardy. He's been around that long. Hey, yes. Oof, I still love him. Um, we should start calling you Top Dollar. Oh, please don't. Just because of lines like that. You are the top dollar of this podcast. Mm. <laughs> Mark, some good. No, no, you're getting fired next week. <laughs> no, that's him. Nag uh, that's, yeah. <laughs> Nagamura takes on Angel. That's it. Just, Just Angel. Angel. Humberto tries to get involved, but is stopped by Rick Boogs. Nagamura wins. It's the IC title division in SmackDown. Every win must be done again. It's also the same finish as the last match. Yeah. Yep. Two in a row. And they're all, very, they're all very quick. All the matches were very quick. Well, most of the matches yeah. were very quick on this week's SmackDown. Yeah. But I did enjoy Mr. Boog's shaking Humberto. That was a submission. Like I was, thought he was just struggling to powerbomb him. Like burping a baby, wasn't he? Like, Upside down. Go back to babies, yeah. yeah. I tell you, burp babies, isn't it? Yeah. Tombstone position. <laughs> Get it out of here. God. <laughs> Backstage, Shotzi is arguing with Sasha Banks. Sonya Deville wants them to shake hands after the match tonight for the sake of SmackDown. Sasha wins and does shake hands, but it hits Shotzi with the backstabber. Classic well. Sasha Banks, right. they said on commentary. Yeah. Now I've got an issue. Why is Sonia all right with that? Yeah. I know these twos are massive rivals at the moment, but what's she trying to break Sasha Banks' arm for two days before Survivor Series? And Sonia Deville says nothing. Huh? Sonia, Sonia, huh? but does Sonia want SmackDown to win or does she want Raw to win? She wants SmackDown to win. Does she? Adam was the Raw man, wasn't he? Okay, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, he was the Raw man, Reigns. Uh, wow. Oh. 
an anima- animated vignette. Top dollar, huh? To stop it. <laughs> Tell us a backstory. Don't, make, don't get that over. Of Xia Li, who became the protector after her dad passed away. This was amazing to see on WWE, this type of weird weird storyline build up and hype for a character done in the way it was done. It was like, it's not a weird really story. stood up. It's not a weird storyline. She had a landlord who wanted money and the, the family couldn't afford it, so she battered the landlord. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's the classic it's nativity. It's the nativity. All the time. It's the nativity story. <laughs> we did that in 83. It's dark, eh? It's just the fact that I had a fancy cartoon over the top, which yeah. was ma- Im- Im- immaculate. Like, it was fantastically put together. I thought I was watching NXT 1.5. Yeah. Not SmackDown now. It was, At 1.5 speed. It yeah. must be the same people who did the, the Alistair Black stuff and the um, mm. just before you left and the, oh, yeah. the OG Jia Lee stuff on. Oh, sorry, Mei Ying. And Tian Shah. Yes. That stuff. Right. I'm just worried that it's not going to really lead anywhere. Well, you know if you worry about that, then don't watch wrestling. Ridge tomorrow. Holland, landlord, gimmick. <laughs> Zia Lee batters Ridge Holland. Uh, yeah. End of feud. That's it. Like, Ridge Holland's like, I oh, want my money. <laughs> those two properties <laughs> I own. Mm. And that's it. Screen turns black. He's never seen again. Dion Dublin makes a cameo appearance. <laughs> Dion Dublin? Taking us through Ridge Holland's properties. Oh, yes. Where the, the Lees lived once upon a time. <laughs> and now we have the bathroom leading up to the... Th- so I've messed it up. Dion Dublin's catchphrase is on Home of the Hammer. Well, catchphrase, singular, is the stairs leading up to the bedrooms or the bathroom. We're on the two. What yeah. a catchphrase. That's his catchphrase? Yeah. Wow. And neither the third thing but the bathroom. What a catchphrase. That just sounds like something he's probably going to say a lot in the line of his word. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not much catchphrases. No, that's what it's there. No, it's, he's, made, he's made it a thing. This compilation. He's made it his catchphrase. How is that a catchphrase? Con- I don't know if we'll get away with it, Richard, but there are compilations of Dion Dublin saying this. No. It's not, is it worth risking? <laughs> I don't it? know. It's, it's the BBC, so I, it's I not the biggest. Oh, no, no, no. It's not yeah. the biggest risk taken on this podcast this week. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> in the main event, Woods gets in the ring and calls out Roman Reigns. Roman heads it to the ring, but the Usos are thrown out in the ramp by Big E, but he's from Raw. Big E and Woods beat up Roman, who fights back, but Big E hits the big ending to end the show. Oh, it made Big E look good and oh, big. Big E looked big. Aye. I like the reveal tra- with the... A trap. Sorry. Aye. Traps as well. I, I, well done, Which yes. used to throw the men. It's a traps, they yelled as he threw them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Big E looked good. Good hype for uh, Survivor Series. Yeah, did what it did exactly what it said in the tin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice ending to SmackDown. Yes. Yes. Yeah, good ending to an average SmackDown. Yeah, but n- nice four-way match, but the rest was like... <laughs> AW Rampage, the show opens up with Darby Allen versus Billy Gunn. That's right. We're staying in the Gunn Club at ringside. Darby wins the pair of coffin drops. Because you need two to be... He, kick, he kicked out, didn't he? And then, <laughs> oh, man. He did. The bad guys beat down Darby and Sting afterwards. Billy Gunn takes two finishes. At least he lost. Yeah. But then he got his heat back. How funny afterward. would it be if he pinned him? He was oh, no yeah. selling moves, though. I'm not like I'm not happy with that. With it's Billy, Billy Gunn. Gunn. He's a naughty boy. He's a naughty boy. I mean, some moves I can see him no selling because Darby's... Coffin drop, literally, oh. literally the size of his last meal. What's yeah. Billy Gunn eating is the question. My goodness. How old is he now? Late 50s, must be? Early 50s. Early 50s. Young I'm sure Jamie. you say early 50s. Can we verify 59. the age of Billy Gunn yes. before we move on? Oh, sorry, I was on my way to do it, yeah, he's, he's looking good. But the back body drop he did to Darby, he's 58. He my is 58. Goodness. My goodness. Good God. The back body drop he did to Darby during this matchup is one of the best I've ever seen, which I know yeah. it's, it's, it should be easy for Billy because he's the size of several houses and Darby's not. Um, he's but a bungalow. Still, yeah. He's a b- <laughs> is that from so Rainbow? So there's no steps that lead up to the bottom. <laughs> Jade Cargill beats Red Velvet to progress the TBS title tournament. Yes, she did. Beats her again, but this one, Jade Cargill, you can tell, is learning some new tricks in the ring. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Like she that, is. Jack. Sidewalk, s- stand away slam. Excuse mm. me, let me get it right. Uh, the pump handle spinning thing. That was very good also. Yep. And the rock bottom on the apron. Yeah. Aye. Or the book end. Depends who she likes more. That's right, yeah. Aye. Yeah. Yeah. I'm liking it. Jurassic Express take on Adam Cole and Bobby Fish in the main event. The Young Bucks try to cause a distraction, but Christian Cage chases them off with a chair. Cole retreats as well, leaving Fish to get caught in a snare trap for the win. Oh, yeah. oh, I've started to call him Luchasaurus after his flip <laughs> to the floor at the pay-per-view. Bars. Nice. Aye, that's, I'm, I'm top dollar now. Um, sorry. Uh, oh. I don't know why. Why did we see this match after we saw an attempted murder at the pay-per-view? Because we need something in the headline, Rampage, and it might as well be Jungle Boy. Yeah. Yeah. 
I didn't understand either, really. Uh, or why we saw Billy Gunn and the Gun Club beat down Darby and Sting after. Because it's leading to Sting versus Billy Gunn. As we're finding out, I think AEW think wrestling fans have been longing to see Billy Gunn versus Sting. Because when they keep doing the standoffs and expecting the big reaction, I don't know about you, but I don't want to see that, do you? <laughs> it wasn't a dream match in 99, <laughs> but... All these you know. years we've been waiting for Sting to come back and challenge the Undertaker at WrestleMania. That's what we thought, but the real fans wanted <laughs> Billy Gunn versus Sting. Did they never clash in TNA? Maybe. I'm going on cage match right now. Oh, please do. The world wants to know. Bobby yeah. Fish is a mug. Because he keeps Go on. being left high and dry while the other lads scurry away yeah. like little rats. And he's in the ring getting his ass handed to him. Yeah, he keeps crawling back to Adam Cole yeah. like he's that girl on the council estate yeah. and who's got the boyfriend. Yeah. But she'll not leave him alone even though she, he's bad news for her. And you just say to her, last, will you pull your ass out together and leave him? He's no good for you. But yeah. she keeps going back. Yeah. Because I've got no self-esteem. Bobby Fish by the offspring. <laughs> the offspring there. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's his position as company and he does it very well. Council they've, state girl. They've been <laughs> in three matches together. <gasps> NWA Mid-Atlantic in 2005. Sting defeats Billy Gunn. Gauntlet for the gold in 2007, but there was loads of people in that match. And finally, in 2008, on an episode of Impact, BG James, Booker T and Sting defeat James Storm, Kip James and Robert Roode. I wow. think you're forgetting the biggest and the best match of them all. Okay. At WrestleMania 31. Yes, we are forgetting that. We're <laughs> well, trying to. Oh, yeah, but he wasn't a competitor. <laughs> he was very competitive. <laughs> he was one of the few ones who yeah. were competitive. That. <laughs> X-Pac took a huge bump for Hulk Hogan. It was brilliant. He did. Yeah. <sighs> Survivor Series. On the pre-show, Nakamura beats Damian Priest by DQ after Priest snaps because he's both the angel and the devil. And he turns into the devil and batters Nakamura and Rick Boogs with Boogs' guitar. However... Why is this being devilish? Rick Boogs was, was giving him strength annoying. with the guitar. Do, 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 do. So he went, I better Nakamura take him out was then. about to pass out, and Rick Boogs woke him up by playing the guitar. You have got that yeah. song, though. It gets, it, it's My Life by Bon Jovi. <laughs> ah, I could empathise with Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, oh. my accumulator was instantly gone. I put on three pounds, made an accumulator for the event, sort of thought, oh, this will make some of the matches more interesting. Really? Aye. And did it work? First match. No, because first match <laughs> of the pre-show... <laughs> And he lost because he got DQ'd. I was like, well, there we go. <laughs> there we go then. Three pounds down the drain. Yeah. Wow. Can we Gamble responsibly. Yeah, Jack. yeah. No. I kind of believe, we might as well say this now, but survive, they didn't keep a tally of the scores, did they? No, they didn't. No, they started yeah. doing it. No, they didn't. On commentary. There was, ne there was never, oh, did they on commentary? Oh, I'd mentioned on commentary as well. Well, there was they, never, they I that thing on the Numbers on, on screen yeah. to show they matter. Yeah, did because the they didn't matter. Did the pre-show match count? Who knows? It's a pre-show match. No. It would, did Wait, that year when Xavier do, yeah. Woods? Yeah, the year that they weren't supposed to win. Or... Yeah. I love that. that yeah. Story. So Whoops. Woods was the only one fighting to keep that <laughs> alive. He was like, we didn't get clean swept. <sighs> no, 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 no. No, don't do the thing with the hand. No, we did. We, no, 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 no. Mm. So I, great that they accidentally won. I enjoy Damien Priest in an ironic way now. Because it's just like someone's... Gave him a cowie. That's that's the gimmick. <laughs> he starts going. Oh. Yeah. Just yeah. imagine like drum and bass playing in the background <laughs> while he's at hospitality. That's I a thing where people go. Your time. Yeah. Uh, cool people. Damien Priest licking his gums, and we know what that means. Eggs. Uh, yes, it does mean. <laughs> Never mind this. Vincent Mann shows up. Oh, it's been a while since we've seen you. Uh, he gets out and makes the remaining roster clap for a golden egg. Uh, then we get a long intro slash advert for the pay-per-view. Well, because this pay-per-view is proudly sponsored and trailered by, can you remember the name? Red Notice. Yeah, Red Notice. It's actually yeah. Red doesn't sound like a real name. I think name. it's Red Notice. Yes, because now the intros to pay-per-views are now just ways for things to get sponsored by. So they were explained, oh, oh, that's the egg from the film with The Rock in. This, this pay-per-view is being sponsored by a, an advert for a thing. Thanks, Big so the, the, the Yeah. There was more of The Rock's film in this pay-per-view opening than there was wrestling shots. Yeah. And it was really sad to see. Yeah. And 
and in a way, WWE are like Bobby Fish and that girl on the council estate. And The Rock is like the boyfriend that they're still trying to impress. And you just need to just let it go. Yeah, like, There's gold bullion falling out of his pants. So yeah. it's like, maybe it is To be fair, it. the boy on the council estate hasn't got a $100 million gold neck. Oh, that's true. So he's I can got, see where... He's got a Nissan Skyline. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> with some tinted windows. Oh, I saw that again this <laughs> one week. One half it's red, one half it's blue. Where The Rock's gifted a massive car to someone he knows of whatever it was the story this week and it's like he's sponsored by the car company The Rock's not paying for that car with his own money oh, he's yeah. been given that car it's K- disgusting K-Fabe. The Rock gets enough credit without this stuff as well does my head in it doesn't do me head in it just makes me go huh. here's The Rock of his new tax write off yay <laughs> and then Becky Lynch takes on Charlotte Flair beats her with a sneaky hand on the ropes during a roll up in the opener and it was weird because I think you're right, Jack. I got caught up like a lot of other people thinking, oh, they were really shooting, shooting, no, working, Ross shooting. No, was the one. Oh, was you? Yeah. Oh, beg your pardon. Sorry. But you're, oh, right. I, you're right sometimes. I well. thought it was real. And but it was, then, man. As soon as we got to this, you know, the Marvin the Martian thing, where's the kaboom? There's supposed to be an earth shattering kaboom. No, they brawled a lot. They brawled a lot, but it was just a match. Well, mm-hmm. Becky cried. Well, it was a bit her. more than a match. I thought they got the tone. I don't want to, I'm going to do it, but at Kingston and Punk got their turn spot on, didn't they? Spot there we go. On. But yeah. this one was almost there because we had, it was a nice blend of like grittiness and then stuff that looked like it legitimately hurt, like slaps to the face yeah. and whatnot, but also flamboyant professional wrestling maneuvers. Yeah, that's what took out me. The first, I don't know, five, six minutes or so, yeah, all right, great. But then it went back to, oh, time to do the wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> the ending right. I found a bit weird as well. Reminded me that it was because I know Charlotte can't lose clean, but reminded me that it was heel versus heel technically. Yeah. Oh, you were wrong, by the way. Was I? Charlotte, it's going to be a 50 50 crowd reaction. Oh, yeah. It kind of was. Stop it. It's it's just the woos, man. You're getting caught up in the woos. We're wrestling fans. I hate getting caught up in the woos. Woo! No, no, sorry, I, I, the Ric Flair owns that. Sorry, I've got to disagree with your theory. <laughs> you have to all chant like, Warrior! There's a shout down. <laughs> I thought about that. But. I thought the, the finish made Charlotte look like a, a bit silly. Which I, I think was, it did nothing for, I agree, Ross. Mm, which I thought was deserved. Because if I think that, you know, the, the stuff on SmackDown with the belt dropping and whatnot, I think that's, that was legitimately Charlotte going off the script. I think that's as far as it went. Yes, Becky might have shouted a few words backstage and whatnot, but I don't think it went any further than that. Yeah. So I think this was sort of like, oh, you've done wrong there, Charlotte, therefore we're going to book you into a finish, which makes you look slightly stupid. Uh... Because... She, Becky just did the same thing Charlotte did, but did it better. Yeah. How much? Yeah. Of I don't a, think adva- she grabbed the rope late on. Yeah. I'm thinking, how yeah. much of an advantage did that hand on the rope give her? I thought that doing late on gives the idea like, aha, I'm just gonna kick out with this. Wait, not something uh, wrong. Yeah, true, yeah. true. Because if you do it like one, I got some resistance. True. But I wish, I wish but, Charlotte sold how because she's been. She had what's, what's what's the phrase I'm looking for here? She's had she's been. What's the word I'm looking for here? Yeah. She's been say, usurped. What, whatever yeah, yeah, saying is, uh, she's but she's. Uh, but she was she was smiling. That was it, Ross. She yeah, this she ultra not, mega heel she, heat serious feud gets a roll up and Charlotte does the. She uh, should as, be as, going. As like, uh, nice one to kid. take a phrase yeah. from the northeast. She just, should, does, just gets a belt and leaves. She should be going aka pot. Yeah, she should be kicking ropes. Yeah, kicking. She attack well, Becky at the ringside. That's just Charlotte being Charlotte. Charlotte always does that. Yeah, she never really loses. Shot of flare. But then she should have, yeah, you're right, should have attacked her afterwards yeah. or something. This is real. This is like, oh, you beat me. She's just smiling. All right, cool, bye. Yeah. Like, well, uh, she can't, because she can't let anyone else get over. I'm sorry, I'm buying too much yeah. into it. <laughs> no, She's I'm, the Hulk Hogan of this yeah. era. No, she looked, uh, th- sorry, this match, I think they, oh, they actually stumbled upon something here. Oh, they're actually like a little bit of issues. We can build on that. When it never meant anything, it was just a match of Survivor Series. Oh, no, but that's I what don't think we that's got. right with them two, though, because it's those two. They are they are the, the, the Brett and Sean of this generation in the ladies. Yeah. So any match between those two means something. Sure. Yeah. Well, it will, it will from that one, I reckon. Th- because they've had so many of the great matches, this was like their least interesting match. Ooh. No. Because they've had so many of the better ones. This is just uh, like, we're having this match was again. It, was, it was it them like, who right. had the really good match at Evolution? The no DQ with the leg drop through the announce table. Yeah. Was that Charlotte and Becky? Yep. Yeah, yep. That, was, that was class. This one was the one with the most intrigue, I think, going in. Once uh, up until the bell ringing, I'm like, ah, oh, right, it was just because once you realize that, okay, yeah, I get, I get what you mean. It's just a match, yeah, it was all right, but like, I thought it was good match. Like, I like, I, I, as I said, I like the blend of the, the gritty, real feeling stuff with the wrestling. First five minutes, yeah. 
Yeah, loved would, it, and then would, just like, oh, back to back to the normal. I'm going to do a bit of a Tom Campbell here and pose a question from a different angle. Go on. Would we have enjoyed it more if we hadn't just seen CM Punk and Eddie Kingston do it better? No. Okay, fair enough. No, I, don't <laughs> so. no, okay. I don't know. No. I just felt like that was a, a worthwhile thing to mention, even though I regret doing so. Because I hate, I hate when we have to go to the company and bring it back. I try and I'm, yeah. I'm the same, Ross. I try and not do. I the try same not. Thing. No, 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 not just because AW exists. I, I do have a brain. But they were similar sort of the way they were set up. The feuds. It was all based yeah. off real life. There's, a, there's certain parallels that can be drawn there. Yes, there is. Mm. Yeah. They are both going at sim- in similar gears, both in fourth gear, or maybe fifth gear, mm. not sixth gear. Mm. Yeah. I hate that change to fifth gear. I can never get it right. I've not driven for a while, though. But up and then right well, you, and then you're up. You're driving Pachiti crazy this week. Oh. <laughs> Kevin Owens immediately abandons the men's five and five tag match because he's like, oh, you can't he's trust leaving. me, can you not? Well then, sod off. He's off. That, that convinced me that he's gone if the news is true that his contract's up at the end of the year. Because surely there would be book in him really proper strong if he was leaving. If... But he is still in a bit of a main event program on Raw, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Which is I weird. think it's 50 50 50, to be honest with you, because, yeah, it does make sense the character going, oh, you guys don't trust me? Well, oh, why then? Why should I? I see your point, yeah. yeah. To your point, yeah. I say yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley both get counted out while brawling on the outside. This confused this me. Was, Lazy oh, bollocks. <laughs> it's Survivor Series. Yeah, it's the traditional Survivor Series match with the traditional five, uh, Survivor Series style book. And, yeah. Find a better way to have them not pinned. What that is, I've got no idea. But I'm just going to say, try. it's not my problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was hilarious, though, because they tagged in and, like, commentators, oh, this was the WrestleMania main event. Remember that? Oh, the heat. Was the and there was no noise for it. Yeah, and it was... Who I cares f- about WrestleMania main events? Like, I found it was, the, it was the opener. But I found it really yeah. weird because... No, it was the opener. Oh, it did? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was rumoured to be the main event, but then Sasha and The Bianca. WrestleMania opening match. <laughs> no one <laughs> didn't pop. Oh, yeah, you're right. But <laughs> it was but it was a, a feud that uh, they, they put a lot of time into back then, though. But, um, no, they didn't put, like, three, two weeks into it. No, they didn't. No, it was no. Like the first few months of the year. Yeah. It went at the pay-per-view beforehand when Drew got screwed by Bob. Then the, the Miz got involved. And, yeah. yeah, but then yeah. The, the, the Elimination Chamber of Mania was, like, four weeks at most. But they were feuding before then. Were they? Yeah. Weren't they? No. They had a match the previous year. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of that. No, so it was just a match. The, so, match the, fact, preview- that, anyway, oh. the fact that they went, oh, remember WrestleMania, guys? Did not and then no through- one popped. No one was like, ooh, tense this. Like, What did Drew do after Randy? Between Randy and Bobby? Was Did not just go straight from Randy to Bobby? Was he feeling with like Andrade? Nah. On, on, no. In the empty in the empty performance center? Oh, that was the year before, man. Yeah, it was the year yeah. before. <sighs> they both blend together, don't they? No, Sheamus. Ah, ah, Shamus. That was yeah. it. That was, that was it. That was there it. There we yeah. go, yeah. yes. Um... But yes, uh, I thought that it was weird that they brought this back, and it, and, it, and it was weird because I think in the on the night as well there was two separate video packages, one one for Bobby and one for Drew that were basically yeah. just like, look how good this person is. Yeah. But I was like, remember thinking like, well, why why those two? They're not like up and comers. They're already yeah. main event. So Bobby's aired weird. after the match. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just before that, I swear it was just Great before the main event. And then Drew's yeah. was like, also later on. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. So it very unnaturally, like, oh wow, look! It was like, uh, well, at first I thought we, we, we one, weren't told that. At first this was I thought it was one deal. of those like tap out adverts because there was just them <laughs> training and stuff, yeah, and I thought yeah. it was going to be like, I'm so great because I wear a tap out, but it wasn't. It was just look how good Drew is. <laughs> God's sake! Thank you. Tap out. <laughs> tap out. Tap out. Tap out. <laughs> Sheamus is rolled up by Austin Theory and is so angry he attacks his own partner Jeff Hardy before leaving. They I mean, made a good Sheamus and Jeff team Hardy for a while. Are always this was now. strange. What this. a team they were. How the, how Jeff Hardy is so forgiving. I guess it's a babyface move. But let's not forget that Sheamus tried to pin a crime that Jeff Hardy didn't commit oh, yeah. right? onto Jeff Hardy and then made Jeff Hardy take a piss test for drugs, real-life drugs on SmackDown, yeah. which resulted in Jeff Hardy throwing piss over Sheamus. And then Sheamus wiped Jeff Hardy's face in a urinal, yeah. a used urinal in a real bar where they tried to kill each other. And then Jeff Hardy's head changed by magic. Do you remember yeah, that, the end of that yeah, match? Yeah, and then he became the Undertaker for a bit. Yeah. And then he got better. But then in this match, the thing that got Sheamus is the fact that Jeff wasn't there to tag in. That's what pissed Sheamus off. That's why he attacked Hardy. It made, I guess Sheamus is a bastard, so I guess it's fine, but it, it left yeah. me something to be desired. <laughs> Survivor Series booking. you got to love it. Uh, Jeff eliminates Theory, but it's finally beaten by the sole survivor, Seth Rollins. 
Jeff got a good show, and that's the most important yeah. thing. This was overall a decent Survivor Series match. Yeah. Because I do like them when they're done all right. They need stakes, though. It's got to happen next oh, year. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. completely right. But never mind. Roman Reigns has a meeting with Vincent Mann, who brags about the egg and says it was given to him by The Rock. He also says it's worth $100 million in the film that they're advertising. No, 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 no. It's worth no. $100 million. It's worth $100 million. It's not a prop. It's, it's, it's clear patrick. It just happens to be... <laughs> Vince, when he does he's not shouting. He's in, impossible to understand. Oh, <laughs> yeah, funny yeah. thing for me to say, <laughs> but he's... It's a... It's clear patrick's out there. Worth a hundred million dollars. <laughs> clear patrick, we're trying to book it for WrestleMania. <laughs> Later, the egg goes missing. Vince shouts at Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville to find it. It was worth $100 million. It was on his table. It was in front of him. He must have blinked for five minutes. He went to the toilet or something. I thought the implication... I wanted to take, wanted to take a Jeff Hardy. I thought the implication was is because we saw Roman in there that Roman must have taken... Same. I was ready for the rock to, to the come rock. out. I was, <laughs> re- I was ready for Roman to come out, brandish the egg during the main event, and then after the match, once Big E's been beaten, for the rock to come out and go... That's my egg, you jack. I can't do the rock. But <laughs> That's my egg. <laughs> Vince was saying well, that, you, though. Somebody he, stole my egg. Well, if you smell what he's cooking, he needs... Oh, oh. That's what I was saying on the reactions. What did you? Most of the reveal was like, Vince is at home. And all of a sudden, he just gets a faint whiff, like... What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? He would say in his low-down voice. And he would go through the kitchen, and Dwayne would be there just cooking eggs on the thing. And he'd, The payoff would be, can you smell what the rock is cooking? And it's been eggs for 25 yeah. years. Nice fried eggs. Mm. How do you like your eggs in the morning, Vince? I, I like mine like with a smile. I like maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love your, your Vince does... is just a really bad Nixon. No, no, no he does though now. <laughs> I am not an egg. Well, he's, he's not projecting. Yeah. It's impossible. He's yeah. been, he can't just do normal talk. He, yeah, he's done it for a while now. Like, the lockbox. There's secrets in the lockbox. <laughs> yeah. What was in the lockbox, man? An egg. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was the egg. Yes. <laughs> It was just great when he was like, Sonia, call the police. And Sonia goes, <laughs> straight away, <laughs> don't press any buttons. Whoop. <laughs> Hello, that brought a stolen egg. Hundred million dollars. Hundred million dollar egg. It was stolen. a nice egg, to be fair, though. Well, when he held it up in the pot in the car park, everyone went, oh! oh. Everyone, went, everyone went silent, first of all. And then Vince was like, come on, yeah. Come on, Vince. Come on, Vince. What a weird man. It was a good zinger how, from Reigns. How are we surprised that storylines and that go nowhere? Vince is clearly too old to remember these things, man. He can't keep track of everything that's going on. Do you we'll, know what I think? We'll get on to it during Raw, but this one pissed me off. Brucey e. P is in charge now. This is Bruce Pritchard's WWE. Wh- which one? Was that on the egg or the next segment? I like Reigns' line, though, in this oh, one, on. where he's like, $100 million, that's the value of my next contract. Bah, 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 bah. And then Vince looked angry at that. Vince got oh, stiff. Paying the table. employees. I remember. <laughs> anyway, yeah, where are they going to get that money from? Oh, I don't know. Possibly for <sighs> The Rock's 25, sorry, 25th anniversary Battle Royal, not featuring The Rock, but sponsored by Pizza Hut. It's The Rock's favorite food. <laughs> yeah. Everyone knows this. I thought The Rock's favorite food was pie. He loves pizza. <laughs> bit of pizza, bit of poontang pizza. <laughs> oh. Man. oh. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, oh, Matthew! No one, no one asked you to say that. Wow, we're all thinking it. Oh, Where calm would... down, top He's... dollar. Tell you what, <laughs> Matthew, Matthew, it, I'll Matthew, take it back. Matthew's got heat backstage at Cold Holic after this. <laughs> Someone's stolen the Rock's one hundred million dollar pizza. I used to work in a pizza oh. joint, right? And I, did I, you? The seafood one. I thought you were the were you the delivery. I was delivery, yeah. but I saw the pizzas getting made. Yeah, right, right. My God. Who would order anchovies on a pizza? Long, oh, nice. stringy, on a pizza yeah. with tomato sauce. Yeah, not a big seafood person. It wouldn't either, be a pizza but... without that. Mm. <laughs> Tony D'Angelo. Oh, there Just we go. done the Tony D'Angelo hand things because of pizza. I guess we have to ask because we're talking about pizza, but pineapples, yes or no? Yes. It used to be no, now it's a yes because I actually tried it. It's always been a no for me, I'm afraid. Sorry. No, finer than a Hawaiian. That rhymes. Yes, it does. Top dollar says so. Stop it. <laughs> I have to get the naughty Richard, stick. yes or no? Pineapples? Yeah, of course. Yeah, Look at that. See. Thumbs up. Hipster man. The drip, drip editor has spoken. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. The, so, yeah, there were lots of bits of The Rock going, all right, 25th anniversary, Survivor Series, yay. Even though, you're right, he wasn't there. And then it's the 25th anniversary, 
Battle Royal again. It's rock, the Rocks. Not, not known for at least send in a video of the Rock. And then it's, there's not enough stuff going on this. Sponsored by Pizza Hut, <laughs> you bastards. So Pizza Hut sponsored this match. There were loads of pizza boxes. Well, it's a three course meal. The highlight of the match for me. It's a three course meal. In America, they have one pizza box with three tiers that come out of it. There's your breakfast. That's Sorry, insane. first course. There's like a there's three courses in one. Right. So there's like a garlic bread. There's a pizza, and then there's like a the dessert like at the a, bottom. Did like a like a, a dessert pizza. Or you something. see the box on the on the match. <laughs> that was the best bit of the yeah. match for me. Just Some seeing that. that. I was trying to not look at the pizza, being a non lacto. I only found out recently this week that Domino's does uh, non lactose pizza. Okay. I haven't ordered one yet. Domino's is overrated in the UK. I know, but I'm not exactly spot for choice here, so. Fair enough. You could get a pizza hut. Do they do lactose? I don't lactose? have no lactose, so I check the know. menu. Ah, oh, oh, fair enough. Right. They beggars can't be choosers. No. But, yeah, so pizza, pizza, pizza. You know, everyone was putting over the pizza. We skipped entrances for most of the people in the match. We, so we could see pizza and the rock. I thought it was ironic in this battle royal for brand supremacy that the only brand who reigned supreme <laughs> was hey. Pizza Hut because oh, yeah. we had raw people fighting raw people and SmackDown people fighting SmackDown people in this battle for brand supremacy. And yeah. at the end, we had Raw versus SmackDown and they expected us to give a toss. I was surprised that Ricochet got, was one of the featured participants in this match. Yeah. It was weird. I thought he would be lower down on the pecking order looking at the participants in the match. I get like but almost... losing to a pizza. What? He'd probably do that, wouldn't he? Yeah. Wait a minute. You're making no sense. Oh, you say he's, he's like lower down in a battle royal. I thought you were being like deeply sarcastic. No, no, deep dish. That's he's making cool. up the numbers. Uh, deep dish. Nobody was, he was one of the entrances. And he was one of the final And he was the last, he, was, two, he yeah. got to the final oh. two. So I was like, he's how, a pillar of the battle royal. I was like, why, how is Ricochet landed in this position? You know? Good point. They I do have like, it's, it's weird with Ricochet, isn't it? Like he goes away for a bit and he comes back. He was in that battle royal on SmackDown, featured a bit. I'm sure he'll be featured this week or tonight after this podcast mm. goes live. In a couple of weeks time, we'll be forgotten about the game for he's a while. He's Cesaro. He had a title match You need him Lesnar. to look good, yeah. but then to make others look good. That's the yeah. reason why he's reheated. Because he can fly. Like tomorrow's pizza. <laughs> AJ Styles uh, celebrates because almost wins uh, by celebrating with pizza. Well, that's his pal. That's nice. Because he got eliminated during a tug of war. He did, yes. It, but was, it, uh, it was crap. I found it nice that AJ what was What you about was crap? That just wasn't it. That. that was a human being being used as a rope in a tug of war. Yeah. That was yeah. all right. AJ took a bit of a nasty fall what off. What more that. do you want? Just Michael Cole, though. He's been so good since Pat McAfee came on the yeah, scene. Yeah. But he was like, oh, if, if AJ gets eliminated here, does that mean it's elimination for Omos because he was touching him? While Commander is easy pull- <laughs> <laughs> While Commander is easy pulling him off. Because of- Omos was hey. like in the ring, the yeah. last person to touch AJ. So Pat was arguing that it was Omos' elimination. Oh, right. right. Which the I was worried, like, I, I kind of like, got. Yeah, okay. Pat, I've, I used to love Pat McAfee as like a, like, I know very little about NFL, enough to listen to someone talk about it and he was really entertaining because he used to play and all that and uh, I just thought he was really entertaining I'm not surprised he's managed to thrive mm. but I'm starting to get sick of him in WWE oh. I know that might be unpopular but it's the way that there's like the fourth most important match on the card and there's a clothesline and he goes the clothesline yeah. duh yeah <laughs> sorry headphone users I, I would agree with that, but it was actually good when Corey Graves was there because he was just like serious Sam throughout because, yes, that was a good clothesline. <laughs> <laughs> just completely crapped all over I thought Pat sounded like he was pissed off. Uh, sorry, Corey was pissed. Sound- oh, my God, Ross. Go you got this Corey one. sounded like he was pissed off that Pat was there because Pat is better than Corey. And Corey was like, me, 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 you fancy pants over there. <laughs> all your good things that you say. And I'm here just saying, shut up, Saxton. Mm. And ooh, Carmella's nice, isn't she? Mm. I'm not a good yeah. wrestler, though. She got done in her match. Oh, sorry. She we'll, did, we'll but uh, after the match, the Street Profits oh. steal the pizza and throw slices out to the crowd. Omos was fuming. He was. I, don't... I thought this level of blatant advertisement disguised as a match was on par with the zombie match Possibly. earlier this year. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why am I I'm paying for this? I was <laughs> flabbergasted that... I love that word. That AJ and Omos lost the segment at the end. Omos has won the match. But because they stole the pizza, bless you, you. and started throwing bits out of the crowd. And by the way, if I was in the crowd and I got a slice of pizza thrown at me, I'd be livid. Greasy pizza. Yeah, Yeah, room and night. (laughs) Imagine if you're going out after. Dude, if if they've got shots of that, I'd be instant. They wouldn't be going out after because America closes at like 9pm. But They're going to the arcade. (laughs) 
I'm done. My point's, my point's over now. RK Bro take on the Usos and win after an RKO out of nowhere. Good RKO. I thought, yeah, the match was, it was very solid, very workmanlike. Nothing wrong with it, but again, there's no stakes. But that finish was very nice. You yeah. say there's no stakes, but the match was very meat and potatoes. Oh, top dollar. Top dollar. Is that the thing now? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that was that was class. Warrior. <laughs> no, that the bars there. Hey, 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 yo, <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, yo. It's the acclaimed. Um, <laughs> but I think you know, as we all know, the mantra of professional wrestling is it's all about the last thing you see. That's what the fans remember. Therefore, the fact that we got an all-time RKO. Sorry for getting too excited there, but it was a good RKO, no, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, it was very good. <laughs> it was very good. Uh, I'll, I'll take the mediocre match for a good RKO. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> Carmella is eliminated from the women's five-on-five -five tag match immediately. Rolled up while trying to get her protective face mask. Womp, womp. Banker Belair is left facing four-on-one odds, but Team SmackDown deliberately eliminate their own teammate Sasha Banks via count-out. Belair eliminates the three remaining SmackDown superstars to win the match. Now, there are two things in this match. One was how into it the crowd were when Belair and Banks were going at it. Mm -hmm. They seemed, oh, no, we're into this. This is a few. This actually makes sense. This is great. It sadly didn't last as long as it should. As soon as that was over... It was before this as well, Rhea and It was and a bit of it but beforehand, but then as soon as and, that was over... And Rhea and Shayna didn't deserve that because they're both good. Symptomatic of the booking, some yeah, might yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I fully agree. I don't think anyone's looking at this going, yeah, these women suck. It's just the fact that... Once again, there's no stakes on the line. This match didn't mean anything. We've had an entire card of this. We've seen 33 rock adverts. The crowd's expecting them. And then it was this match, and it's just another one. It's the, before the main event. I think they were just bored. Yeah, it's a shame it happens. Um, I think people go, how dare you disrespect the workers? If you've paid good money for something like this and you're not getting what you want, okay. It is disrespectful, but... At the same time, what the, what the, the crowd just go there and cheer for, cheer for things that they don't care about. I'm like, that, that just doesn't seem right to me. Yeah, I think um, the the fact that it was, I don't, I'd like to think at least that it's not the old attitude of like, oh, it's the women's march, time yeah. to go to the toilet. Yeah, we're way past that period. Yeah, exactly. This was because they got to a point in the night where the, the booking had caught up with yeah. them and, and that things weren't. People weren't emotionally invested in it. Yeah. You know? But they they were into that one bit. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, yeah. And it went, it's like, all right, that's it. It's got a large point to do with it as well, I think, that lots of these ladies have been trapped in tag teams that no one gives a toss about yeah. for yeah. ages. Like yeah. Shayna and Rhea are in this women's tag division where they shouldn't be, frankly. Yeah. And no one gives WWE don't give a toss about the women's division. Uh, the, the, sorry, the tag, the, division. the tag division, yeah. yeah, at least. Well, and large parts of the women's singles as well. Yeah, it's only argue. the top yeah. of the women's division. The top of the women's about, division yeah. they care about, yeah. So unless you're in that top echelon, of course, people might not, well, aren't going to be interested. Mm. That's yeah. what they've conditioned us to think. Yeah, this is we're going to have you know, a European title match in like 99 or something. It's like, oh, here we go, lads. Here's the division mm. we give the least attention to. Yeah. We'll talk about it more during Raw, but then Becky cut a bafflingly written promo about it. Which I don't understand who wrote that and what the point of it was, but we'll yeah, we'll have to wait for that. It's weird, is it? Because like yeah, again, sucks for the wrestlers. We're like look, we're oh, just yeah, doing what we're course. told to yeah, do, but yeah. it's not our fault we're written this way and everything yeah. like that. And again, yeah, it sucks. Yeah. But it's like yeah, a lot of this show. If you have a show where there's not much on the line the entire night, and you get pizza thrown at you, <laughs> um, and then what do you speak about the bloody Sasha Banks thing? Because that was unbelievable. Well, how when they eliminated the SmackDown team, there were four up, four one up. There yeah. were, and then we had Sasha and Sh Sasha and Shotzi, who obviously are feuding at this point in time. Yeah. But they started off the match not getting along. Uh -huh. Then during the match, they were stood next to each other. They were getting along. They, they did even two did splashes. Two, yeah, one after another, doing moves after one another. Sasha tagged herself in like they were an actual tag team. It was amazing. Got this amazing. Hair. It was amazing, right? <laughs> it Working was like along. the young bucks. Yeah, it was <laughs> lovely stuff. Um, and then all of a sudden. Was it who got pushed into who and then it all fell so apart? So Sasha or Shotzi, one of them shoved the other and then that person fell into Shayna. And then Natalia Shana, was there, wasn't she? And then yeah. Shayna and Natalia, for some reason, suddenly just like, as if Sasha was playing Metal Gear Solid and being caught by one guard, they all were like, what? And that, sorry, Ross. Right, I know. Oh, you nerd. <laughs> they got, they I can't wait to see Jack on these video game machines going, oh, 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 high score. <laughs> 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 I hate the arcade game. <laughs> no, I will have a good time, I will, because I'm trying to save my job now. Um, 
What were they going to say? Aye, but then... Aye, like, uh, then start then Sasha. <laughs> try it all gang up on Sasha. Yeah. And Sasha gets back into that... Well, three quarters of Sasha's body gets into that ring at least three or four times. Oh, yes. And in any other match, in any other year, in any other promotion, that is a rope break. Uh, sorry, a, 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 stop the count by the referee. We're back in the ring, it's fine. But this referee, in this particular matchup, just kept counting. Three quarters of the lass's body was in the ring. Numerous times. It's Welcome a, everyone a, to the Survivor Series. It's a screw job. As, as, it's the biggest screw job in Survivor Series history. Yeah. Sam has actually just started work <laughs> on the Brooklyn <laughs> screw job. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half yeah. hours long. Yeah. <laughs> the story. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but if you love these types of finishes, then you'll love every other Survivor Series match from the 80s, the 90s. This is what you get. Close line, roll up, distraction, count out. They're all there. L- in tribute for the, to The Rock. Yeah. Looking for the positive, though. I guess it's nice to see them properly investing in someone like Bianca. She oh, came, yeah. She came back from 4-1 down, for goodness sake. Yeah. So we'll see how long that lasts for. I Ooh. hate having no faith in what I'm watching, yeah. but I've got no faith. This was, if you want to have some faith, this was a good setup show for all the stuff happening like the next few weeks. Yeah. Why? I've noticed Trying there's well, like the recent clutch, the recent handful of pay-per-views. The only one that's been built to with any sense of importance was the one in Saudi Arabia. Which is like, yeah. which is very depressing. <laughs> what we it? need is a British billionaire. The one right? paying them the most is the one that they've built to. The man is weird. It's weird. Find, find out they want that egg. when you get Rupert in. Find out how much those Saudi fellas are paying Vince McMahon. Match it and get WrestleMania here. That's what we need. Do we have a rich billionaire wrestling fan in the UK? Jack Whitehall, come on down. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if he's a billionaire. <laughs> He's the best we've got. I saw um, clips of him at the, the Harry Styles concert recently, and he wasn't sat near that. He was. He had crap seats. So, was he? Yeah. Oh, that's not billionaire behaviour, like. No. Oh, Vince no. won't respect that. No. Yeah. Imagine Jack White. He just came out at AW. It was weird. Jack White back of the hall. Oh. Sorry. Oh, Top yeah. dollar. Top dollar. <laughs> oh, he is. <laughs> we've taken away his puns. Ding What's he dong. got? What's he got? <laughs> Roman Reigns beats Big E in the main event, and what a lovely main event it oh, was. Oh, it was a good match. Big men slapping meat. Big meaty men. Oh, yeah. yeah. R- Roman did a rock bottom. Mm. Yeah, why did they do that? <laughs> why did they do it? Because when that happened, all of us in this room, like me and Fraser and Luke and that watching it, were like, ooh, hang on now. This could go somewhere. The rock is coming out. Roman has got the egg somewhere. He's got it up his arse or something. <laughs> <laughs> Roman lays the egg is the final <laughs> of the match. Yeah. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> But yeah, they had the match. It was good, but it was just like every other Survivor Series the last few years of that one year where they put over NXT because it was this new brand. It's just a show with some stakes on the line. Oh, wait, no, there's no stakes on the line. It was very good. And then apparently, I was reading on Twitter just the from the live report, a lot of people going, so, so where's The Rock? Yep. Thank you very much for coming. Drive safely. When the, sig- what? When the signature came up at the bottom of the screen, we all went, oh. But it's, he was it, the fact that some people thought, I saw some people, a lot of people seem to think The Rock was going to show up, not of advertised. Of course, I thought The Rock was going to show up. It's not just everything that happened at Survivor Series, it's the fact they had Roman Reigns go on Jimmy Fallon and speak about The Rock endlessly. Because I, I know that Jimmy. <laughs> and The Rock, what did The Rock do during this? Well, he was on Instagram. And Listen, he was posting hey. about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Be, <laughs> That's what The Rock was doing during the show. I've been told since the age of six that anything can happen in the World Wrestling Federation, right? And when they had the egg and the Rock's 25th Battle Royal anniversary and, and the Rock bottom in the main event. I'm devastated. I hope they had the up for WrestleMania and he doesn't show up for that as well. There's no way they couldn't have pre-recorded something at the very least. The Rock was just too busy. Vince couldn't have picked up the phone and just said, <laughs> you know, Oh, wait, wait, where's my phone? <laughs> Reaches into his pocket, there's only $7. He's like, where's my phone? Oh, well, never mind. Maybe they tried it when Rock could understand Vince. <laughs> Impact got the Rock. I am not an egg. When Impact inducted Ken Shamrock into their Hall of Fame, they got the Rock to send in a video message. Yes. I mean... That's what this pay-per-view needed. Ken Shamrock. The Rock hates Ken Shamrock. He hit him with a chair. They can't yes, get the rock I to. Love. They can't get the rock to do that in WWE. No, e. not for love nor money. Well, as an odd, sh- uh, just a, a weird feeling. Oh, show. here we go. Oh, what's happening? Is UK, UK to act with caution of a new COVID variant. Oh, oh Christmas right. is off. I thought you the arcade won't no. happen. 
I thought you were going to say that Happy you... days are here again. I thought you were going to say the Pachita Yagi sent you a message. Like, can you cut out all that? I've got my Slack notifications muted. Oh, See, my God, I'll check. What has Coholic News got? News of Jack's release yet. <laughs> I've asked Sean door. Ross. Oh, yeah. Monday Night oh, Raw. Oh, there's notifications everywhere. Monday Night Raw. Vincent Mann explains that if anyone finds his egg, they'll get a title shot. Later, we see the locker room frantically looking around for the egg, like finders keepers. <laughs> As another, sorry, old reference I realised, but... Don't worry. It's, it's, it's okay. Oh, you say what you're top dollar, you can say what you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so people go, oh, okay, so this is leading to something. Maybe The Rock will show up. <laughs> Riddle is dressed up as Randy Orton, including fake facial hair, and beats Dolph Ziggler with the RKO. Robert Roos tries to attack Riddle afterwards, but Orton stops him from with Riddle's finisher. So then is Orton going to dress up as Riddle next week? Was that the bro, no, nice? no. Was that the bro oh. Derek? That move? I'm yeah, sure. speaking of old references, I'm amazed no one's changed that. Yeah. Is that Matthew Broderick? No. God, no. <laughs> isn't it a character God, from... God, no, Bo character, Derek, the actress. Isn't it a character from... Oh, right. I thought it was a character... <laughs> Matthew who's the, Hang on, who's the, who's the character? That's amazing. Who's, but again, that's how old it is. Who's Bo the, Derek. Who's the stoner character in... The, the iconic stoner character in, like... Some film. <laughs> wow, Matthew, Jack, please, when you no, like I've that. given you all the clues. Silent you need. J. Yeah, 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 yeah. Silent Bob. Silent Bob. And Jay. And Jay's Jay. very talkative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, shut up, man, Jay, who's the, the iconic character? In, is he in Fast like? Times might be in Fast Times. Time. Yeah. He's got long hair. Yeah. Yeah. He's like a bit of a surfer. Dude. Cheech. Yeah. No, not Cheech. And Chong. Neither of them. The tag team. What's he called? What's that character called? Rob Van Dam. Stop it! I'm asking Matthew. I can't. I don't reveal it because he'll be the shaman on NXT. Wesley. (laughs) Oh my God! Cheech might actually might actually be Cheech, might not it? Well, that's the target demographic for that. Yeah, Yeah, probably. So iconic. I'm going to type in a good iconic stoner character. Anyway, it's got nothing to do with Bo Derek. We need to go she back. Had, she, had, she had braided hair. That was a thing. Oh, is that why he's why, yeah. she, why is he named his finisher after her? Because it's bo, bro. De- I, again, it's a really old reference. Yeah, but you can't just rhyme anything with it. It has to make sense. That, that's what I thought when I heard yeah, it. Yeah, it has to make double. I can't just. He's call, got a bro leave. Like if I was a wrestler, I can't just call it like the. What would you call it instead? I can't just call it like the um like the jack know. off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's terrible, isn't it? Yes. The, the Jack Whitehall. There you go. The movie Stoner Hall of Fame. Oh, man, I'm never going to find this guy. Why are you talking about Stoners? The iconic Stoner character that I'm thinking of. But, but Okay, cool. While you're doing that... Uh, this first segment, I need to talk about the surveillance. Jeff Spicoli. No. Karen Ross. <laughs> they saw thighs and chest, but nothing else. Bare legs, bare chest. What, is it just nothing there? <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> what was he wearing? On the cameras we installed, I'll tell you. We only saw... Because if he's wearing his wrestling gear, the guy who eventually gets revealed to be the guy who took the egg, you know who it is, don't you? So what's he wearing, Matthew, that allows him to have both a bare chest and bare legs, but not to be recognised by his wrestling gear? I want to know Wait, what love is. So you're saying it wasn't him? Or that it just it doesn't make sense that they recognize No, no, it, that's it. what they said. Well, we only got their chest and thighs. That's what they said, Sonia. So the surveillance got nothing. The authorities couldn't find anything. Right. But surveillance cameras picked up the bare chest and the bare legs. Huh. So what's he wearing? I want to know that. I think that's a crucial detail. A smile. Because he has an egg. <laughs> it was uh it was Sean Penn's character in Fast Times. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Between the Watsons have seen him. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, Becky Lynch comes out to talk about the women's tag match at Survivor Series. Uh, Mentioning how the crowd were bored and they did the wave. Oh, yeah, they did do the wave during it. And they tried to see a punk. Yeah, yes, they did. And, oh, we had to edit the audio because obviously they, like, then decreased the crowd volume, brought up the... (sighs) Someone was just like, oh, referee's going for the pin. What? (laughs) You can barely hear the dude. Uh, She says it hurts to admit that she agrees with the crowd. None of the division is capable of taking a title, especially not Liv Morgan, who's in about one match in four years. <laughs> that was a good line. I mean, just it's true. You don't have to say it. Yeah. Later, Becky mocks Liv backstage. You finally get sick of her and hits her with a big right hand. I was fearing that we're going to get Shades of Lana once again with Liv Morgan, but I was happy to be proven wrong immediately. Go on, Liv. Smash her face in. Yeah. But that promo was weird. No, I thought it was good because it's like, oh, previously... Good person, Becky Lynch, would have been like, the the, the women's evolution, etc. Mm. But I was like, yeah, you're right, they are crap. <laughs> yeah, it made sense for her to say. 
because yeah. she's like an egomaniac in character. But yeah. but I don't understand the motive behind this from WWE. Why it's like when they blame Baron Corbin for Raw being crap. Why would you want to agree with the fans and go, yeah, you're right, our product is crap. Or, or our wrestlers. Well, no, I didn't are, say that. Least, I said that well, our wrestlers she's are, defending the title and she's going, yeah, you're right, they all suck. I'm great. I well, thought it made sense. Well, it makes sense from a Becky perspective, yeah. but I don't think it makes sense. I don't think it's a sensible thing to let your heel character say. It's like if it's like if. Don't if, think so. Well, no, it's like if when he was in Ch- Jericho when he was AW champion didn't come out and go everybody sucks. He come out and say like, he on commentary he'd say like he's really good and dangerous, but I'm better because I'm Chris Jericho. Like you've got it's the golden rule, isn't it? You can't if you beat someone you've buried, then it doesn't make you look any better because you buried them. True, but at the same time, Liv Morgan hasn't won a match in four years, so that's yeah, not she the has. Bit, she that's beat not That's not the bit. That's not a bit I'm talking about. I'm talking about the bit where she says the crowd oh. are right for for chanting over the match because they're all crap. Yeah, but isn't it also the argument? Like, p- parents have to deal with this. If they go, hey, man, don't do that bad thing. Like, drugs are there. It goes, oh, well, definitely do it now. But if you go, oh, man, you should totally, you should totally go to that wrestling show and boo all the goodies and share all the baddies. Mm. That's what we do. I Your don't parents think... are going to go, it's so the kids are going to go, oh, I'm not going to do it now. So you throw so Becky going, yeah. Keep it up, lads. It's like, oh, it's part of the show. I don't want to do it then. So you think that in writing this promo, WWE anticipated the crowd recognizing the reverse psychology of Becky and, and not... I don't think that was their motive behind it. Do you? Their motive. Well, why did you don't w- know. We, we why, like motives in this Why did WWE yeah. write this promo for Becky? To get her over. At the what? expense Get her over. But yeah, but they're not over anyway. Highlight the... Yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah. Why would they highlight that fact and have the fans go, yeah, you're right, Becky. They're all they don't crap. care about their division. It, yeah, but it's baffling to me. That <laughs> no, no I agree with you. It doesn't right, make right, any right. sense. Yeah. yeah, it's so strange. But anyway, yeah. but I agree with you that it, it made sense. If it was a line that Becky had just thrown in herself on a whim, then I could understand that because it makes sense for her character. Do you know how you can tell that they don't care about the division? Why did none of the other women come out? And then go, what are you doing? Well, yeah, yeah. Why would you say that? That's how little. It just, it just became a little confrontation backstage. And yeah, live here, but... It was a nothing promo other than to just remind us what happened to Survivor Series a bit. Yeah. 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 Uh, Bianca Belair cuts a promo saying that maybe now she's proven herself by becoming sole survivor. Dewdrop will sod off. Maybe you leave me alone yeah. now, Dewdrop. Belair beats Tamina and fights off an attack by Natalia afterwards, but Dewdrop lays her out. Now, first and foremost, Tamina's Simone drop was absolutely sensational. Yeah. And on top of that, nobody sells a KOD like Tamina does. It's amazing every time. And they've stopped making. Dewdrop dressed like Big Bertha, which is fantastic news for everyone concerned. She's dressing like she used to. She's got the plaid shirt on like she's grungy and Kurt Cobain-esque, which means she's badass and a heel. Yeah. Even though Kurt Cobain, a lot of what he said aged well. Ahead of his time was Kurt Cobain and many of what things he said, what I've seen. He's probably said some terrible thing now that people are going to throw at me. No, no, actually. (laughs) But anything in particular that uh, stands out to you from Kurt Cobain? Just stuff about today, you know being more accepting of different people and all that sort of stuff. He was saying that back in the 90s. That's nice. And he was made to feel like a tosser because of it back then, I assume. You know what the Not 90s really. were like. Oh, yeah. By the other side, I guess. His fans would have loved him for it. Yeah. But yeah, I bet, I bet conservative America were like, whoa. Yeah. Getting your box. I'm trying hurt. not to dive too deep into this in case I've set, misinterpreted some stuff. No, but... Kirk Cobain was no, quite, he's he's a very like, like, liberal guy, was wasn't he? Yeah. I mean, the lyric that people keep bring up is like, he's the one who needs not... Likes to sing a line. Likes to shoot his gun. Okay, well, that bit, sorry, but doesn't know what it means. <laughs> that bit, that's a little that keeps coming up my head when you hear someone talk about something and you go, oh, no, you, no, that, that, that's, that, that song is about people like you. That's not in support. Oh, that's good. Oh, you believe it? Just my I'm trying to think, I can't even example off the top of my head, but when no someone's saying, like, oh, that's a good thing, you're like, no, no, that, that no they're singing about you. You're not, yeah, anyway. Andrew Lou- Hopkins was possibly a... Andrew Hawkinson's favourite band, Nirvana. Oh, that's nice. And James Jenkins from Triple Jump. They both agreed that Nirvana were possibly their favourite band. Possibly their favourite band. Oh, well, there's so many Nirvana. bands. And then we'll play their music at the arcade in Gateshead. I hope so. Yeah. That'll get me through. Play Lounge Act, Nirvana's best song. Lounge Act? I'm like, oh, have you recently been really? listening to Nevermind or something? No. Where did this come from? This? I've, I've been a fan. I like the heavy the, oh, the heavy, I, music. The heavy music. I just thought it you was... You were a... flabbergasted when I said I like the Foo Fighters. You're the, you're the, you're the, you're oh, yeah. there's a link there. They're very different sounding bands. They are very different yeah, sounding yeah. bands. Yeah. Nirvana's better than Foo Fighters. Bloody hell. Wow. <laughs> no swear words were said. Yeah. Anyway. 
Uh, where we have Seth Rollins cuts a promo about how he won the Survivor Series tag match by himself because his teammates were useless. <laughs> Finn Balor interrupts and comes out for a match, but Seth attacks during his entrance pose and beats him down. And then here's the thing of the week. Uh, Rollins is attacked by a fan as he leaves. The fan takes him down with something resembling a spear, but sends Seth converted to a guillotine, and all the, the, the crew come out to help him, now, including Jimmy Wang Yang. Now, credit to Seth for his response, because he, he would have been totally forgiven for panicking and then possibly causing this guy serious damage once he got up and the refs are holding him. He was at Seth's mercy then. Seth could have kicked him in the head if he wanted. But he just sort of, in character as well, went like, what are you going to do? And I thought, <laughs> I thought that was, I thought that was class from him, to be fair. Yeah. Cause no, I the... don't, right? <laughs> I remember when wrestlers used to be hard. Oh, here we go. Chavo yeah. grew. <laughs> Chavo. And then people point out the, the tweet when someone did a gif of Chavo getting powerbombed by Scott Norton and, so, and Chavo replied to the gif like years ago saying, oh, Norton, no one like working with him. Oh. And then Scott Norton called to you going, hey, good to see you, Chavo. <laughs> And we're next meeting up. Hashtag keyboard warriors. I've walked past Chavo. <laughs> this is good because Guerrero is Spanish for warrior. I've walked past Chavo Guerrero before. And if he'd got hit with the exact same thing that Seth got hit with, there, that fan running out, and Chavo would have snapped an arm. <laughs> I was going to say, the fan was, the fan was in, where you're tripping over Chavo. Yeah. Rollins is bigger than Chavo, isn't he? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chavo is shorter than me by quite a distance. <laughs> yeah. and, and Rollins is a pretty tall guy. like, And he just looks shorter because he's surrounded by like Drew and that. But no. Nah, Fair play to Seth. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, so I agree. Seth play. handled it very well. The referee's going there. Uh, WWE not like when, happy. or oh, gone. I don't like when people come out after on Twitter and go, that fan should have got his ass beat. I didn't like it when Cash Wheeler punched that fan because you never know. You never really know. I feel like they should be removed immediately and prosecuted and all that sort of stuff. But you never know what that person's... They could be disabled. True, but in the heat they of the moment, be... taking down Brett F and Hart yeah. at the Hall. He deserved of... that punch. <laughs> and, and I got to say, in but in the heat of the moment, that's like 10 seconds after it happens. And, you know, there's every every huge wrestler in wrestling's there instantly on the scene. Like, go look, get, get the guy. In and, just, you know, he just needs but to But imagine know. if it had come out that he was like, had no idea what was going on. You know what I mean? I mean, it pretty much did, didn't it? I mean, I think he was more that. cognitive. The, the, the Brett Hart one, I remember some of his I think he was, was a lot like, more lucid than. It, it was, but this guy, this guy, th did this, it Rollins, the this Rollins guy, this guy, the news has come out since, and clearly he's not like you know. There's something wrong. Yeah, do we move forward with pressing charges? And they're laying all the blame on the arena security. Oh wow! Because Dewey has their security when they bring along the road. But that's for the backstage area. Keep you know wrestling fans out and whatever. But the arenas obviously have their own security and showed how easy it was for that guy to get off his seats. It all was the, way the down. same area of the arena where the Bret Hart one came from. It's in the same <sighs> arena, wasn't it? The, it was the same arena? The Barclays Centre. Oh! I didn't even realise that, Paul. I'm oh, sure, well, yeah. Wow. Wow. God, just don't run there. But, yeah. yeah, then it, again, depending on how you look at it, it's either incredibly depressing or the, the plot of Joker. Um, so the guy got catfished. Is that the expression, I think, for this? I think it was appropriate by someone. And you could tell it was Seth Rollins because they had the WhatsApp name Seth Rollins. And they put a bunch of them online about taking a lot of money from him. Um, because Seth Rollins was like, hey, it's me, Seth Rollins from WWE. Can I have some money? And he went, oh, Seth Rollins. And the guy's thinking that the real Seth Rollins has done this to him, so he attacked him. It's very depressing, to be honest with you. It is depressing. And it, this previous with Rollins, when it comes to this, I was watching a, an interview he did a few years ago uh, this week where he was saying uh, some last got or some lady got catfished by oh someone else and turned up to his house expecting him to go, oh, we're in a relationship now, you and me. I've been texting you for ages so it must be wild being that like of that level of fame and having that sort of stuff going on yeah, yeah. but I it wasn't a good situation all around I uh, agree with Ron has handled it the best he could though yeah, yeah. he did uh, like even it's unfathomable like even like I got a, a DM once from someone who put like just let you know like I'm on Tinder and this account is you and it freaked me that, even that, that even that yeah. freaked me out yeah it said that <laughs> the bio was like trying to learn guitar I can play guitar. <laughs> that like, was a bit you took issue with. Yeah, but no, no. It, but no gen, it, it, the sense of like, nah, I get you, the sense of like violations quite weird. And this is like that times a million. So yeah. I can't even imagine like what, what it's like. It's crazy. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Street Profits take down 
So I take on Aegis Tiles and Nomos. Almost dominates, so Dawkins uses a fire extinguisher and gets DQ'd. Uh, the two products celebrate anyway in the ramp. Yeah. Why did All right, mate. <laughs> what was the reference here? Why was the, the, the fire extinguisher in the bag that they brought out from the back? To combat Omos, because he's too big. Because he's yeah. fire, is he? So they never They're intended to win the match. They're going to freeze him at the end of Demolition Man. <laughs> <laughs> so they never intended to win the match, then? Yeah, they I think so. Celebrate. I don't know, Street Profits now just dumb, I guess. Yeah. Yay, Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I liked when he was celebrating with the CO2, Dorgans, because it all ran out. So when he was spraying it, going, yeah, just like the little spoots at the end were like, yeah. The vinegar strokes, yeah. Uh, Carmella, uh, <laughs> Carmella and Queen Zelina beat Rhea Ripley and Nikki Ash to become women's tag team champions. It was a historic reign. <laughs> I mean. I, I Honestly, right, I forgot Nikki Ash was a thing. <laughs> yeah. And it's oh, terrible yeah, uh, to say. But no, when but that, that, that's how it's booked. When her music like, was hit, I was like, oh my God, she's there. She's still there. Yeah. Um, it was a nothing match because it was because the women's tag team titles. I wish they would just get rid of them because they yeah. never ever put any effort into them yep. unless Sasha Banks and Bailey hold them because they clearly stand up for themselves backstage and are listened to. Yeah. I assume the other lasses do, but I just told them to go away. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah. Sami Zayn tells Vince he knows where the egg is. He brings Austin Theory to Vince who admits that he took the egg to take a selfie with it. Vince appreciates his honesty and gives him the title shot. Instead, Sammy is fuming. Now, second place, sorry, third place in my move of the week is... <laughs> so we had this Go scene on. where Adam and Vince are in the, the, the Vince's office. And uh, Vince is like, I've got him. I'm just about to bring him in. And Vince looks at the camera. It's just like, oh, really? Let's wait. He just goes like sort of, oh, really? And then looks off into the distance. And then it goes to commercial break. But it lingers on Vince like two seconds too long. <laughs> He's like, oh, really? <laughs> And then we cut the commercial. Because oh. they didn't know what he said. That's fantastic. Did you hear what Vince said? It's a good commercial. <laughs> That's uh, fantastic. All that build up for the egg, oh, and it's, um, it's Austin Theory who stole it to take a picture with uh. it. Now, the egg is bollocks. I accept that. But this could have been good, right? Who done it storylines are always good. I don't care what they are. Coronation Street, hmm. Simpsons, uh, they're always fantastic. Yep. Maggie Simpson. I know that one. It well done. Well done. It was Marge. I know it was Marge. I'm part of the conspiracy. It was Marge. But this could have been good. It could have been drawn out for ages, all the way through until WrestleMania, then The Rock saves the day or something like that. How will we get there? But to have it paid off in less than 24 hours, and for that to be the reason, Austin Theory, phone man, taking a picture with the egg and going, oh, I forgot it was in my hands. Oh. Bollocks. Yeah, it's crap. Pisses me off, that it's does. Bad. And I'm going to do it again, even though I don't want to. We've just sat through a two-year storyline with AEW. And I know the egg's nonsensical, but you can make something good with that nonsensical egg, surely. And yeah. have it paid off down the line when people care about it. Yeah. But we paid it off in less than a day with Austin Bastard Theory. Bollocks. <laughs> Top dollars out. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> no, I agree. Can't add anything else other than that. It's annoying, isn't it, though? Yeah. A large part of well, wrestling fandom is getting invested in the storylines, is it not? And I think it's almost don't do them. I think it was almost at the point where they're going, Are you really paying attention to this? Are you really all right, let's see what we could do. A golden egg from an advert. That's that's the MacGuffin. That's a thing that you're gonna be watching TV for. Oh, you didn't like the egg storyline, did you not? Uh you know it was an egg, right? Those are I thought that we were looking at now, like, oh yeah, the egg didn't pay off. No Rikishi going, I did it for The Rock. Nah, just, just an egg. Just an egg, yeah. Was it's the least exciting egg storyline you've seen in wrestling, was it? Oh, we'll be sure to write that down. They're like, well, look, lads, it's the Rumble soon. Wait, what do you care? <laughs> You're all coming back. <laughs> Someone stole my lucky turd. But that'll be, that'll be next is, week. This is you'll Ma be watching. This is Matthew you'll be watching. not adding anything to what you said. But <laughs> I can't add anything to that. And now five minutes later, he's going, it's an egg. It's an egg. <laughs> I, but I understand why it's made everyone Sorry. so angry. Because no, no, I totally understand why it's made you so angry. Because it was lazy, wasn't it? They don't care what we. They don't no. care about the fans. No, <sighs> never mind. Anyway. He took a selfie with it, <laughs> and then forgot it was in his hands, and he left with it. That that's the storyline. One hundred million dollar golden egg. He walked out with it, and then walked back in with it, and nobody saw him, apart from his chest and thighs. <laughs> 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 I guess at least the saving grace I've got written down there is we got a fantastic shut up from Vince to Sami Zayn yeah, that was because great. nobody likes a snitch <laughs> but that's not going to save that bollocks for me no I can't 
I, the faith's gone. I mean, it left a long time ago, but yeah. this just rubber stamped why the faith left. Well, you're just a shell. Faith no more. For AEW. So. Oh. What it's funny. Ashes, faith no more. Yeah. WWE's storyline booking is a mere pile of ashes. Yeah, like one, <laughs> one minute was here, one minute's not. I've blown them off the table. Cedric Alexander beats Reggie. He's moved on. To become 24 <laughs> I'm trying. 24 7 <laughs> champion. But turned into a blockbuster from Dana Brooke, who pins him to win the belt. The rest of the 24 7 division don't want to attack her. It's a 24 7 division. I've That's got a thought on the 24 7 division. Do you really? I'm sorry. Why? What's. So, why have they abandoned Reginald then? Because he came up against Cedric Alexander, who remembered that he is a wrestler and that Reginald's not. And he just battered him. Roman Reigns is next challenger. Cedric Alexander. No, Reggie. Dana. Oh, Reggie. Mm, right, right, out the twenty-four right. picture. Oh, yeah. It's time to. You can have a good match. Well, yeah, I oh, of course you could. But Dana's blockbuster was all right. I love the fact that Dana Brooke, when she's in Brooklyn or the New York area, like WrestleMania thirty-five was, she's like Bruno Samaritano, isn't she, Matthew? That's right. That's how you say that. Bruno name. Samaritano. Remember that the, the was it ironic cheer she got in the WrestleMania thirty-five kickoff battle royal. That Were they was, ironic cheers? That was in the shadows of New York City. I'm not sure. No, no, she was getting some, like, she was getting some love because she'd be doing the stuff in between the breaks and the uh, T-shirts and, hey, come on, guys. But she's come back to her stomping ground. It's her turf, yeah. New York. She's like Tyler. She owns New York. Yeah. <laughs> she just won the 24-7 title. Yeah. Good on her. Why not? Sure. Don't care what's the video. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, no one cares about it, do they? Ray and Dom are said to take on Bobby Lashley in a handicap match. MVP says when Ray's wife is sick of him putting Dom in danger, he can give her MVP's number. Wow. Well, Ashley cool. wins the match. Wow. It was a fantastic Oof. promo from MVP. Bloody hell. Yeah, but it was out of nowhere. <laughs> how, di- how disappointed he was in Ray. As a f- he loves him as a superstar. He's a legend and all yeah. that stuff. But he disappointed him in a, as, a, as a father for putting Dom in harm's way against Bobby Lashley time and time again. Fantastic yeah. stuff. Yeah, isn't he great? Yeah, but I just and thought, then he could I have thrown one how great he was. After the filmed by a fan. Um, there's some fan giving lip to Montez so Ford, Ford. Yeah. and MVP was like, "Come on, come on, come over the room. Yes. come over the thing. I'll, I'll, I'll dare you." Shortly after the Rollins thing, the same night, what was in the water I that know. night? God. Just New Yorkers, man. As Vince McMahon <laughs> said, "That Brooklyn present." <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did say that. <laughs> Apollo Crews and Commander Aziz could have promo in the ring, but are cut off by Damian Priest, who was issuing an open challenge to the U.S. title. Cruz says no. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah, what, yeah, what was that? <laughs> Wait a minute. Why? It's an title, open challenge. It's a title shot, isn't it? <laughs> He's made the effort to walk all the way to the ring to go, nah, I'm all right. <laughs> well, Cruz was out there first. Yeah. And then Priest came out and said, I'll give you a free title shot right now. And he went, oh. <laughs> Why? Why? Good on Sammy, though. Sammy saw the opportunity and took Oh, hi. So He's took, a wrestler. Yeah, he took the shot. Lost, of course he did. Priest yeah, wins. Right? At least he was up for it. Yeah. Austin Theory faces Big E for the re title with Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens watching from ringside. They get into an argument which distracts Theory, allowing Big E to win with a big ending. They argue and brawl afterwards with Big E hitting a big ending on Seth to end the show. I like Big E, Owens, Rollins, what's going on with them? And that's all I have to say about that, I guess. So not only was the egg paid off in less than a day, the thing that we got as a result of the egg ba- being paid off was secondary in Biggie's battles with Rollins and Owens. It's just bollocks. I hate it, man. I just hate it. What are we doing here? What's the point? <laughs> well, I feel like the end game... I think about that a lot. I feel like Rollins is going to be the next champion after Big E. At some point, I just can't look out when he's going to beat him. But Austin Theory took the egg. The $100 million <laughs> egg, right? <clears throat> yeah, he did. And it's playing second fiddle to something else that's been going on for a while. Yeah. Have them be separate, man. It's a predetermined show. You can make anything (laughs) happen. Anything happen you want to happen. Anything. Anything can happen in the World Wrestling Federation. Jim Ross said that at the start of SmackDown 2, and I used to believe him back then. Now he's not true, because they book themselves into these stupid corners that they don't have to, but they keep doing it time and time again, and I'm done. I'm quitting YouTube now. I'm going to work on a farm because that's all my skill set will allow it's the new documentary <laughs> Ross Tweddle's Farm, farm. Tweddle's farm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, if so you liked it then I, it just pisses you off Matthew yeah. so, I want to get invested I yeah. want it to be better oh, yeah. so I think that was Andrew making a little noise so he often does nah, he often does that just makes noise it's like a fox 
That sounded like Why? Fox. You ever heard a fox make a noise? Just what yeah. it does. There's it's a what song about it. Um, yeah. Is this to pop the boys in the room? Oh, oh okay. Nerds. Okie doke. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, Ross. I know you're upset, but we'll cheer you up now. NXT 2.0. <laughs> and I've done this oh, thing. Oh, um, this episode was a lot. See, this I've actually a... done I know some last... highlights. I've, I've gone, right. I'm going to list the positives of when it comes up to it, but the bit I like about the episode, okay. rather than just rant about it being bad or we'll be here all bloody To be honest with you, I didn't mind the start of NXT because Grayson Waller is clearly say. The Office, I'm going to call him. His gimmick is The Office. Go on. Last week he was on there saying wins and losses don't matter. That's what The Office <laughs> thinks. He's saying followers matter. That's what The Office clearly thinks. You booed The Rock, you booed Cena, you booed mm. Reigns, and look at them now. You cheer them, you love them. I'm Grayson Waller, I'm the same as them. He's The Office. Not the... Ricky so, Gervais. You, Before we <laughs> just start, I know last week was kind of the the death knell for NXT 2.0 for I think you, yeah, Ross, was, yeah. and possibly you as well. Or yeah. yours might have come. You were gone on. before me. This one, I mean, I was yeah, gone. This, I, I'm only watching this show because of you have because to. of this show. And that's why I'm like, let's the positive <laughs> rather than negative. So I like, just like why, why I like bother? like all of us was pretty much gone after week one or two at the most. But then I started to get back the ironic love of watching it, which Ross lost last week. And this week has killed mine. This is now, I'm gone as okay. well, my ironic well, I joy. can't wait to do that. Uh, go it's the this. shift in mantra as well, Matthew. I'm sorry, I'm on one today. The uh, shift in mantra of NXT 2.0 has been back to gimmicks, hasn't it? Back, uh, back like 2015 was, back in the day. But then we have the opening segment, and each and every main event, if I'm not mistaken, since NXT 2.0 became a thing, has all been NXT 1.0 work rate stuff. They haven't got a bloody clue what they're doing, have they? <laughs> they're true. going round in circles. This is new, this is old, but it's still the same, largely. Apart from a few different extra, you know, variables here and there, I've I don't know if I'm, I've woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. There's a chance. There's a chance. There no, a chance. I can But don't worry, we'll go through this. I'm sure <laughs> this will perk mm. you up for us. Uh, segment one: Grayson Waller opens the show, saying that Tommaso Ciampa doesn't have star quality like himself. He says the crowd are wrong. Yeah, you already said this. But Ciampa arrives and they have a match, which Ciampa wins. And then backstage, LA Knight criticizes Waller. Joe Gacy comes along and tells him that they should be building each other up, not telling you to shut up. Uh, no, you've got to recap the show, Matthew. I was worried you would do this. I just hate Joe, Joe Gacy. There's people who are watching read. this who do like NXT. Joe Gacy says they should be building each other up, not tearing each other down. Full stop. I, just when, and I fully agree, but when you don't like something, sometimes I'm worried that you feel like everyone else, They want to hear us tear it apart. You're right. Like, I'm sorry, Like Tom. foxes. Yeah. I was the noise you, of Andrew. Andrew, <laughs> <you> Andrew. <laughs> so, oh, I hurt my throat today. Second. Uh, oh, don't hurt your throat. Uh, I liked the positive of this was Grayson Waller interrupting the actual intro to the show. Mm. They go, no, 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 no. And talk about this. <laughs> Loud um, <dramatic. laughs> Yeah. He ran about Twitter fiends. And if I had as many accusations about him, I'd hate Twitter too. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> just me being positive do we have the show. To say, Actually, I wrote that down as a positive. Do we have to say uh, allegedly at this stage? Allegedly. I don't know. How, are you? I yeah, are, are your, alleged. This is, alleged. List, this is your list of positives. Yes, it was nice that he interrupted the actual show to talk about himself. He cool. was. It's not often you see that the, the actual intro, like da, 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 da. no, 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 no. <laughs> <Come back. laughs> Do you think that was a nice touch? You are bright. The Cockney accent. <laughs> the match itself, I thought was great because it was like NXT 1.0 in mm. work rate. Yeah, the match was good. Yeah. Cool moves and whatnot. Second place in my move of the week was the the setup and the execution of Willow's Bell. How he did the forward, he did a forward roll from the floor in between the bottom and middle ropes, and then he went backwards and mm. then down again for the DDT. He's good, Chamber. Aye, so is, so is Grayson Waller. The apart bo- from his was, accusations, it was, apparently. Good, it was a good match, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> yeah, it was a good match. Yeah, the crowd likes Chamber. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. Toxic Attraction discusses. Facing Cora Jade. Yeah, Mandy, sorry, Mandy's got a match with her tonight, yeah. Yes. Uh, they not, bump... no, that's me and Karak, that's me being one of them. For some... She's not got a match with her tonight. She had a match with her yes. on, I, I on Tuesday night. They bump into their War Games teammate, Dakota Kai, who's still acting weird. Yes. She's got a funny walk. She has a Not only does she go, <laughs> at the start of sentences now, she's got a funny walk too. Mm. That's the character development. That's the character Dakota, development. Dakota, Dakota Kai. What we like got two points. Dakota not... Kai character development. Shut up. Oh, ah, like Boz. That. You're still top dollar, Matthew, not me. She's, uh, <laughs> I insist. She, she's not acting as weird as the next person on the scene. Meanwhile, they walk away, they look and go, what's all this mess? Because What? <laughs> Do you remember we did Smackdown? <laughs> Smackdown on a Yorkshire accent a couple of weeks ago. Is yeah. this now? <laughs> the I'm doing like you know, 
they'll talk like <laughs> Charles Dickens people. <laughs> There's a lot of mesh in the floor, oh, eh? And then walk away. And then, meanwhile, Kaylee Ray is with a baseball bat going, ha, ha, ha. She so smashed gimmick, a load of stuff with her, her on gimmick, camera. Her gimmick is literally woman who smashes things with a bat. Yes. As yes. an as introduction package showed. Yep. And as this segment showed. She needs I mean, to good anger management, I'd suggest. To be fair, <laughs> Kaylee Ray is like one of the highlights of UK women's wrestling like, mm-hmm. for years and years and years. But she's never had much of a character in WWE. So is this a step up? Is this is this an improvement? It's a good question to ask, Jack. Is if you don't have a character and you get a character and that character is a bit wee, uh, is it an improvement or not? I don't know. It remains to be seen. I mean, war games being violent and could be good. I mean, it's going to just smash things afterwards every week. Yeah. Smash, smash. Kenny Ray is next. <laughs> be good, be good. If she starts getting interfering in matches and just smashing people in the face with baseball bats, like, I don't know, the hair versus hair one at war games, yeah. just have her come out and smash Duke in the face and he gets shaved. I'm all on board. <laughs> <laughs> face, face all stuck up. <laughs> Oh. Cameron Boring Grimes bastard. honestly looks great with slightly shorter hair. I thought yeah. he looked way yeah. he looked amazing. He, yeah. He looked so handsome. I was so proud of him. <laughs> but he cuts a serious promo. It's devastated yeah. him. This. It's he was crying as well. Yeah. He, Lots of tears. From the Xavier week. Woods School of Acting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because he's he's from humble beginnings and his hair and beard that being long reminded him and kept him grounded about being from humble. Duke Hudson took all that away. Oh man. Oh. And then Hudson himself is Natron. He's not a particularly good actor or anything like that, but he was good at going, yeah, you, you took away my poker chips, so I took away your hair. Uh, and I'll take the rest away. He's got the bag of it, because obviously that's what you do when you shave someone's head. Um, take the rest of it at War Games. Hair versus hair. <sighs> and uh, you know what? Yeah. It's like, I probably built feud this. Grimes is a great serious promo. Yeah, yeah, he is. I was surprised. Duke Hudson <clears throat> has all the charisma of a brick. <laughs> He's like yeah, Toby he Flinderson of the American office. He is boring. I want a bit of razzle-dazzle from me poker players, man. They're poker players. They've yeah. got loads of money. Loads of money. Nah. <laughs> Wonga. Yeah. What was that advert back in the day? Oh, yeah. Shout yeah, money yeah, yeah. in Cockney accents. Reddies. Oh, I remember Wong- it wasn't Reddies. Even- <coughs> Wonga. <laughs> it wasn't even Wonga.com, was it? No, it was, it was just, somebody else, yeah. Big bloke yelling Wonga. But he's... he's, he's Stood there speaking like a, a middle manager of a, a car, yeah. like a salesman, like, oh, hello, would you like to buy our range of fragrances? You're a bloody poker player, man. You've got lots of money. You probably do dirty things in your spare time with yeah. your money like all the poker players do. Yeah. I'll take your hair because this ace is high. Yeah. yeah. Anything. Just thought of that. Top dollar. Yeah. Bob. I'll take your hair like I took the virginity of all the p- people in the bar I went to the other day. <laughs> That's wow. How- <laughs> yes. All of them? He wasn't in character. That's, well, just, that's just Ross, 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 Ross on the weekends. <laughs> that's Duke Hudson to clarify. Yeah, Duke yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's just why is he so boring? A bit of razzle dazzle. A bit of a golden jacket's not enough. <laughs> if he didn't have that, he'd be knackered. I know. There's no there, is there? I hope he gets shaved bald, but he's not going to, is he? That'd be his gimmick. Do you think Cameron is? Cameron's going to go bald, yeah. isn't he? Whoa. My gimmick is not only am I boring, but I'm bald as well. <laughs> bald Buchanan. <laughs> Hey, Steve Austin started off in WWF as bald and boring. And look what yeah. happened then. Oh Duke my. Hudson could be the oh, next. Oh, shut up, Waller. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, later Grimes bumps into Andre Chase. Speaking of unlikable. Oh, he was giving his students... Before that, though, we've, ha- we've got the debut promo package of a new character in NXT 2.0 who is a spoiled... No, no, I've mentioned it. I've mentioned oh, it. Oh, sorry, it's so later on. Yes, yeah, so later on. I yeah, might, yeah. No, I just later on... How dare you interrupt the Andre Chase segment? <laughs> He's giving his students a tour of the building. Uh... He says that Grimes represents a teachable moment, and Grimes says, oh, shut up. And then I'm just uh, goes, don't listen to don't him. Don't listen to oh. him. The wacky teacher or something. Uh, then we then see a video package for Tiffany Stratton, oh, a rich lady who's coming to NXT who plays tennis. She's not a rich lady. Her, Her daddy, daddy is. Hi. Oh. She's a daddy's girl. That's the daddy's girl quota filled now. Yeah. Tick that off the list. Yeah, wait, get, get, well, get the big box. I hope Cora Jade kicks her ass for the people. Yeah. Oh, I hate these daddy's girls. Mm. I guess is that what I'm supposed to be thinking? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a classic okay. trope. Well, I spoil brats. No. no I like should, it could yeah. work. It could work. It could work. I'm not going to criticize this before. It is another one note gimmick, yes, <laughs> but it could work. You never know. She has a country or access to a country club. Yeah. She plays tennis. Daddy's girl. She's like a heel Michelle McCool. She does all these activities and she's loving life, but it's not off her own back. She's Ooh. like Stephanie McMahon back in the day who yeah. allows us into her private life. 
Yeah, she's the billion dollar princess. Oh, she's going to get pushed to the moon. I assume Stephanie had access to a country club in her youth. Oh, yes. Enjoyed a game of tennis, a bit of, bit of <laughs> bowls. I couldn't think of What's the lawn green? What's the what? green bowls? I don't know what I'm saying here, Matthew. We just call it bowls. The one that yeah. the old people play. Yeah. Bowls. Lawn green bowls. Maybe that's just an English thing. I Maybe, yeah. Yeah, we've got bowls as opposed to bowling. Yeah. yeah. Bit of Jim Crockett on the lawn. Croquet. Ah, yes. Yes. Let's move on. Please do. <laughs> Persia. <laughs> Uh, Brota and Indy Hartwell lose to Caden Carter and Casey Catanzaro because Indy is too preoccupied thinking of the injured Dexter Lumis. Fair play to her for stepping in the ring because it's a test in time. <laughs> 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 He's at home with a broken hand <laughs> and she's beside herself. <laughs> Persia's going to snap, I think. Persia's going to turn on her. Because Persia won that handicap match out of nowhere a few weeks ago and we all realised, whoa, she's we didn't, scary. We didn't speak about that properly that match because the finishing spot where she gets them both on the shoulders, I saw it getting shared on Twitter this week. And the second lass is on the top turnbuckle and just sort of hops on. For no reason, yeah. Just for no reason, yeah. yeah. Maybe she's trying to help her mate by... Mm, <laughs> Adding yeah. more weight to Persia's yeah. shoulders. She won't be able to carry me as well. <laughs> Come on. Uh, oh, no, she can. It's like, the opposite. <laughs> it's like the opposite of when Cena lifted up Big Show and Edge and then Edge got off. It's like if Edge was like, all right, I'll get on as well then. Yeah. Nice finisher from Casey and Caden off the shoulders yeah. as they continue their run as party women. <laughs> they have all of the fun. They go to all of the nightclubs yeah. and all of the festivals. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <interesting>, <laughs> Sanos Escobar easily beats Malik Blade. There. Who's definitely one of those holdovers who's like, okay, well, it's not it's gonna go in airplane mode every time it's a Friday. <laughs> Afterwards, Electra Lopez gets on the mic and tears into Zion Quinn for turning her down. She says that Legado del Fantasma are stronger than ever, which brings out Kyle O'Reilly. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> and Von Wagner, yes. whose forehead gets bigger every week. <laughs> so nasty. Just, just such agree. a nasty thing to say. He says they're good for the tag titles. So nasty. Dude, I could, st- I could stand underneath him and not get wet. More nastiness. <laughs> more, more of it. Massive, massive head. <laughs> But at least he's got this that. brings out the champions. Imperium, <laughs> who say it? There's a matter who challenges them first because they're mint. Also, uh, shut up speaking your languages. I speak Italian and German. Ha, ha, ha. Their reign will continue. Your thoughts? I'll just move on from that. I, yeah. Oh, what, okay. What can we add? Get out of NXT, Kyle. <laughs> Go save yourself. Okay. I think he is, isn't he? Was his contract up yeah, soon? Yeah, it's up soon, oh. apparently, yeah. Another When's one. Roddy's up? He's fine. He's in the diamond mine. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Surrounded I, by diamonds. Stables yeah. never get let go in the space <laughs> of show. Uh, Cora Jade's War Games team bicker backstage. She tells them to focus on finding a fourth member and heads to the ring for a non tart match against Mandy Rose. Jade wins after Mandy's distracted by Kaylee Ray going mental with her baseball bat on the outside. Yeah. Afterwards, she tells Cora and Co that she's on the team. And they're like, yeah, fair enough. But she's crazy. Yes, but War Games is crazy. Oh, yeah, cool. Not only is Cora J. Jack's favourite wrestler, but she's also, she's not mine. Favorite wrestler. she's also mine as well. Because she I literally said. said, are we going to do the whole can they coexist stuff? It's boring. Go oh, on, Cora J. No it's only... funny when the, the people on the show say it's the things the that we criticise. No only she likes CM Punk. Not only did she meet CM Punk, but she's like him as well. She's <laughs> the breaking first... the fourth wall. Yeah. Oh, crazy. Go on, Cora. Who Get scripted him. that for her? Because uh, Brucey P's back there as well, isn't he? Yeah, who did script that for her? Interesting. Hmm. I don't know what the creative team is. Not Sky Too Hotty, we know Sean. that. Sean. Uh, yeah, right. Sean. Type in that keyboard. <laughs> LA Knight makes his entrance, but is ambushed by... He was by such a sexy boy, man. LA Knight, he is. Uh, ambushed by Grayson Waller, and they have a pull-apart brawl. For half an hour. <laughs> they, they do. They brawl and brawl and brawl. They brawl for ages. I was impressed with the conditioning yeah. of both men. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's like Harley Race and Duggan going at the slammies. <laughs> I can't wait for LA Knight, sorry, The Rock, to make Grayson Waller a footnote in history. <laughs> Get rid of him. Yeah. Is that going to happen? <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> yeah. Joe Gacy sits in the ring and apologizes for what wait, we've this segment, just seen. Sorry, this segment was a Brucey e. P segment because it went yes, like it was. five different directions all at once. Yeah. Sorry, I thought Gary. I thought this promo from Joe Gacy before you dive into it was the highlight of the night. <laughs> no, you don't. Yes, I did. All right, let me recap I've it written, first. I've it's such an interesting take on the, t- mm. on the Cruiserweight Championship. He's interrupted by the Diamond Mine, who politely tell him to leave because Ivy Nile had a match next. 
Gacy says he doesn't appreciate their tone and that Roddy's cruiserweight title is exclusionary and triggering to those of a certain body type. Yes. Strong says he doesn't care and will put his title on the line against Gacy at War Games. And it's nice, actually, because uh, I'll agree, not Gacy, but like Malcolm Bivens going, all right, well, <laughs> what do you say? We'll beat Gacy like a Little Wayne track. What's that mean? It's going to beat. Oh. Uh, well, whatever. I thought it was good. I, um, thought, I thought Little Wayne was just the little fella who hopped on everyone else's songs and did some. <laughs> at the, the, the end. Some bit of man. <laughs> yeah, I thought this as well. But apparently, Little Wayne was actually quite influential, in, uh, ah. which, which is too beyond my knowledge of Little Wayne, who is just the man who's in charge of Young Money. Yeah, Young Money. Yeah. Well, I can make your bed rock. That's how he sounds, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't sing the <laughs> the chorus of the song. <laughs> well, he just yells. But yeah. Uh, what a tune, it's, it's weird, though, because we've done, a, we've done a 180. Mm. I'm gone from the... Wait, wasn't it going to be Odyssey Jones taking on Yeah. Money? So credit to him for breaking down boundaries. <laughs> yeah, Joe Gacy. Yeah, wait, no, no, yeah. the other lad. We don't have any other cruiserweights, apparently, to take you on, Roddy. Joe so. Gacy. Sorry, Odyssey Jones has, like, sort of creaked open the door, and Joe Gacy's burst through it, and he's now... How is it exclusionary? It's not. Because it used to be the weight limit was 205, wasn't it? That's where he's coming from. Yeah. That's so everyone right. above 205 live. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, 205. Do you think Joe Gacy weighs 205 pounds? No. No, same. Do you all think so? Nah. I know he's short. Joe Gacy? He's, he's a chunky man. Yeah, no, he did 205. He's dense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think maybe wrestling's made us forget how, like, 205... You look at, like... Pa, there's no way Pac weighs 205 pounds, for example. No. No, nah, he didn't. No. But Gacy's even less 205. Possibly. But that's what the thing is. Aha, I'm going to beat you for the Cruiserweight title. Is Gacy going to win? I hope he does. Well, Strong's he... got nothing else going on, so he probably will win. I hope Gacy does win. He renames the title. It'll be like Enzo Amore's run. It'll be character-driven Cruiserweight, which I'm not against necessarily. Mm. But when it's Joe Gacy... Oh, like... Enzo's Cruiserweight run was good. Yeah. He had a, char- he had a character strong enough to carry a brand. Well, Pac was on his holidays. Yeah, yeah. yes. I wonder if we ever get the story about oh, that. What, I want to see that. He never does podcasts or interviews, does he? No. Do, do you remember when um, he, Pac lost the title and he came back on a roll a couple of rows later and he hadn't slept? Yeah, it was class. I want to see that Pac back. Mm. Mm. That Pac back. That Pac back. <laughs> He's kind of been that Pac ever since. Yeah. Been in a really bad mood. I read bastard. Not the one looked like the Undertaker though. No, true. He yeah. looked like the Undertaker, didn't he? <laughs> I haven't slept. Rest I've in peace. Peace. <laughs> Wins a match against uh, Ulyssa Leon. Backstage, the grizzled young veterans are scheming while Knight and Waller continue to brawl. They lie to their nana. Wait, it's... I did. So, yeah, what happened here? That's last I... week, yeah. No, the, this no, was they when lied they... again to Nana. They, uh, no, this was they stole someone's phone. Yeah. Or someone's wallet. Or Some fella was walking down the corridor just before The Rock and uh, Grace and Waller brawled into him. <laughs> Poor fella. A double whammy had his wallet taken and then brawled into by two big sweaty men. Well, one large sweaty man and one. And Grayson Waller, he's not big. Is did, he? did they steal Lou's wallet? What did, yeah. they, what did they do again? It's like, I thought it was interesting that you brought the Cockney accent into this week's podcast because they are the artful dodger. And Oliver? Oh. Yeah, Zach Gibson. Consider yourself one of us. Zach Gibson's <laughs> the dodger. He's the leader. Yeah. I'm artful and he's not. Do- oh, no, shut up. Why do you I'm keep doing Scouse accents every week when you can't do one? Imagine Triple H. Oh, H- it's, it's, Sorry, all just, it's all about the spit, isn't it? Really? Imagine Triple H being like Fagan, being like the leader. <laughs> Well, he needs the money now, isn't he? <laughs> Getting the sack. It's, uh, by the way, sorry, it's really rich of me to ask you why you're doing an accent you can't do when I've got about five that All I can't of do them. Yeah, and yes. I don't do them. But uh, it's because I like Gibson. And Fair enough. Ivy uh, Nile, though. Are we talking about that? I don't know where she's, we are. Uh, just, yeah, we, match. yeah right. it was kind of buried in between the... the she was good, though. I liked her doing exercises on a human being. That sounded creepy, didn't it? It did. It, it, it Ooh, was yes. good for her character. <laughs> her doing sit-ups and push-ups Ooh. and so on. Yeah. I'd lie on her back while she does a push-up. I saw someone on Twitter. All right, Jericho. Katie Rick <laughs> hit me with her stick any time she likes, you know? Oh, what does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> I don't work for other people. Oh, Pack and give me a shoot brain buster <laughs> off the top <laughs> rope. Uh, it's all about how you word things on Twitter. <laughs> so if, if, if you said... If you said Katie Reagan, well, oh, she can hit me with her stick whenever she likes, that wouldn't be acceptable. But if you put, hit me with your stick, mommy, then the sad eyes, that would be getting likes of all the woke <laughs> lads on Twitter, wouldn't it? All the woke lads would love me then. All the woke lads. <laughs> yeah. You're one of them. You're the leader of the woke lads on I'm Twitter. I'm the leader of the woke. Ah, you can get away with whatever you want because you're woke. 
You can say mad. Don't turn me into a Joe Gacy type. You can say mad things that I could never say on Twitter. You. What have I said that you can't say? Jimmy Hater. What? I didn't say it on Twitter. I saw it on here and I shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, good point. Sorry. MSK is still traveling. Well, why, why shouldn't you have said it? Yeah, why not? I don't know what I'm saying. Jimmy Hader is fit, right? <laughs> yes. What's happening now? What's going on? She's an amazing wrestler, I agree. She, she is, is very, very good at very good wrestler. wrestler. Very, that's more important. Yeah, it is. She sells with her whole body the entire time. Yes. While being fit. Oh, no, no. <laughs> MSK is still traveling to meet their shaman, but are pulled over for driving. But how fast were we going, officer? 50, oh, 60, what was this? seven miles an hour. I did laugh at was them. Was this not a hit at Rob Van Dam and Sabu? Oh, I thought it was just That's them being stoners. Uh, the police officers say, what's in the bag? But it has to leave to chase a speeding car before they reveal what they have. Weed. What if it wasn't? What if it was like Panda Pops? I don't know where Panda no. Pops came from. Yeah. Contraband. <laughs> oh, no, I, I can't believe it. Like, these development wrestlers were stopped by the police for driving. Uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, I hate these segments, and I can't wait for them to end. Uh, well, that's you, positive, you can, sorry. You can, thank, you can thank Izzy's dad for that. Oh, I'm thanking Izzy's dad. <laughs> How bad is it going to be if they come back and they're going to get booed anyway? Yeah, well, this isn't going to help them get over. Well, I hope yeah, they've he... banned Izzy's dad and his cronies from the arena. Yeah, This is like someone who's never smoked weed before. Like, all right, so write some stoner characters. Or is this one of these things where Sean's like, I know how to write them. And everyone goes, do you? I mean, no, I don't. No, what, what, what's weed? You mean like a plant? I'm uh, not too asked about know. the authenticity of the stoner comedy. Because I'm not no, like not it being authentic. It's just like the insanely unlikable. I don't think they're insanely unlikable. Yeah. Incredibly they? Okay, unlikable. When I used to say on this podcast, I don't like MSK. It wasn't because of Izzy Gate or whatever was yeah. going on. It was because they were unlikable. And yeah. because I'm old and bitter, they and were they're young they were... and vibrant. <laughs> right, right. Great in ring. They were only mildly unlikable because they were trying to do the stuff for the gifts, which a lot of wrestlers do. In fairness, but it felt very forced. Now they're unbelievably. I hope the police was going to stop them oh. and put them in jail. <laughs> I don't find them... For driving on the influence at seven miles an hour. That's disgusting. I think I'm probably in the wrong, but I find the segments annoying, but I don't find them annoying. But clearly... No one could really save it. Kurt Angle, circa 2001, could have saved these bits. No. Positive. Positive bit at NXT. Sorry, I forgot <laughs> my last thing. Uh, Boa cuts a promo saying that Mei Ying has passed on her strength to him. Did she and get once released? he's learned how to control No, it, I don't think she did, but they've abandoned... I remember seeing a news story that they've abandoned again. Yeah, they, they, they announced... Oh, they announced. It was reported that they just given up. Why? What's, what's with WWE and transferring powers from one person to she, another? <laughs> it works so well. <laughs> she literally could have been the shaman for MSK with a yeah. smoke. Yes! Make that weed... That would have Why been not? the story. Then they could have been like her brood. <laughs> oh, that would have been all right. Yes. Her brood. But then Boa can get a bit jealous because he nice. was there first. Yeah. There's so many ways it can go down. Yeah. Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen beat the Grizzled Young oh, Veterans. Oh, the Grizzled Young Vets have fallen so... They have fallen so... Well, <laughs> While LA Knight and Grayson Waller still continue to brawl backstage, uh, being positive... They had their letters written on their shirts, which means Brooks Jensen had a big shirt that said BJ on it. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's his name, Brooks Jensen. Blowjobs. Tell you what, there was a Barney the Dinosaur video I had when I was a kid. Where they go? Where on, is this going? They go on like a pirate adventure. And um, it wasn't like a porn parody that it got mixed up with the real VHS or anything. That would have been traumatizing. And Barney's there and the green one. The girl dinosaur, who was his pal. What's she called again? She had a blankie. I know who you mean. Just... And then, Deborah, Deborah, and then Deborah, they were like, yeah. oh, and here's the third member of our crew for this episode. It's bloody BJ. <laughs> and BJ comes in. There's a yellow dinosaur with like a backwards baseball cap. Like, What's up, dudes? Yeah. And then got older and thought, why did they call him BJ? It's a name to some people. PJ Penn. Yes, true. Wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't make any jokes about his name. Yeah. To his face. Maybe it's more <laughs> of an American thing, because I don't know many people in England who get called after their initials or whatever. I knew a TJ at school. I knew a KJ. DP. That was more of a nickname, though. <laughs> His name was Dan. Carmelo Hayes Big defends Dan the North American Dan title in a true threat match with Gargano and Pete Dunne. By the way, Hayes, Hayes promo early on the show. Yes. Oh, that's a positive. Smash it. He's great. Saying, that's right, I slapped my chest like the giant sheet getting hyped up. Because <laughs> Pete Dunne did his promo and goes, I'm going to get you, lad. And then he, Hayes goes, wait a minute, how are we the same age and I've accomplished more in five months than you have your entire run in NXT? You've never won a title. Oh. Plus, how are we the same age? You look 40. 
<laughs> hey, Pete Dunn was the <laughs> it, it was the UK champion, man. If anything, oh, yeah, Pete Dunn looks like a teenager to me. Yeah, with the beard and you know the zooming shots, and everything. He's still a kid, isn't he? Yeah, he's still a young little lad, isn't he? Yeah. He's a little <laughs> lad. <laughs> little lad <laughs> loves berries and cream. Uh, <laughs> oh, don't you dare! I but, like that um, meme. But then, yeah, just he's just I took him apart. Oh, that was fantastic. Dunn is about to win, but Tony D'Angelo pulls him out the ring. Almost symbolic of like the 2.0 gimmicks. So what I noticed was last gimmicks. week or the week before, Pete Dunn randomly like backstage slagged off Tony D'Angelo in a promo and like Tony's crap. Oh, and I God. thought, why has he done that? Like, where's this leading? He was good friends with Mark. Oh, the producer, oh. yeah. So then... Yeah. I've got to fill in the blanks. I've worked out, I've realised that... would be great if that's it. I've realised that this this whole show, because they need to cobble together some War Games teams in the men's division at least, yeah. so many little threads that didn't seem to make sense have just happened yeah. together in this main segment. It was a mess. Natural. It was a bit of a mess. Like Shoehorned yeah. games. Yes. Right. Forced games. Top dollar. Top dollar. Brap. <laughs> Ruined it. <laughs> Hayes prepares to crush Gargano's hand in a steel chair. But Champa arrives <gasps> to save the day. They, they used to be friends. The two sides face off, and Bron Breaker screams. War games, sparking a big brawl to end the show. Oh, where's, Regal? Where's, where's Regal? Where's Regal? Just where caught him Regal? Like, like, yeah. Well, if the Rock's not showing up, I'm bloody well not. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine putting that face like. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm terribly busy. Oh, guys, I'm my sock drawer. Do you think Regal's just been told that he doesn't fit the tone of the new, because he's good, <laughs> of the new NXT? He can oh, fit do you that think tone. They, Bloody hell. Do you think they said, yeah, but you're going to have to come up with a gimmick? <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. That can be summed up with one word. He's like, oh. Yeah. British. No, no, that, it's, that doesn't work anymore. We've got an entire division. Yeah. So, I've got nothing then. Posh. Lizard. Ooh, Lizard. matron. Oh, it's two words. <laughs> Lizard. <laughs> he's got lizards, no, buddy. <laughs> come up. Bo Dallas going, I was right. <laughs> uh, it was interesting, though, as I was saying earlier, NXT 2.0 finished with an NXT 1.0 type match. Yes. So they can't get away yeah. from it, can they? I think I bitched a lot of times about, oh, war games, Undisputed Era, getting ready to feud with some lads. And now they've gone, it's like, oh, they don't have any replacement because these things happen this one point in the year rather than naturally. So it's like, is it just going to be a bunch of lads? Yes, it is. I do like the concept of like, it's like new blood rising, isn't it? The new blood. Oh, if they do 1.0 versus 2.0, yeah. That's a nice concept, but it's just the way it's come together. It's just yeah. a bit like... Is it actually 1.0 versus 2.0? I mean, oh, yeah. I mean the, surely the new blood have got to win. You'd assume but, so, but otherwise what's the point in NXT 2.0? All the 1.0 are leaving in a if, month's time. If the old team win... It's going to be the funniest result I can think of. Who is it? Champa Gargano done. It's, right. Okay, wait for it. It's Champa Gargano done, right? I can get that. LA Knight. LA Knight. LA Knight, the pillar of NXT. At the very <laughs> end. <laughs> the yeah, very why, end. Yeah. Why? The other three, yes. LA Knight, I see him as new school. But, nah. but, he's, but he's old. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's new school. <laughs> new school, in LA Knight. He is the guy who got held back several years because he was too busy chattering at the back of the class yeah that missed right. out on his studies yeah he's an Adam Sandler come to life ah uh, <laughs> nice yeah the new team is hang on <laughs> nice. Grayson Waller Bron Breaker yeah he had forgotten me <laughs> Cameron uh, Carmelo Hayes and is it not uh, big big tricks no it's not trick magic tricks no it's it's another Tony? one Tony Tony oh, Tony, yeah, Tony D'Angelo yeah I think they're killed now they're going to have to win somehow. They need to oh, win. Tony LA Knight's nice, nice taking the some wacky for. stuff with like, they're about to win and then Tony... Oh, what could happen? Slap can't have anyone killed. <laughs> Use a fish as a weapon. <laughs> it's a Sicilian message me crying my eyes off. That's not what happens in The Godfather. She's like, would you like a cheese sandwich? <laughs> LA Knight's like, I don't eat carbs. Forces <laughs> one down and just a reaction happens. Yes. Tony D'Angelo pins for the win. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that happens well in the Godfather. Yeah, that's that, that's literally it. Why is he showing a fish? Because he killed him with a fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's got. Oh, can't, yeah, God uh, knows what's going on. To be like. honest, I couldn't give a top. Like to be fair, there's two matches on that card there with the hair versus hair. Yeah, and this one here, the the main brother, well, presumably the main event. That it, that's intriguing. That because 2.0 have to win. Mm. It's NXT 2.0. Yeah, Matthew. yeah, yeah. 2.0 have to win. Otherwise, all those positives I wrote down. Yeah, you're right. I'm, what's I'm, the point in watching if, if 1.0 wins? If the yeah. old team wins, I'm never going to get over it. It's going to be the funniest result it's gonna of the year. It's going to be funny. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, but look, look, I'm, I'm woke, so I'm going to be looking. To this. <laughs> so I'll be happy and smiling about it, all right? Uh, no, AW, Matthew, I'm sorry. I'm it, no, that's yeah, funny. AW Dynamite. 
CM Punk opens the show and is immediately interrupted by MJF. Mm. MJF says he's always admired Punk, even the fact that he's straight edge, although he ironically looks like a meth addict. <laughs> he says he's going to finish Punk like his UFC career. <laughs> Punk says that's that MJF not a, that's stands not for... a good diss out of all of them. Your UFC career ended. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Punk says MGF stands for My Jealous Fan. <laughs> and that he's just a less famous Miz. That got a, that got a huge... Crowd that got really a huge liked that. Yeah, yeah. MGF says that Punk has gone soft since returning and that he might as well be preaching hustle, loyalty, and respect. Oh. Uh, Punk tells MGF he talks too much. You and must have he, been delighted. On my birthday as well. Oh, oh wow. Thanks, Punk. And that he only be... How only be the you are. Yeah. <laughs> the world's, world revolves around you, doesn't it, Matthew? Top dollar. I'd have been buzzing. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> if we're gonna have like a podcast cut, it's just all the times you say top dollar. <laughs> um, be the man in AEW if he sticks around long enough for Tony Khan to have a daughter he can marry. Oh, a shot hey. to Larry Zabisco there for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to punch MJF in his little needle dick. That bit was a bit more like just on the nose than Punk usually. Yeah, speaking of Adam Sandler, <laughs> needle dick, needle dick, needle dick. MJF gets ready to fight, but rolls out the ring instead. Punk has a Long match with QT Marshall oh and only QT just Marshall. wins. QT Marshall dominates. <laughs> this <laughs> makes no sense. They overestimate what QT Marshall is so much. No one gives a oh, hoot about QT Marshall, do they? Yeah, but they weren't going to do anything after that. It was like not wrestling. The crowd were going mental after that promo. Just have him do one move and finish it and go, oh, you're a bit louder, then bugger off. No. Just took the wind out the sails completely, didn't it? We can't bury QT Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> So great. No, but though this was the promo battle people have been waiting for. Oh, yeah. Crowd were so into it, doing yeah. the oh after everything. I was worried for MJF's oh, safety oh. <laughs> after that Miz line. But I was very happy for MJF when he came back with that hustle loyalty respect stuff. It took a while to get there, but when he got there, I was like, yeah. he, he came back, he clawed it back. So it was good. Yeah. 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 I wonder if the Miz is happy or annoyed. I'd be buzzing, I think. If I was well, you'd be buzzing, wouldn't you? I'd be happy waking up every day being the Miz. Well, yeah. Don't care about what AW Dynamite Looking says. Looking over the you. bed to see Maurice. <laughs> <laughs> Maurice wakes up every day going, I have to wake up and see the Miz. <laughs> The oh, Miz la, la. Is, hey, the Miz is a good-looking man. Oh, he is. That's oh, what I mean. Of course he is. Man. Oh, yes. They're gorgeous. both lucky to be with each other. So, and it also, we all know... And they've got a wonderful band ever, together. <laughs> yes. If Miz <laughs> ever <laughs> left WWE when AEW died, mate, they'd be all out of room. They'd love it if Miz left. The Miz is fantastic, The Miz is brilliant. They do. The Miz has been doing what he does for years. He's mint. And no one does it better. The he Miz used to mint. be... But now he's all right walking... I couldn't say the word because it's a swear. He used to be... But now he's all right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Walking, walking in, in the Miz Wonderland. Yeah. There's only Eddie Kingston cuts a backstage promo aimed at Den... Den... Daniel Garcia, but it's interrupted by Garcia in 2.0. No, he wasn't cut a backstage promo. He was eating his little cake. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. He was eating. Yeah, his little cake. <laughs> he was eating his little cake, and they're like, "Yo, I'm just gonna eat this cake." And they went, "Hey, it's us." He goes, "I just want to eat my food." Oh, all right, do you? Aha! And they threw stuff in his eyes. And he has to be held back, deliberately pushing over the table with that poor cake so no one else can eat it afterwards. I like it. <laughs> uh, later, they also interrupt the Jericho promo. He tells them Eddie Kingston's going to break into their homes and kick their turkey asses. He then buries his opponents like he's done every year since... You've got uh, a square Maggie. head. Don't... Doesn't he? Chicago! To be, fair, to be fair, you've just done that about Von Wagner. Yeah. So you and Chris Jericho are one of the same Oh, movie. no, I... I'm a woke Jericho. Look at the size of his forehead. Ooh. Yeah. Massive. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of someone who's got a big <laughs> forehead in a different way, mine's yeah, not, doesn't stick out. But go on. Mine's long, not Ridge, Ridge Holland. Yeah. Uh, was that oh, it? Oh, 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 no, I, I was Sorry. trying. No, I, I abandoned my point because I realised that it wasn't really going anywhere. So, hey, look, Von, Von Wagner is is he's, he's the difference maker for NXT. Look, he's got anyway. Billy and Colin <laughs> Gunn beat Bear Country. Sting interrupts their celebration, so Austin Gunn tries to cut him off on the ramp. But is absolutely flattened by oh, an onrushing Darby Allen. Bloody hell. Who must have read his past tweet. The Gun Club <laughs> retreat. Uh, backstage, Adam Cole and Bobby Fish argue with the best friends or who the real best friends are. Now, the best friends are better best friends than Adam Cole and Bobby Fish, first of all. Oh, because yeah. as Ross has said, Adam Cole keeps abandoning Bobby Fish. But yeah. the, if I... This is a bit of a bake-off situation. Ross is Paul Hollywood and I'm Prue. Ross has the golden handshake, which is move of the week, whereas I don't have that. But if I did, which is what Prue said on the semi-finals of Bake Off, if I did have the golden handshake move of the week, my move of the week would have gone to Darby Allen's flying shoulder 
out the entranceway because it was brilliant. I was like Jonah Lamu. Yes, wow, Smacked what a, him a, a 90s rugby reference. Oh, New there. Zealand, yeah. Jonah wow. Lomu. Yeah, yeah. R.I.P. He's on all the. Is he dead? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Died a while ago. Oh, he sorry, had that, um, that illness that he just basically kept quiet because he you know, right. what, a, what an icon he was to so many people. So he didn't want people oh. to see him weak, which oh. is heartbreaking. He was on all of the rugby posters in my school. Likewise, he was how we got taught about um, force in physics. Ah. because he was got like you know force with no speed speed, times. speed speed x mass yeah and he'd demonstrate because he's an example played Jonah Lamu and people try to stop him but as you can see class thank you Mr. Dunley as you can see Jonah Lamu Dunley I, I, I didn't name him um, <laughs> interesting name um, <laughs> was running and the other players don't have enough force so they bounce off him <laughs> I'm like oh my god <laughs> look at the size of him yeah he's crazy yeah and fast yeah, he should have been a wrestler. I'm That's glad a he, missed oh, opportunity. Imagine I'm glad that. he didn't tarnish his legacy. With <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> anyway, back to the, what we're talking about. <laughs> Team Taz. Oh, oh yes. I can't believe Team this. Taz. Sit down with Dundee Martin, and we said, I think I said, yeah, I'll bring this up because I'm got a low batting average this week of predictions. But oh, wouldn't it be great if Dundee Martin actually signed. To be fair, and then he's like, yeah, we'll sit down. Near rush. He won't do that. It, wait, what are you doing? I joined Team Taz. I was you so guys wrong. all look mint. He went, yay! I was so wrong. I thought Leo was going to join Team Taz and double cross Dante. Dante has signed away his future. I can't believe he's done it. Team Taz are rubbish. <laughs> no, they're not. Yes, they Why are. would you say that? Let's look at things in the cave. The libel law is stringent in this country. In the cave fave there, Matthew. Not in just the, oh, look at Hook, isn't he lovely? With his bag of crisps. <laughs> 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 They I are mean, rubbish. That's pretty much it. And the wrestling, when it comes to the wrestling part, they are terrible. <laughs> Not TNT champion, which isn't recognised. No. That's FTW champion. FTW champion, which isn't recognised by AEW. The belt they had to bring in so they can give themselves one. <laughs> They're rubbish. What's he doing? Unless he changed. Unless this is the catalyst for Team Taz becoming good. And not, I'll get here in six weeks, Sting. That was a long Honest, time ago. Honestly, we'll, we'll, like... we'll walk down the ramp one day. <laughs> 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 we don't talk about that. It's we totally call those the Brian Cage days. It's intriguing to see where it'll go, though. Dante Martin would have... <laughs> who is more ineffectual? <laughs> Jumped out of the Raptors game, Frankenstein. In kayfabe, who's more ineffectual, ineffective? The Team Taz or the Hardy Family Office? Oh, that's a tough one, that. Hardy Family Office has got oh. more numbers. They never, ever win, though, do they? Ever. I, I don't know. Uh, Matt no, they Hardy won, won, few... him, he won him last week. That's why yeah. I was thinking this. Oh, they, yeah. So maybe it's the HFO now. Maybe Team Taz are lower on the pecking order. Team Taz are bottom. They're they're Ooh. factory level. No. Are they? No, they're not factory <laughs> level. No, the factory, nightmare factory. Factory level sounds both like what you mean in, which is the AW thing, but it also sounds like a dodgy like product Working in a shop. Class, like, yeah. oh, that's factory level. That. <laughs> like, I want to say Team Taz, but I know in my heart that they're entertaining, but they haven't got the wins to back it up. Oh. So yeah, you're right, Hardy. But this is the shot in the arm they need. Yeah. This is the signing they need, the centre forward. I think he's infiltrating them. No. Like when Kazarian no, joined the Bullet no. Club. <laughs> Should he be the Taz killer? The Elite Hunter? Sorry, the Elite Hunter, Frankie Kazarian. <laughs> he, she's been very quiet since Hangman beat Kenny Omega. Is he jealous that Hangman's hunted the Elite down <laughs> successfully? He's not been involved, has he? He's no. just left it all over the jungle. Boy, Daniels has gone Christian. over to... Where's Daniels at the minute? New Japan Pro New Wrestling. Japan, yeah. American New Japan. Go on, Chris. American New Japan, what? Yeah, New, New Japan, Japan in America. Strong. Yeah, New Japan Strong. Oh, right. Look at me knowing everything about New Japan. I'm, I'm, I'm a weebo. Have you Weeb. seen that they're doing... Weeb. I should no, put no, in the news. Uh, They're doing the three-day Wrestle Kingdom thing. The third day yeah. is going to be them so, taking on Noah. And the quotes from the lads to build up this hype. Oh, is KG Mudo wrestling for now? Oh, Okada's, I didn't even know that. Yeah. And Okada going, well, in fairness, though, Olympic athletes don't really follow what amateurs are doing. Whoa. 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 Now, <laughs> I'm... This goes to Mudo. You're just a just a, more, a less famous Miz. <laughs> oh. I'm devastated that this has happened because oh, yeah. there's already two days of Wrestle Kingdom before this, and then there's going to be this joint show a few days after. Me and Sam are covering all of them on Twitch. Now, uh -huh. this means that... Office Weeb Sam has tried to talk to me about Noah for the past week straight. Has he? Yeah. And now that I no longer do wrestlers of the week, I don't know nor care about Noah and what's going on there. But I'm going to have to for the next month. Oh. 
once that show is over and Kia Mia or whoever has fl- had the last match, then I'll be free of Noah forever. And I know that Keno's in Noah and not Dragon Gate, right? Twitter, right? Yeah, you heard him, Twitter. <laughs> you can need those glasses with your eyes drawn on so you can just fall asleep. <laughs> Sam, <laughs> Sam I, talked to himself for three I, hours. I still get called out sometimes by these weird puro lads. One of them tagged me a, a few months ago now and put just, I jack the jobber, have sex challenge. It's implying that I don't. I know. Is that him asking you on? on? No, no, he was implying that I don't. And then three of the oh. other ones liked it and they were all called like, LA Puro Boy 96. I was like, oh, white lads <laughs> who love Japanese wrestling more than anything else. I'll mute them. Virgins. Straight away. I absolutely. Although I was because I was tagged in the Have Sex Challenge. But yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, it's not got to me or anything. It's no, of course not. No. Thunder Rosa beats We're Jamie. We're going to an arcade for Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Thunder Rosa beats Jamie Hayden in the Fwah! DBS <laughs> tournament. <laughs> After being hit with an so accidental fit. super game from Britt Baker, <laughs> Hayden storms off without Britt. Ooh. Afterwards, Tony Schiavone shows Britt footage of Rio never being eliminated from the Battle Royal at All Out. Mm. Good what? God, yes. Wait I'm a minute. glad they've Wait tied, they've tied up around. this loose end. Yeah. Yeah, you did it. Now tell us why Rio shoved Yuka Sakazaki at Fighter <laughs> Fest 2019. <laughs> oh, <God. Yeah. laughs> and uh, this means that Rio gets a shot with Britt on Rampage. And if she wins, she gets a title shot. Uh, ruining Thanksgiving. Ruining th- Oh, ruining Brit's Thanksgiving. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she said Tony had ruined Halloween as well, and now Thanksgiving too. Why did he ruin Halloween? I can't remember. I, I forgot what happened. Yeah. He did something. <laughs> but it is nice because even when that happens, Tony Schiavone on commentary whenever Brit's involved is still defends her. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, this match was very good. <laughs> I it saw was. some fan art online of Brit sat on Tony's knee while Adam Cole... Dressed as Santa Claus. Yes. My God. It was weird. Richard, can you go on no, Britt Baker's no, no, Twitter no, account no, and find no, out? No, no, no. Clo- they were clo- both clothes. Both clo- Britt Baker's. Oh, she retweeted. <laughs> yeah, that's how I saw it. Um, but yeah, this match was good. I don't know what to say here. Yep. Shock, well, of course, well, it was, well, it was Rick Knox missing all of the action. Oh, oh that Rick I'm Knox. Excited that, I'm excited to see where the Jamie Hayde attention goes because she's going to possibly like leave Britain and stuff. She so doesn't need them. She doesn't? She doesn't need them. Where is it? You'll see it when you get there. Come on. You'll see uh, it when you get if there. You ever get there. Oh, of course, yes. Um, Britt Baker is also one of the four pillars. Wait, or was it Tony Schiavone so. who yes, it? Punk's it. Maybe oh. it was Tony. How far back are we in the timeline here? The 20th of November, when was that? Six days ago. Richard, it was definitely it Tony Schiavone. <laughs> it was Tony Schiavone who retweeted Richard. Oh, no. I've told well, you the wrong no, Twitter account, Richard. Away, Just get in that top corner, Richard. There we go. Tony Schiavone. What's up, Tony Sh- Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Here it is. Come We're on. on the right Twitter oh, account. Oh, dog. Tony's dog. It's a picture you're looking for, oh, Santa Claus. You'll not be able to miss it. This he is didn't retweet it either, did he? Podcasting. Oh, he did. Someone did, because I saw it. it. Someone did. Someone retweeted it. Someone Has he unretweeted it? How far back are we now? 12th of November. November. <laughs> <laughs> he retweeted Cult Oh, look there. Look, just Ooh. before. What do you read? Scroll down one. Oh. Two. There we go. There we are. Tony Schiavone, what happened when? Exclusive news from cultaholic.com. So it's not Who the hell that. retweeted that then? It's just someone you follow, probably. I saw it yesterday. Yeah. Probably just one of the lads in the office. Have you both yeah, trembled? Yeah. No, it no, was no, true. It was, real. it was so creepy. But it was funny. It was funny as so. well. A funny creepy, because that exists. Funny creepy. That exists. There we go. Brian Danielson beats Colt Cabana in his hometown, even knocking his tooth out. Was it just the Was caps? it real? Don't know. I couldn't tell. Was it, was it real? If know. not, what a touch to the story. Yeah. yeah. Danielson brags on the mic afterwards, because he has, this is part of the storyline where he's going to be the, all the Dark Order, preferably in their hometowns. Mm. Just beats the hell out of Colt. Uh, calls the fans fickle what? afterwards. Oh. He's done that before, hasn't he? Oh. Discovered by Hangman Page. Hangman says he's ready to give Brian a title shot tonight, but Brian goes, oh, of course you do that after I've just had a match. Got a point. He does have a point. Uh, Brian slaps Hangman who attacks, but Brian avoids the bookshot lariat and sods off. Yep, loving this Brian Danielson run. Yes. Uh, I, the stuff he does on the map. Oh, he's so good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so great. So good. The most important thing is, though, the streak lives on. The streak. Every single match he's had recently, his tits have been red. <laughs> and this match continued the streak. Every single match you'll have from here on out. Maybe will it come to an end against Alan Angels. Is that who's wrestling next? Alan, Alex Reynolds. Oh. It'll get red against John Silver. I've got all the faith in John. Mm. I can't wait for the Meat Man versus yeah. Brian Danielson. Okay, the Not Meat Man. 
Oh, yeah. The Meat Man versus the Vegan. Oh, yeah. There's your, there's your poster. Brian's going to hate him. Battle yeah. of Water Order at Greg's. <laughs> this Christmas festival. Oh, I had a Greg's this morning. Like, yeah. I had a Greg's. What did I get? this morning? I, uh, Sorry, go on. No, go on. No, you we'll go on. Well, I, I, had a, I had a sausage sandwich with ketchup and a chocolate muffin. Mm, for your breakfast, bit of indigestion for Ooh. breakfast. Nothing like. Yeah, <laughs> I was, I was, I've been waking up very early this week. Have you? My body clock hasn't recovered from Survivor Series. Ross, what did you have? I had a full-on Tesco meal deal. All right, for breakfast. Like what? At eight a.m. this morning, <laughs> I had a chicken and bacon sandwich, oh. and I had a packet of prawn cocktail crisps at eight a.m. this morning. Right now, so just the length of this podcast. You'll feel like it's about five p.m. now. Yeah, I feel. I'm one of them. It feels horrible. Bless you. Yeah, I've had nothing. Oh, Matthew. Yeah. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, Get to me after this. I will. Malachi Black and Andrade team up with FTR to face Cody Pack and the Lucha Brothers. Arn and Tully almost fight at one point, but end up taking out Andrade's assistant, Jose. It's not mentioned here. Cody throws his big old weightlifting <laughs> belt in the crowd. Crowd scramble. And throw it back, nearly hitting poor Aubrey in the process. So the argument between me and Tom's gone on for so long now, I don't know whose point this proves. I've forgotten who's in the right now. Yeah. I wouldn't say he's officially heel. I say there's just little hints of healness. Crumbs. In what he does, yeah. Morsels. Him going, I don't know why people are booing me, and then still having the overblown entrances yes. with the three introductions. Um, it's so great. I can't just keep on carrying I don't, I don't get it. Giant tattoo here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More attacks on physical appearances from Matthew in this part. Oh. <laughs> what a theme this has been. Oh. Can John Silver even reach Brian Danielson's chair? <laughs> Oh, you did hear it. The bad oh, guys yes, eventually yeah. get the win when Black hits back with the mist, allowing Andrade to hit the Amlock DDT for the win. A very hot match. Yes. Lots of action. Yes. Very enjoyable. Tully and Arn. Yeah. Yes. Busting brains. Sort of. Well. <laughs> Looking like they could still exactly bust brains, right. yeah. Arn looks hard. Looks so hard yeah. with his clock eye. I loved how everyone in the match had their moment, like, you know, Malachi Black was hitting massive knees on Ray Phoenix and Ray Phoenix was just doing well, he was just taking the piss, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. <laughs> That's what he does, frankly. But Cody couldn't have his moment, which made me laugh. Because <laughs> um, I, I saw a Reddit thread this week saying, Oh, I feel sorry for Cody Rhodes and like wondering why people boom. And it's it's his presentation in a company where he's an E V P. Mm-hmm. That's the issue for me. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is for other people, but it's the overblown everything. It's the multiple matches where he got injured and then went to the back and then came back and won. It's the repetitive nature of that. <laughs> Here's Cody. He's back. He's recovered. Crowd. Boom. It's the, the, oh, outdated, so the outdated so feud with Anthony Agogo, which mm. was bollocks from start to finish. Yep. It's, it's the presentation in his company, basically. But they're turning it around. Slowly. By leading into it. They do know what they're doing, I think, now. Now they I th- do. I think there was a period of time where they didn't. Yes. And Cody was always at the forefront of that because he's an EVP. So that's the issue. So I don't feel sorry for him. But, <laughs> yeah, right? But also, I, that's reminded me, and I agree totally with your point fully, it's just reminded me of one of the worst bits, which was in the ladder match when he got injured and then sold in view of the tunnel yeah. for the whole match. Even hard cancer. Taking attention away from... Was that deliberate? Or Not, do you think... It didn't work because the crowd, like I said, just booed him when he came back. Was it meant to be like a, like a behind the curtain? Like, oh, he might really be injured because you can still see him. Or yeah. was it like an accident? It was bad. <laughs> the Shaq match, no selling his power bomb. Oh, I like I the Shaq match. Just, just stuff like that. You Why? Know. Yeah. Power bomb from Shaq. My God. That... Oh, he's up. I like the Shaq match. He no did him like freaking Hogan and Vader. When Cody slammed Shaq through that table, well, not slammed him. He didn't pick up Pushed Shaq. Pushed him. <laughs> Pushed him through the table. Yeah. That was and a good moment. Causing Shaq to disappear from reality. Shaq is All right, if still... I had Riho answered, could you say, why, why did Shaq teleport? Oh, he'll be back. He will. Maybe Cody did a diss track we all missed. <laughs> so ruthless that Shaq couldn't come back. Yeah. <sighs> that was <laughs> the week of wrestling. Lots of wrestling. You're all beautiful. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Forgot about that bit. Let's have a run in our mail bags. <laughs> ah, mm. a little look in. The mail bag. Oh, a little look. Number one. Hey, lads. It's me, it's me, it's the man that shagged during the podcast and had a baby. <laughs> Congratulations. Beautiful. Rich, I know exactly who this is. I hope you got the pictures I sent you yesterday out of context, Richard, on Slack. The look on your face says you haven't. <laughs> That's fine. It's a, long, it's, it's a long email. You can get it ready while I do this. I finally have the time to email you guys. and just want to say how you three have been great and congrats on hitting the 200 mark. 
It was a little touch and go in the beginning. Oof. Oh, we know. And look at you guys now. Be Thank it you. Ross with his drip so great, it makes Niagara Falls look like a leaky faucet. <laughs> uh, Top dollar. <laughs> t- t- 10 points if you know where it's from. Top dollar, I guess. Yeah. I'll actually know that one. It's not top dollar. Sorry, Paul. No. Uh, Matthew with his infectious laugh and ribs, and Jack with his dot, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, Ooh. the wife is still a little peeved about our son not getting in the Hall of Fame. Oh, that's right. I can't. Good about that. I have been told to show him, Richard or whoever behind the camera is editing, show the picture on the screen that it's... I have attached to the email to the Cultaholic Universe and ask for a spot in the polls on Patreon this week. And hopefully the description will be detailed, unlike last time. Let's have a look. Well, People are looking at it now in the post edit. I, th- I thought that's what he meant there for the post edit. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can show you the baby child if you want to see it now. Just well, well it's, not for our, uh, it's not for our benefit. It's for... I thought you wanted to see it personally. No, it's because he's doing a pledge here. He's hoping that people can get see the baby and go, oh, baby. And then... Uh, Should have been in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I need to see that. <laughs> oh. oh. For God's sake. Yeah, the baby should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> should, yeah. Oh. oh. Yeah, okay, yeah, fine. Please, yeah. voters, I don't want to be... Oh, okay, that's enough. I don't want to be nagged yeah, the rest the of his childhood about this. What Help a happy a... baby. Yeah. Help a fellow member of this great channel out. Now on to my question. Actually, no, before we do that, then, chill. can we add the baby to the floor? It's been in. On the, post edit. It's in. Post edit. Fantastic. Thing, yeah. Great. That's why I thought you wanted to see it personally. Because that's been taken care of. Yet you still keep yapping on about it. Oh. <laughs> kayfabe, kayfabe. <laughs> well, now it comes to who is the greatest wrestler of all time. Lots and lots of names are shown that are thrown around, like Michaels, Rock, Warrior, the other blonde Wait. guy from the 80s that don't want to drop the belt. But we never get a definitive answer on Warrior. who it is. So my question to you, lads, is what Premier League club is going all the way and winning the Premier League? Oh, Thanks gosh. to the laughs and the vigour to keep it spicy in the bedroom. Devil Moroku. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you Devil Moroku. For people who don't follow the law of the podcast, L-O-R-E, um, Devil Moroku famously like, messaged me on Twitch when I was doing that and say, uh, yeah, just so you guys know, um, you were you're on the background when my child was conceived. <laughs> And even detailed, like, how it gets set up because they both work long hours. Um, so, um, uh, you know, put the podcast on, it was able to, you know. And what a happy baby. So Yeah, no wonder the baby's so happy. I don't know. Chuckling away at our japes. What's going to happen yeah. with the Christmas so party? Then, the baby so then thing? I went, that's amazing, the story. This is so great. It didn't win the Hall of Fame. This is no. because I used to, well, used to post these things on, oh, on the Patreon. Screen's gone off. Screen's gone off. Just need to turn it back on. Oh, um right. You supposed to see things on the po- on the Patreon, thinking the people on the Patreon yes. had seen the podcast and therefore yes. would know what the, the the things were about. It's a hard lesson to learn, but it turns out that's not the case. So yes, descriptive things have been a thing since this incident. Yeah. So sorry once again, Devil Morocco and partner and baby. Yeah. So what are we going to use to describe this? The fourth vote. Please vote for this. The cute baby you saw during the <laughs> mailbag segment on this week's podcast. If you haven't seen it. <laughs> Yeah, that's watch it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, beautifully said. So, um, uh, Man City, I think, will still do it. So Chelsea have got off to a great start of the season, but I think City will. I fancy them. Chelsea, mate. fair enough. I reckon Newcastle United, now that they've got the pull behind them, can just buy it like Ted DiBiase. Bottom of the league, FFP as well. We're not going to win it for a fair few years. Amanda Stavely says five to ten. I think it'll be ten to fifteen because yeah. we're going down this season as well. Get relegated. And, and Sunderland, in response, have decided that our form has disappeared, which I think is because we don't want to have a derby next year if both teams are in the championship, so we're not going to get promoted. So yeah. I think we've played a blinder there, to be honest. I don't want a derby next year. Not against these lot. Oh, use lot. Use you, lot. Use Do lot you support now. Newcastle as well, Richard, sort of, nominally? Oh, yeah, OK. Yeah, it's Newcastle Eagles, doesn't he? Eagles. Yeah. Let's go, Eagles. Let's go. Steady with that hand. Defence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, defense. Yeah, I want to watch an Eagles match. Have you heard? I've actually played year. ball once. Did you see our intro? Oh, it was fantastic. It was Ross's creative brain that came up with that. I watched the elite and copied them. Aye, <laughs> but we copied them well. You're gonna steal, steal from the best. I uh, showed my girlfriend our intro to show off how funny we were. She doesn't find me funny. I was like, look at me at work being funny. It's it, it's so great and seeing you of your last because. <sighs> Because she doesn't care about any of the stuff. She's like a wrestling this. fan, you know. Yeah, but she's not a podcast fan. Kay- Kayla started watching this again. You know, me, she? me girlfriend slash Hello. man. 
But she puts it on when she goes to bed at night and falls asleep. <laughs> I can't say. <laughs> anyway, better night nurse. She's one of them. I showed her it and I said, look, it's us. And then Fraser's doing this voiceover like, and now the cultaholic toon squad. And she was like, I was like, that's Fraser, you know? And she was genuinely shocked. I thought it was quite obvious that it oh, was yeah. Fraser. But she was like, no way. She met him. She was totally different to his voice. So I, I got a new respect for Fraser's impression ability. Impressionability. Impressionability. Like that well. One day we'll be half as good as him there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, thank you, Devil. Yeah, thank you, Devil. Thank you, Devil. Hi, hi, lads. I would just like to start off this mailbag question by thanking you all for the tremendous work you've done over the years. Cultaholic has been a staple of my watch time, whether it be listening to podcasts while competing video games or traveling to work and back with you guys along for the ride. Mm. Thank you for all that you do in providing opinions, news, and takes that all of us are able to interact with and enjoy. Which brings me to this one. As a long-time wrestling fan and as someone who's only recently gotten all of his housemates hooked on wrestling as well, I would like to share with you my thoughts on NXT 2.0. <laughs> the rush of new characters in the first few weeks were particularly enjoyable. Showing out the TV of my housemates and explaining gimmicks in just one word. Yeah. For a new fan, I would argue the fresh coat of paint and, a, and new characters allow for a sense of integration. Feeling as though you're part of this new brand and can follow along. Okay. Chart your favorites and become invested in storylines with fresh vigor like many of us did with the rise of NXT 1.0. Yeah. For someone like me, I would also argue that NXT 2.0 has provided a constant sense of intrigue on a week-to-week basis. Oh, okay. And with the likes of Bron Breaker genuinely poised to take the title at times, Carmelo Hayes' fast rise, and the likes of Toxic Attraction and Diamond Mine breathing life into lacking WWE stable ranks, new champions and storyline directions seem more possible on weekly programming, and the chaos simply works for me. Not trying to uh, disvalue your guys' opinion at all. I just thought you might be genuinely interested in what a solid fan of NXT 2.0 might have to say. I can totally see the other side of the tracks as well. With that said, a question for you. If you guys could have picked the five new champions heading into NXT 2.0, who would have carried your brand forward? Okay, so... Tell you what, that's a valid and well-expressed alternative point of view, which I don't necessarily agree with, but I respect. No one can ever call us shills again. <laughs> yeah. This is a balanced podcast. Yeah. Where all opinions can be heard. That's right. Some it, ignored. <laughs> some yeah. valued. It, it's a balanced <laughs> podcast, so there's, there's good opinions and sometimes there's bad opinions. We're balanced. So it's nice, though, to be reminded, it's always somebody's first time watching wrestling. They have a good show or a bad show. Sometimes that's, the, that's that one time someone goes, ah, what the hell, I'll watch this. And I guess if you are not knee-deep in NXT law at that point it being restarted and we oh okay cool i can get onto this they're not like oh remember three years ago when this person did no no this this person's a mobster uh, yeah that's the gimmick that's the background mm-hmm. it is easy to get into i'll give them that yeah <laughs> that's the positive is it but no sorry no it's just laughing because we can hear someone we can hear the, uh, you oh. can't hear it on the mics but we can hear a loud stream of piss at the minute yeah why wouldn't you weigh Deep. On the, why wouldn't you weigh on the side of the bull you aim for the water no, but if, if I know that it could be heard, I'll aim, uh, I'll aim for the, If it's like nighttime, I'll aim for the side. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we just oh, heard okay. the most disgusting second dribble. We finished the main body of the piss, and there was a little... <laughs> oh. Piss time with Cold Arctic Wrestling, coming soon to Twitch. <laughs> that's the top, that's the top, that's the top. <laughs> we'll have to try and like... Uh, Capture this one I guess time. It's a shame because no one can hear it. No, no one can hear it. <laughs> it's uh, so just, it's so uh, loud uh, in here though. It's unbelievable. <laughs> the comedic timing on that. I think it was local least... comedian Chris Ramsey who de- described a man urinating as a delightful sound, like lime cordial being dropped from a long eye into a glass. <laughs> and then he said the women, a w- woman having a wee, was like a screech from hell, like. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you have had <laughs> as the champions? For NXT 2.0. NXT champion. Um, Bron Breaker. LA Knight. Oh, Bron. Yeah, With Bron Chase and LA Knight. Yeah. Money. All the money. Top dollar. Women's champion. Mm. Uh, Hard, Mandy Rose is still a good option, I think, because she's got people who could be built up. Cora Jade being the nice girl to her. Nasty girl and that. I think Mandy's still a valid shout. 
Yeah, I think Mandy. I can't think of anyone else who could probably do it. Yeah, I Who's think Doctor Extraction would do a good job. But I'll say Katie Ray just because I like her. Okay. Uh, tag team champions. Hit row. It was this before or after they got called up though? When it launched. Yeah, so it would have been still around. I'd have hit row. I think grizzled young veterans. Oh, absolutely, the grizzled North American. I think Carmelo Hayes is a nice. Yeah, nice he's pick. doing well. Yeah, he's got bridge between the two yeah. uh, points. Women's tag champs. Whew. Casey and Thingy, because they're the only proper tag team, aren't they, for the ladies? Apart from Toxic Attraction. Apart from Toxic Attraction, yeah. Persia and Thingy. Yeah. Oh, Indy. yeah, Persia and Indy. Okay, three. Um, yeah, there's not as much to pick from here, is there? Um, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll go for Toxic Attraction. I'll go yeah, for that as well, yeah. Yeah. Lots of love from all of us here. Kyle. Oh, Cruise Away. Blackpool, he forgot. Okay. You know what? You must think Thank that. you, Kyle from Blackpool. Kyle. Sorry, oh no, not Kyle, beg your pardon, Kai. Kai, thank you, Kai. K-Y-E, sorry about that. Um, Kai must think, Roderick Strong is doing such a good job, doesn't he replace <laughs> And I agree. Uh, hello, you trio of sin. <laughs> <laughs> this week I watch Threads, oh God, a 984 BBC produced TV movie about a hypothetically nuclear attack in Britain. I was, of course, reminded of the fragility and preciousness of life and how easily it could be taken away. Okay. But then it really made me think, how would giant haystacks and Big Daddy uh-huh. deal with standing in the face of total <laughs> nuclear obliteration? Long may you run, Big Tex from Oklahoma. Thank, Thank you, you, Big, Big Tex. Tex. Have you heard of Threads? I don't know what it no. is. No. It's such a crazy thing to forget how so much of the country and the world at that point was ready for the idea of, oh, yeah, if, um, if America and Russia go at it, we're all going to die. Right. We're all going to get nuked and it's going to be at least the the devastation to deal with. So there were thre- things put out like threads, which is the hypothetical one, but there were public service announcements to do. In the event of a mu- nuclear uh, event, please make sure your shed has lead lining. Um, make sure you've killed your cat because they will be filled with t- stuff and uh, have enough resources to get through the three months of hell. Because after that, you come outside and it'll be even worse. And it's like, oh, a lot of people are ready for it. It's terrifying going back and seeing all these things on YouTube now and going, oh, everyone was just like, it's not if it happens, it's when it happens. So, wow. oof, threads. <laughs> good God. Uh, I'm going to got reference, but yeah. If you're, not, if you're not having a good enough time on this podcast, go watch some stuff on YouTube. How would giant haystacks and Big Daddy deal with that? They wouldn't. They are but mere men. Slow men. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that um, Shirley would probably have a go, wouldn't he? Probably try and stand up to it. Don't know what Giant Haystack's real name is, so I can't do that with him. Graham. Graham would, um, <laughs> he'd cut and run. He'd be back over to WCW, try and get booked in America. Yes. Yeah. Although that's where you're more likely to be a target of nuclear. But if, if yeah. this happened in Britain, Shirley would be a man of the people and fail spectacularly. She needs to call him Shirley. Big Daddy. And then Giant Haystacks would go off, try and get a flight. And be a coward because he was a heel. I don't know. <laughs> I like the idea of them seeing it coming, you know, mushroom in the distance and going, hey, up. And uh, <laughs> they're both going, it's all right, lads. We've got this. And they're standing defiantly and using the girth to block <laughs> the nuclear blast and keep the local oh. civic hall that they were running in that night. Like Homer in a cannonball. Yes. Mick McManus would be miles away. He's always the first one. They were the takings for the night. Whenever you, you know, when you were little, or like you'd mention wrestling to like an older relative, who was the first name they'd always say? Because mine was Mick from McManus. Mick McManus for some reason. Yeah. Even though Big Daddy Mine was, yeah. even though Big Daddy was the the Hogan, Mick McManus is always the one they remember. Mick McManus was around on TV a lot longer. From than what I understand, Big Daddy. was he the MJF of, or just the the heel? No, he was just like the, like I don't know, like the Nick Bockwinkle of his day because he was oh. around forever, so he was good. Right. And yeah, it was on TV, like, maybe, I want to say the 60s. Right. As well, and stuff. Like, just, that time, he was just there. He's always the first name that they yeah. say. They always go, E, Mick McManus, Big Daddy, Giant Haystacks. Yeah. Kendo Nagasaki. Yeah, <laughs> I reckon Kendo there. would have been behind at me, behind the attack. <laughs> really? How so? Just evil, isn't he? Right. I can't remember, was he a good guy or not? I always thought he was a bad guy. But oh. to be honest with you, I haven't watched too much of him. <laughs> <laughs> He was, the for- tell. he was the foreign heel, wasn't he? I remember my granddad telling me about one who used to pretend that he could hear the bell ringing a lot because he had tinnitus or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's a bit of a crap wrestling gimmick, isn't it? Oh! <laughs> Is the match over? No, you idiot. <laughs> yeah, I, thought, I think that's what my granddad told me once. I wouldn't put it past them. 
Well spoken. Look over to my right, tin itis. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that was a selection of things to read from the mailbag this week. <laughs> Bloody hell. Yeah. If you have any to share, please, please, please send them to mailbag at cultaholic.com. Threads. <laughs> Ah, wrist piss. Oh. Hi there, fellas. Hope this finds you all well. It does. Mm. I'm a big fan of music and wrestling. So I was wondering who you think would win the following matches between these teams of wrestlers and musicians and why. Okay. Okay, we'll go around fast as thought first, which is obviously Jack Ross me. The Hardy Boys and the Backstreet Boys versus the Dudley Boys and the Beach Boys. I'm liking this already. I thought this was going to be like... The musicians versus the wrestlers, and no, I was always yeah, going to yeah. pick the wrestlers. The no. Been put this. Sting versus Sting. Okay, no, no. Uh, I'll go four. I'm guessing these, this is all of them in their respective primes. It's not like 50 year old Backstreet Boys and 100 year old Beach Boys. No, okay, no. Um, I'll go for the the. Ah oh, man, that's so hard because I feel like the Backstreet Boys would be up the <laughs> the, the Backstreet Boys would be up the Beach Boys, but the Dudley Boys are harder than the Hardy Boys. The team with the Backstreet Boys will win. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm going for the Beach Boys. You know why that is? Because Backstreet's back. All right. And I want it that way. Oh. Right. <laughs> and that <laughs> worked as well. And they're larger than life. Yeah. Big Boy and the Big Show versus Andre 3000 and Andre the Giant. Oh. Big Boy's harder than Andre 3000 in, in Outcast. So I'm going to... Remember the video for Roses? They smell like poo-poo. Yeah. Andre's like the <laughs> theater kid on stage and Big Boy's like... No, she got a hottie's body, but her attitude is what. So I'm going for mm. Big Boy and Big Show. Who was the other guy? Andre who? Chase. 3,000. No, Andre Chase. And Andre the Giant. <laughs> <laughs> Andre Chase, the most famous Andre. <laughs> yeah, an Andre 3,000 song. What, any Outcast? They're both the members yeah, of Outcast. Are they? Oh! Yeah. So Andre's, the Andre's the Outcast one who does the more sing-songy bits. And Big Boy's Mom, the rapper. Baby, don't mess around. Around. That's all Andre. Yeah. I'll go for Andre. Okay. I like Miss Jackson. He, he dominates Miss Jackson. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> Copyright, Ric Flair. Andre was also in that Will Ferrell film about basketball. Old school. Yeah, he's done Frank some acting. Tank. Oh, not old school, sorry. That was the other Will Ferrell one. What was the... They all blend together after that. What was the, the basketball Man, one called? I know he did one, but... Oh, semi-pro? Semi-pro. Is that not baseball? I don't care. Uh -huh. I didn't see it. Uh, yeah, I'll do Andre and Andre because, yeah, they're both good in their respective field and they're both actors. Yes, fair enough. Yeah, want a peanut? Papa Shango and Papa Roach taking on La Parker and Linkin Park. <laughs> um. In the end, it doesn't even matter. Papa Shango and Papa Roach, because have you seen the front man for Papa Roach? He's pretty, quite a big guy. It's La Parker in Linkin Park. That's so be. great. <laughs> it's the perfect blend. Yeah, yeah sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sting and Sting. The A versus the big boss man and Bruce the boss Springsteen. Oh, Sting and Sting. Sting and Sting. Walt Gordon. There's no way that Bruce Springsteen's losing a fight to Sting. The musician. Oh, yeah, Bruce Springsteen's on. Oh, no, wait, but Sting's fit, isn't he? Bruce Springsteen's fit. He's on fire. No, he's just old. Gordon, I'd say. Fight. Gordon's more of a runner, whereas Bruce Springsteen lifts planks of wood in the forest like Von Wagner. Yeah. But they're, they're both got a cardio because. Sting does that tantric stuff, oh, then God, yeah, Bruce probably. is uh, born to run. So, <laughs> oh, I, I can see it going to like, a Survivor Series finish with both get counted out. <laughs> I think that Sting and Sting will be a will they get a long tag team because Sting will be like, whoa, don't stand so close to me. <sighs> oh. oh, God. Goldberg and Goldfinger. Versus Bobby Fish and Real Big Fish. Oh, oh the scar bands. The themes match up perfectly. Mate. Uh, Goldberg and Goldfinger. Really? Goldberg? I'm looking at the wrestlers for this one. Goldberg's going to beat Bobby Fish. I think but it's, so. The, I let the, you go the it's the partnership, isn't it? Goldberg will throw Gold. members of Goldfinger at Real Big Fish yeah. and Bobby Fish. If it was Gold Frap with Goldberg, <laughs> I'd, be oh. I'd be taking them, but since oh. it's not, I'm going for Bobby Fish. Now we're talking. I'm just imagining, Gold I'm just imagining genre, Goldberg coming to the ring, but instead of his theme, it's dun 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 dun, just like the Scarlet. It could be Gold Frap and that, and versus Bron Breaker and Bjorn Breaker. <laughs> anyway, it's fun. This Bobby this Fish and Real Big Fish. I'm putting them because Real Big Fish are one of the best live bands I've ever seen. I've never seen them, and it seems like they're in Newcastle every month. I've never seen them. The drummer, I think oh, I forget who it was from Goldfinger. I think he hit the Canadian Destroyer and Conan O'Brien that one time. What? 
It's the weirdest clip. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah. Yes. On purpose? No. He's oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Brian's like, this one. He one, picks him up. Yeah. Yeah. And then he goes, picks him up. It goes like, yeah. It goes over, but holds on. So it's a Canadian destroyer. And then <laughs> imagine if Conan did the cell where he's like, he just gets to his feet and then does the... Nah, he's like an indie worker. He just no sells it. <laughs> he fires up like a yeah, Japanese, maybe. like a New Japan wrestler. Yeah. Drake and Drake Maverick uh-huh. versus Pac and Tupac. Pac and Tupac. Pac and Tupac. Pac and Tupac, Tupac, man. Hit him up. Hall of Yemi. Right? Yeah. Wait. She engines. <laughs> <laughs> I keep saving us there. Mr. Perfect and Mr. Big. Wow, that's a throwback. Mr. Big. First of Mr. McMahon and Mr. Mr. <laughs> Who's Mr. Big? Who's Mr. Mr. Is it Mr. Mr. Is Mr. Big a group? Yeah. And Mr. Mr. This is a very 90s selection. I just I think, think of Chandler Mr. Bing's Mr. nickname from Monica when I hear Mr. Big. Mr. Big. I'm going to uh, have to... Oh, when he cuts off the answering machine. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to go for... Um, who is the wrestler in the first one? Big Boss Man. Mr. Perfect. Mr. I'll go for that one. Then. I'll go for that one as well. Mr. Mr. was an American rock band from Phoenix, Arizona from like 82 until 1990. Okay. They had the hits uh, Broken Wings... Kyrie. So take these broken walls. Oh, yeah, is that it? What a tune. I assume so. Take so Vice City. These broken... Oh, I'm having them then. I forget all the songs Mr. Big did. I just know they're a band. I don't know who Mr. Big is. Mr. Big. Oh. From Sex and the City character. Isn't it? it actually is, isn't it? Yeah. It is, yeah. But it's, no, that's not who he means. Though. Anyway. Oh, God, I don't know that. Katy Perry Me and too. Perry Sutton. <laughs> <laughs> Versus, oh, just you wait. Chuck Taylor and Taylor Swift. <laughs> Um, I'm going to have to go for Katy Perry and Perry Sutton. That's a blood feud because Katy Perry and Taylor Swift fell out as well. Oh, yes. Oh, so the death match. Oh, Left Shark does a oh, run in. Oh, no. Perry Sutton and Chuck Taylor are both really good at death matches. Oh, this is this is the match oh. of the night. This is the match of the night for me. Yeah, this is definitely the match yeah. of the night. I'm going for Katy Perry and Perry Sutton. I'll have to go for K K Pay. Yeah. K Pay and Pay, yes, I guess. K, oh, K Perry. No. K Perry. K Pay. Sound like a match. Sure. She's T-T. K Pay. K Pay. <laughs> I'd say Chuck Taylor because he definitely knows all the Taylor Swift songs. Yes. Perry Sutton <laughs> will not know any of the Katy Perry Probably ones. knows them all too well. Yes. Cash Wheeler and Steeler's Wheel <laughs> versus Kip Sabian and Kasabian. <laughs> oh. Problematic Kasabian. So I'll go for the other one. Yeah, yeah. hey, you know yeah. what? Via process elimination, mm-hmm. Cash Wheeler it is. Cash Moving Wheel. quickly Cash Wheeler and Steeler's Wheel? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Cash is going to look around and go, I don't know why I came here tonight. <laughs> I'm standing here, stop doing this. I hope he's not stuck in the middle. <laughs> uh, is that them? Yeah, that's the same yeah. song, yeah. Well, that wow, song? this is so good. It's the only one I know, Top and I know dollars, it from Reservoir yeah. Dogs. <laughs> Doc Gallows and Gallows. Huh. Take on Stan Hansen and Hansen. <laughs> that's brilliant. Just Doc- imagine mm, Bob, but in yeah, time yeah. Larry. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to have to be Doc Gallows and Gallows, because I think Gallows are quite a heavy punk band, and Hansen are Hansen. Oh, it's the latter for me. Straight oh, away. Uh, Hansen and Hansen. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting Hansen. Doesn't matter how tough Gallows or it is. There's no way Doc Gallows has beaten Stan Hansen. Yeah, but with, with the bag a of carefree a... Stan Hansen <laughs> bobbing along. To <laughs> there Hansen. is chaps in his room. <laughs> there is going to be a, a spot in the match where Stan gets the hot tag and takes out all members of Gallows with just a big yeah. Yeah. and then Hansen and play they play and then him as well. Yeah, why not? Fuego del Sol and De La Soul. Oh yes, oh. Fuego de la Soul. This is Matt Jackson and the Jackson Five. <laughs> it's the latter, isn't it? Straight yeah, away. it is, yeah. <laughs> Tito is not going down without a fight. <laughs> the Malachi <laughs> yeah. and the Jacksons. <laughs> Seth Rollins and Henry Rollins. Hey. Yeah. This is John Morrison and Jim Morrison. John Seth, and, Seth Rollins and Henry Rollins. John and Jim. I'd like John and Jim to win, but it's got to be the Rollinses. If you put Seth and Henry together and divide by the average, you get someone who you're all right listening to. Oh, I like Seth, man. Okay, Don't sort of thing. nasty. Uh, oh, I saw Henry Rollins. I'll, I'll pick him. Good. Yep, good. I'll say move on, Matthew. <laughs> Randy Savage and Savage Garden <laughs> versus The Undertaker and The Undertones. Oh, Undertaker oh. and The Undertones. Yeah, Undertaker. Teenage Kicks. Yeah, Go all on. through the night. One of the best songs ever, in my opinion, that. Yeah. Oh, why? Oh, Randy Savage and Savage Garden's a good one. That's great. Just well, the, yeah. the, the words. Daniel Bryan and Brian Adams. <laughs> versus Neil Diamond and Diamond Dallas Page. Oh, oh. Anything with Neil Diamond in for me. Oh, you want to I'll go oh. for I'll go for the Bryans. What a guy. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Robin Hood film, so I'm picking Brian Adams. But I like the fact that they didn't pick Brian Adam and Brian Adams. <laughs> no, no, that wouldn't work. Yeah. Grand Metallica and Metallica mm-hmm. versus Billy Gunn and Guns and Roses. 
Oh. 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 Kip well, Sop at the front of Guns N' Roses. You could throw Axl Rose at them. <laughs> <laughs> but but the Meta- I think Metallica are harder. No, I think I'm just thinking of James Hetfield. Guns N' Roses and Billy Gunn. Richard, in the background, could you Google Lars Ulrich Toilet? Because I saw this the other day. Oh, not this. And it is the what? most disturbing oh, thing I've no, ever seen this. in my life. You can buy a toilet which is based on the, the, the obviously the drummer from Metallica. Uh-huh. And it's it's horrifying. There he is. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, don't click. No, no, no. no don't. God, God, no. No, no, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. Divert thine eyes. Oh, turn around. Oh, oh my God. Why would, did you bring that up? Would you sit down on that? <laughs> just to clarify, there's no frontal male nudity going on there in porcelain form. Uh, it's just Lars from Metallica. As a toilet. As a toilet. Still there. Oh, <laughs> God. Look at his eyes, Matthew. Look at his eyes. <laughs> uh, for that, I'm picking Billy Gunn. Matthew, look at no, that. No, no. Stop it. It's a bit like Madonna. Yeah. Bruno Mars and Bruno Smartino. Uh, this is Jay-Z and Jay Lethal. Bruno and Bruno. Bruno and Bruno. Bruno, who was named after Bruno. No. So it was great. Now, see that po- a picture that was taken um, a few years ago? Bruno Mars going, yeah, it's, it's me with Bruno. I was named after him. What? Oh, my mum named me Bruno after. Was Bruno Samartino famous for cocaine as well? <laughs> Bruno Samartino? <laughs> no. Because Bruno Mars. Is that a genuine question? Yeah. Bruno Mars got, re- he got arrested cocaine. once, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Time, didn't he? Ah. Bruno Samartino really was like a hero, wasn't he? God. Someone said, you know, the proper Italian places to go eat in New York when they've still got pictures mm. of Bruno in the window. Yeah. Which I thought was an amazing thing. Happy Corbin and the Happy Mondays. <laughs> oh, imagine Sean Ryder. <laughs> Mad Cat Moss and the Happy Mondays, imagine. Yeah, that's... <sighs> Mad Cowie. Stone, uh, Stone Cold and, and the, the Stone, Stone Roses. Roses. Oh, yeah. I've got to go for the Stone Roses. Yeah. I'm going for Happy Corbin and Happy Mondays. It's just the visuals alone. Imagine, where's where's imagine my money? Stone Cold it's and Ian Brown, though. I want to be a toad. <laughs> that didn't come out right at all, did it? <laughs> you want to be a toad? What? <laughs> You're the resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> she banged the what? <laughs> <laughs> Rowdy Roddy Piper and Billy Piper <laughs> versus, oh, just you wait, Shoti Blackheart and Captain Beefheart. Oh, Who on earth Billy. Is Captain Beefheart. Oh, Billy. Billy Piper. Good question. Um, Billy Piper and. Crazy, crazy prog. I guess it's probably... Yeah, we'll go with that. Billy Piper's a strong, yeah, feisty woman. All she, of she, the what? day. Yeah, yeah. All of the... No- what a tune that's, that is. Someone asking Roddy Piper, how, how often do you do drugs? Imagine Roddy Piper. Every Pi- day and night. Yeah. Imagine Billy... Babe. Power of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Just Billy and Roddy, because they want to. Yeah. Oh. Why do you want to talk so loud? Because we want to. <laughs> Why do you want to eat the coconut? <laughs> Godfrey's back. <laughs> <laughs> King Woods and Queen <laughs> versus Queen Zelina and the Kings of Leon. Oh, oh yes. I see. Well, Very bugger good. to the Kings of Leon because they crapped on wrestling fans a couple of years yeah. ago. So Jared, what's he called? Don't know. But I felt, I felt Jared so, King. I felt sorry for him because all he did was go, wrestling's really weird. And all the wrestling fans went, no. Nah. But wrestling fans spent the whole rest yeah, of the time going. Yeah, that's all we do is bitching. Yeah, so yeah he's, 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 I actually agree with him. But uh, no, I'll go for um, Queen and uh, King. Yeah. What was it? Well, yeah, King get, Woods and Queen. King yeah. Woods and Queen. Get Adam Lambert out there. Kings of Leon aren't doing a tribute act in the wider Newcastle <laughs> area, are they? <laughs> no, not again. Yeah, sure. The Rock and the Rolling Stones versus Doink and St. Clown Fossey. The Rock and Roll, as in Rock and Roll? I guess I'll sort of speak. Wait, Stone. Well, Stone. Rock, yeah. uh, because of their experience in the video games of Deathmatch Wrestling, I'll go for sh- my boy Shaggy 2 Job and Violent J yeah. and Doink. Keith Richards cannot be killed. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so yes, therefore, true. stones and rock. Oh. Nah, I could pick ICP. Magnets. Whoop, whoop. How do they work? Exactly. Cole Cabana and Def Havana <laughs> versus Kaylee Ray and Green Day. I've got to go with Kaylee Ray and Green Day. I like Green Day. Oh, yeah, Kaylee Ray and Green Day. I'm picking Boom Boom Cold. On <laughs> holiday! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we American Egypt. <laughs> You were. You're on the boulevard of broken <laughs> dreams, are you? Look away. I'm warning you. <laughs> oh, 90s green now. I love it. When they were good. Chris Jericho and Fozzie. 
versus the butcher and every time I die. The butcher and every time I die. I'm assuming that they're all hard. I'm assuming they yeah. all look like the butcher. I don't know what they look like. I think it's, it's really nice that they're going, wait, we need to talk. We are arm wrestling Ishi. Oh, okay, we'll wait. <laughs> Ishi. <laughs> <Is it laughs> dynamite? Ishi. <laughs> yeah, oh, you know, you know Ishi. Oh, you know his, his first name. Every time I die. Andrew keeps going, are we going to go and see them, are we, Ross, when they come to Newcastle? Every yeah, time everyone's, I die, a, absolutely. everyone's acting like they're the biggest band ever. Are they big? Oh, I don't, I don't I really, want I'll admit, I didn't really care about them until I found out that one of them wrestles. Oh, hang on. They all look hard. Like, the Butcher looks the hardest of them all. But they all look pretty yeah. tasty. I wish I looked like the Butcher. Well, you can't really look like... <laughs> no, no, wait. Look at this picture of the band. And then you just zoom in on the Butcher. and he's Oh, he's a massive man. I wish I had a beard like him as well. What a fantastic oh, hair. No, I don't. like. <laughs> that's his as dense. Wispy. He's got a good ten years on you. I hope he's got a bit more. He's in his early forties, isn't he? Is he? Oh, right. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Doesn't look like it though. I was just talking about how great the butcher is. He's great. Uh, all, like these, all these lads out here saying they're going to go and see you because also the this office is kind of the metal office as well, it's just a nerdy office generally. Yeah, we're going to go to the arcade. Then we're gonna then, go yeah, every, every time, time I die, die yeah. and that's, that's <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Love the podcast, the videos, and the Twitch streams. Keep up the great work. Hugs and kisses. Oscar X Ray XOXO. Tell you what, Oscar, that is one of the best Reese's pieces we've ever had. Yeah, fantastic. That was, that Take a bow. Me, blew me away. Take a boo. Take, Take a, a boo. boo and no pressure. If you think you've got Reese's pieces half as good as that one, way, let's see it then, pal. Oh, I... Send it to mailbag at cultaholic.com. It's Cultaholics. The question. Ah. Ah. Mm. You joining in my R's? Mm. Shall we do a collective one on the count of three? One, two, three. Uh, ah. Oh my god, yeah. Ah. Got to sound like Queen. Uh, Radio Gun. Ah. Yes, it's near the end of the podcast. What a Show great podcast it's on. been. And on and on and on. We have just one little bit left for you. We are the champions. And that big question We will rock you. <laughs> Is who wants to live forever? No, it is asking after MJF and CM Punk got it. What is your frame, favorite line during a promo? Right. So not a very good way I of saying it. I can kick off if you want. Oh, go on. I can kick off as Just well. Just answer the question. It'll be fine. I was gonna go for. Uh, I was gonna go for something from the pipe bomb initially, like the whole. <laughs> what was it? Idiot, dad, and doofus son-in-law, or something like. Yeah. Idiot. Daughter and son-in-law. Oh yeah, and doofus son-in-law. Um, I was going to go for something like that. The Pipe Bomb has got a lot of them. Obviously, the, this question was inspired by the one that he did on this week's Dynamite, the Miz one. But I'm instead going to go for It's Me, Austin. Never has a promo line sparked such an emotion in me. It was him all along. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. It's funny, isn't what? it? It's me, Austin. <laughs> oh, that's. Oh, okay. I thought we were going for insulting it's things, but it looks as well. I know I was going to, but I've gone left field. That's fine. Because it, it was bad. But it's hilarious, isn't it? Yeah. No one but Vince could have pulled that off. Yeah. Not oh, a lot of crap. Very badly written, stuff like it's that. Funny. But it's very funny. It makes remembered. me laugh still. Yeah. I was going to go with something like, even as recently as when CM Punk was taking on The Rock verbally, getting ready for the Rumble. Mm. And The Rock's, you know, just massive next to CM Punk. And you're like, yeah. You know, all the things Triple H would say about CM Punk kind of sticking out really badly now. And CM Punk did that one promo, get to just face to face with The Rock, and went off. Yeah, you think you're good, you think you're that, whatever. You've been away for a long time. I'm here now. I've been here all this time. And what are you going to do, Rock? You find out that your arms just aren't big enough to box with too God. Too short to box with too God. Short to box oh with my God. word, that was a great one. Yeah, I'm like, all right. And then The Rock won. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. But still, that is just a line I can hear every day and not get sick of it. Mm. I need to think of a proper one now. I've gone silly, and I'm jealous that you've gone for a good one. Yeah. Oh, I've got. Oh, one. wait, Sorry. Ross has got his phone. Don't worry, lads. I'll save you both. I am here for a decision, and if you don't shut up, I'm gonna make you look like Ellsworth. Oh no. Charlotte, Charlotte, you need to be quiet, or you're gonna start looking like Ellsworth. Oh! Whoa! 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I've forgotten about. I that. still don't know <laughs> what went wrong there. Did Charlotte take Tamina's line? Did Tamina read Charlotte's line by accident? Tamina you'll delivered sounding, Charlotte's line better. You'll be you'll be sounding like El, anything else other than the, the word that she said. <laughs> I, I, I don't. Well, you're gonna need a show, but otherwise you're gonna look like Ellsworth. Look. Yeah. 
emphasis on look. It never really got the as respect much... it deserved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what happened there? What happened there? My uh, my 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 serious one. While we just all recover from that, <laughs> is um, the punk you stupid old man? I'm a snake. That bit was the turning point of his Ring of Honor. Oh, you do like that? Yes. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Eddie Kingston's one when he, oh, where was it? It was ICW. No, no I actually remember. The, forget the company he was wrestling for. And goes, hey, yo, Cody. You know, uh, yeah, whatever. You hang out with your mates, but they like me better than you. Oh. I, don't, I, I actually no. I'm doing a really bad job of summarizing the thoughts. But then that's the promo that got him signed. Yeah. It's like okay. Oh, it's probably true. Mm. Unfortunately. Yeah. Who would you rather go out with? Eddie. It's not even a contest. I don't know. We're gonna talk. I imagine if we sat down like for a dinner, me and Cody, he just talked about himself. No, no, he's a disarmingly charming man. He's really. No, if I'm on a date with him, he's like so. Cody he is him. nice. He's, he's really, nice. really nice. Yeah, he's lovely. <laughs> but Eddie Kingston would get you into some no, scrapes, like, wouldn't he? So uh, how are you? How's that? Oh, you know, come adrenaline. No, he's really not. Yeah, oh, so. <laughs> he's the opposite. Of he's that. actually not like that. Yeah. But Eddie, Eddie Kingston be great. You can tell that Cody knows that he's Cody Rhodes, whereas Eddie Kingston doesn't think he's Eddie Kingston, and that's what makes Aww. him more endearing. So you are Eddie King, put, you are yeah. Kingston. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I sub creep. I know. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah. What? But, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Is there any of us? Oh, The Rock versus Toronto. Yeah. Finally, yeah, 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 The Rock yeah, yeah. has come back to run. To run. To run all your carriers. Yeah. Oh. For no. big big ones that I instantly made, like Austin 316 gets a... You can hear the reaction when he says it because everyone's like, whoa, that's quite catchy. Yeah. I've just remembered it's Bobby Dazzler. Go on. Jake Hager, five-star wrestler. Oh, yes. What did he say? <laughs> Where do we start? Well, There's so many. It was, it was <laughs> the French new, cries. French cries. <laughs> Wamburger. Wamburger. <laughs> Get all the moms to text him, whatever. Oh, oh my yeah, God. well, you're blonde. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. It's a funny... And there's some guy from the far distance shouts, "You would!" <laughs> Can't say the words because to swear. I think Joe Henry. I remember feeling you, and you were the softest man I've ever felt. <laughs> like smooth. <laughs> and then obviously the noise. The hey, <laughs> just to top it all off. It was the Newcastle pipe. But we've mixed two promos uh, together. There is five star one and his what culture one. But yeah. oh man, there's two five star okay. ones, and then the what culture video. That was the softest man I've ever felt. Yeah, the softest yeah. man with the what culture video and then yeah. the two five star ones. Yeah. Wham and, burger. And Joe Henry beat him actually with a double ankle lock, which looked more like a Boston crab. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, how else would you apply that? Well, he's so Higgins huge, so yeah, it's harder. Yeah. yeah. He's a long boy. Mm. I think it's time to end the podcast. And me too. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what else have you got for us until next week, lads? Oh, uh, um, uh, just oh, normal stuff. <laughs> This past few weeks have been quite busy with Full Gear and Survivor Series. Tell, bless you. I'd, I'll be on Twitch. Uh, thanks for Ross for stepping in on Twitch when I was off this week, actually, for doing... I wish I didn't. Why? Owen, I was undefeated in my season mm. with FC mm. Cult Alona. Owen comes along, doesn't care, doesn't give a toss, not taking it seriously, lose two games. <laughs> yeah, you guys raided uh, me, and they were like, oh, yeah, Ross was fuming. Oh, you actually fuming? <laughs> oh, fair enough. I was undefeated fuming. after 14 games. I, I saw played, a little, played five with Owen and lost two. I saw a little clip of it where he's he's gone for all these fancy darn moves and you're fuming at him. You don't do that when it's, you're drawn nil-nil. You don't, three, don't three nil play up. the ball across the pitch. Three nil up. Fair. He kept doing that. Kept switching kept it, playing yeah. it across the 18-yard line. That's the first Suicidal. rule. That's the first rule of defending, Matthew. You learn that in school. You play, yeah. you play at the whistle and you don't play across your own box. It's as simple yeah. as that. But he kept doing it. kept doing these flicks and it was pissing me off. <laughs> And anyway, he, I'll be back on. And I told him about with it. With Owen, half, uh, no, 6 p.m. on a Wednesday. Uh, back on Football Manager, though. And uh, I'll have an article out next week, because obviously I was off Ooh. on Tuesday, so I didn't write one this week, but I will have another one next week on cultaholic.com. Ross? I can't promise I'll be on Twitch on Wednesday, because we are shooting the latest in the booking series. Wow. The other one where I dress up like a twat, but a different shade of twat. Uh, and Judge 3, unsuspecting victims who come in here and pitch a storyline of professional wrestling. I got the boot last time. He did got the boot. So he I'm got shafted. Because someone put rules on the on the thing saying he couldn't have Randy Orton in his storyline. Even though Randy Orton had just set the fiend on fire. And then Ross went, you've not addressed the Randy Orton thing. You're eliminated. And I was, What am I going to do? My head went. I saw red. <laughs> I've been screwed. 
I'd been screwed by the system. But stepping into Jack's void and filling it to the brim because he's a larger man is Adam Pacitti on the latest one. So we're shooting oh. that next Wednesday. So I, I, don't, I don't know when it's coming out, but I, I can't promise I'll be on Twitch because of that. And that's it. I'll just be making stuff for Christmas, I think, now. Nice presents. And, no. There's going to be quite a hectic. <laughs> we'll be at some point next month doing the culties as well. Oh. Won't that be fun? Mm. Can't wait. I enjoy the culties. Think about all the good stuff that's happened this year. We, we get to be positive about wrestling. My and everyone goes, no, that doesn't count. My default thought of how we are during the culties is like just tired. And maybe we have a beer or two on it because it's, yeah. There's one I category where one. I think we need to address this because there's only one option, isn't there? Like the show of the year. Sure. No, no, I think there's two. Oh my God. We'll save it. We'll save it. We'll save it. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, like, no, I think there's only one as well. But uh, all that to come. Fantastic. You have been lovely. We have been the podcast. Just a reminder that patreon.com forward slash called the holic. For the four votes, uh, see if you pay attention, mm. and also mailbackacolic.com, the fantastic, sexy executive producers of the podcast were Mark Leslie, Reno2200, Noah Anderson, and AK Ua2. Akajua. <laughs> Akajua. Bless you. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you right. very much. Yes. And thank you very much. See you next week. Until then, don't forget, point the sign, one, two, three. Oh. Join us. Join us. Fat lump.